We are back. Sam Cedar on the Majority Report on the phone. It is a pleasure to welcome back to the program. I'm pretty sure this is like this, his third visit. I feel like he was on maybe uh, years ago. And then uh, he was on uh, co- like a month or two ago uh, with Michael. He is the um, host of the David Feldman Show, uh, which I believe is on some terrestrial radio, obviously uh, uh, available as a uh, podcast. Um, David, are you there? Yes, yes, it's great to be back, Sam. Thanks for uh, for inviting me. Well, uh, it's my Thank pleasure. You. Thank you for for joining us. Um, and uh, I should also say uh, that um, I remember seeing you. I still remember jokes of yours from uh, stand up. I saw um, at uh, Catch a Rise. Are you like my? Am I getting Cernoviched now? Because I thought I've scrubbed. Most of them on well, my I, Twitter feed. I, they're off your Twitter feed, but this was pr- this was this was uh, tw- almost twenty years before Twitter. Uh, I remember seeing you at the Catch a Rising Star in the early nineties in Cambridge. Yeah, I me- that was. I remember that was one of my favorite rooms. Yeah, yeah. I remember uh, the jokes. You see, I mean, I'm, I guess that's not terribly impressive uh, for you. Uh, that well, I, I, I have to. I, what are the what are the jokes? I guess they. I remember. 90s, they would... I remember the joke that you had, where you would say, um, "You know, we need more women leaders. We need more women leaders uh, because they're uh, the, the 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 best, and they will never start a war." Uh, except for um, you know Margaret Thatcher and India Irigandi, and you then you listed every single uh, uh, leader, a female leader of a, of a country who had all started wars. Did you include Golda Meir? Golda Meir, yes, okay, I think good. it was probably Golda Meir. Well, I just was, wanted to make sure that he wasn't caping for Israel. Well, yeah. <laughs> were you? And and George Herbert Walker Bush started a war too, and. He, he was kind of a. But this was, was yeah. This was. <laughs> you're saying that uh, George Herbert Walker Bush was was a cuck. Was a cuck. Is that what you're saying? I don't. I don't. I, I, it's not for me to to speak ill of people who deserve to be dead. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's very nice of you. Um, That's but you, how I was raised. Do you I remember that speak. joke? I kind of remember. I had some. Uh, bits that today would, uh, I, I don't know if they would be particularly... Oh, no, none of them uh, were, would be funny. Um, no. At all. No, not at all. Uh, but, but, I, but, yeah. uh, but, you know, you were, you were doing like political sarcastic sort of type of, of humor at that time, but, you know, I, I've just told you, I mean, that's a, that's a bit of a compliment, right? I mean, I, like, I remember jokes of yours from 30 years ago, and you just sort of... I, th- I think rolls I off think your back. To, me, if to, be, to be honest, and I'm glad you invited me on the show, and I love your show, but I don't think it's a compliment to somebody my age. I think you're just showing off your memory in front of me. <laughs> you're just saying, look how young I am. Look what I can... Well, look, at, look at the synapses in my brain, old man. Well, it wasn't an under-15 club at that time that you were performing in. I mean, I was obviously uh, old enough to attend a comedy club and be doing comedy. Yeah, but you know what? It's a passive-aggressive compliment. What you're saying to me is, you know, you were one of the gr- well. You didn't even bother to say you're one of the greats. You just said to me when I was a I don't kid. Get, I, I don't want to get carried you. away. I mean, I didn't. What? I didn't say that. I mean, you know, I mean, I wasn't. I'm pretty accurate with no, my it, assessments. It, it, I just I said I saw kind you. Of like ageism. Sam it's told kind of like me ageism. before you came in the air that he used his uh, his ID, proving he was 21 for the first time to go see you. That's right. And that's when the I was, reason he remembers yeah. it. No, so I, I was taken there by my parents as a pre-bought bar mitzvah gift. Right. <laughs> Will you take me to yeah. see David Feldman, please? <laughs> I'd like the interior Gandhi. <laughs> yeah, and that, see, this is all, this is not a compliment. Oh, well. This is insulting. <laughs> You're saying, like, I want to, I'm Jewish, let's go see an old Jewish comic like Sam Levinson or Jackie May. You know, yeah. and it was 30 years ago. You're just putting me off the pasture here. This is not uh, the proper way to treat a guest. No, I, I feel really I, I, uh, insulted now. I apologize. I, I meant no offense whatsoever. I know this has been a trying process for you. I hang understand. on, hang on. They're tra- hang on, hang on, hang on. The nurse is removing the catheter. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's a, you know what? It's still clean. 
Don't read the the manual. They they want you to buy a new car. This is just it's fine. It's clean. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> That's gross. Oh uh, man. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Super <laughs> gross. Uh, now, okay. uh, now, David, I know this has been a little bit trying for you. My understanding, you had a little bit of a complaint about your pre-interview. Your producers. There's a phalanx of like three producers that I have to go through before we go live, and they the, the pre-interview. You know, I've done talk shows before and this is like the first time where they don't ask me what i'm going to talk about they tell me what not to talk about right. on the show right they yeah. didn't screen any of my bits they just said the, the, these are the things your, your producer bemelman bemelman you know, right 25 bemelman okay the kid with the bemelman the kid with the uh baseball cap turned sideways right there's a couple of those, but yes. Uh, yeah, I like how Feldman Jewizes annoying. everybody. The right, two Bemelman. Most, like the most Gentile things happening in this studio, he's turned into Bemelman. Right. Well, he's yeah. not. Uh, you... He's not working at uh, uh, what do you call it? Brighton Beach uh, until the summer, so he's here uh, for the winter. But yes, Bemelman. Is that Michael Brooks talking? Yeah. Yeah. Because I know. Should we tell what Mandel brought? Michael Mandel brought. <laughs> <laughs> that Michael Mandel brought. Is that and your real name? Michael Brooks. No, the real name was uh, Brookovich. Was that right? Actually, <laughs> yes, it really was. Brookovich? Yeah, he couldn't get it. it was, was, yeah, and then it was Berkowitz. You mean Brockovich? No. Who says Brockovich? People from that part of the, the uh, world, like the old country. <laughs> Which co old country are we from? I don't fucking Italy? Remember. Yeah, sure. No, like Romania or something like Brockovich. that. Brockovich. Okay. Wait, oh, speaking of which, wait, oh, that's wait. a good transition. What's that? Nothing. Oh, I don't want it to be a surprise. Well, I want right, well, to. Yeah, yeah, we'll get there. I'm hungry we'll get, we'll to get, get to that. Right, yeah. we'll get there. But uh, David, no, I'm sorry, we interrupted. Are you still there? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. anyway, I, listen. So yeah, I went through Mandelbrot and uh, Demelman <laughs> and uh, Potemkin, Potemkin right? who I don't even think was really there. Your producer Potemkin. Uh -huh. I never yes. actually saw Potemkin. <laughs> Very good. Very good. That is. <laughs> like I said, oh, we got to wait for Potemkin. He's coming in. He's yeah. the most, and, like, uh, the yeah. cerebral force. <laughs> anyway. Right. I had no intention. And I said this during the pre-interview. They gave me the list. I'm not going to bring up your facelift. <laughs> and I, I, this is a political show. Right. No, I appreciate Why that. Why would I bring up your facelift? I, there's no reason for you to do that. I mean, it's probably probably best that you hadn't. Not bringing that up? Not bringing... Michael Brooks. Right. Going to work for Dave Rubin's new network. Why would I... <laughs> <laughs> I'm interested in ideas. Huh? I'm interested in ideas. Money? Little fracking money? Yeah. Do you take fracking so, money? money? I'm, not I'm working towards it. Yeah. That's yeah. where all the big money is. Uh, what else did you? I have you taken fracking money at one point in my career, actually, but that's a story for only members only. Oh, there you go. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> See Patreon.com slash TMBS. Yes, for the fracking story. <laughs> the fracking story. Was there anything else that you anyway. were told not to bring up, or uh, was well, I, uh, it's, it's okay? I, I won't bring this. I won't bring this stuff up. All right. So. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, thank you. That's uh, that's helpful. And now. the fact that the show is not done in Brooklyn, <laughs> the fact that it's being done in the Cayman Islands, right? Well, it's warm. nobody's business. Nobody's oh. business. We could. How, how great we could that be? move it oh. to the Cayman Islands. Dude. I am uh, so voting in favor of that. Where do you do your show, David? I've never been able to figure it out. The Milt Cayman Islands. It's uh, <laughs> some islands named after an old Jewish comedian named Milt Cayman. Very Milt big. Cayman. <laughs> the Borscht Belt. Milt Cayman. <laughs> Do you remember Milt Kamen? I don't uh, remember Milt Kamen, no. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm much younger than that. Far too young to know okay. Milt Kamen. Is he a real guy? There we go again. Okay. Huh? So, no, I'm sorry. I didn't, uh, I didn't mean in any way. Um, right. Now, David, uh, we've prepared something for you because we know, uh, and, and uh, 
Michael uh, was, you know, in between the time he was uh, running around uh, doing errands for Dave Rubin. Um, like, it's been <laughs> you downgraded to errand status. Well, I mean, you got to do. You, <laughs> Come on, you got to do it from a distance. Um, no, I have to. I have setting to up his it. new Patreon system. <laughs> That, that Dave Rubin's <laughs> not Trion, right? Not Trion. Yeah, Natrion. whatever it is. And um, but uh, uh, is Dave, there a case? Is there a case system? Uh, it, <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, well, dude, that is so harsh. I mean, a little Leave bit. Leave the wife out of it, bro. Damn. What? <laughs> You didn't get that one. I, I'm that, that, so that, glad you didn't touch. That went no, no, over his head. Don't bring it up. I won't. Don't but I, up. I caught you. So... I caught you loud and clear, Feldo. You let it go on the live show. I watched it. I did. I was you trying to really be classy. <laughs> and I, I thought Sam was being anyway. classy, but now I realize he just didn't get it. I didn't hear. What are you talking about? No, it's All right, later. Well, don't about. mention. I like her. Don't, don't, of course. Don't, don't no, mention. No, seriously. Just say somebody you were going after. No wives. Okay. Um, Speaking of, okay, this is a good transition. Leave the women and children out of it. Right. Let's leave yeah. the women and children out. We have something to play uh, for you uh, to celebrate the, uh, the 20 year anniversary of something that uh, my understanding is that you are a big fan of. Here, it is. Uh, this here. is Brendan and I. The OJ favorite. murder? The OJ murder was a couple of years. But OJ murder was like 94. <laughs> it's not true. This is Brendan and I's favorite scene. Here it is. Jews, that's right. I knew it was something. Uh, Tony, you know that guy Titleman? Owns all the property. Got a hotel down the street from the club. The Jew with the black clothes and the curls and everything. They're called Hasidim. Hasidim, but I don't believe them. <laughs> <laughs> it is uh, the 20 year anniversary of The Sopranos. Yeah, I see them, but I don't believe them. Polly Walnuts, right? Polly That's right. That's right. Um, you're a big uh, Sopranos fan, and 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 um, uh, little Stephen was on the uh, the picket lines, uh, the L.A. Uh, school strike uh, picket lines. Yeah. So yeah. So how do you want me to respond to this? I don't know. Uh, I Jesus. I mean, Jesus Christ. Did we dude. offend you in some way? Was that another well, H thing? Uh, I'm, do you mind if I unveil my... I'm doing like a beta version of myself. So <laughs> I, I'd like to respond, but uh, I want to cut through the left-wing progressive clutter. Okay. And, and stand out. Right. Because, you know, there are a lot of really great people doing what you do. Right. And what... Uh, you do. And so... Yeah, but you know, I want to stand out. You know? Right? You want to brand it's hard yourself. For someone like, I'm sorry. You want to brand yourself. I want to brand myself, and it's hard for someone like me. I, I read one book, and uh, <laughs> I smoke a lot of dope. Right. What was the book? So, it, huh? What was the book? It was a Christopher Hedges. I don't remember. It was a Christopher Hedges book, and I. <laughs> I learned what the word oligarch meant, so I can explain away a lot of the Democratic Party as tools of the oligarchs. Uh huh. So, and and it's working for me. I can dismiss practically everything in the Democratic Party, still be a progressive, and uh, bring up, you know, Hillary and the Clinton Foundation, and Haiti. Right, of course. And, and, Hey, that's a real story, and sir. That's a what? That's a real one, sir. That's a real story. Yes. Yes, indeed. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, I read Christopher Hedges. And, there, are, you know, the Democratic Party, you know, we need a purity test. So I'm going to be, I want to be, I want to be the, the big nothing burger guy. <laughs> that's my... The, thing. the big nothing burger. So, the, like, the, give us an example of what would be a big nothing burger. Uh, AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. It's a big nothing burger. She's part of the same swamp they all come from. <laughs> <laughs> and she's, you know, she's a, she's an oligarch, <laughs> and you just not, you're just, you are just not seeing it. <laughs> that's my uh, so. That's why I don't have to read because I no. don't like. I read. To be honest with you, I read like the first 
sample of the of the Christopher Hedges book. <laughs> Wait, you didn't read the book, you just read the sample. And I learned oligarch, and I think I know what plutocrat means. <laughs> so just bring up whatever you want, and I'll be the guy who says it's a big nothing burger. Okay. And we need a purity test. And then I'll then I'll scream and rant and rave and smoke some more dope. And so you brought up the Sopranos. That was a big nothing burger. Right. Well, the side of pasta. Yeah, no, of course. But 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 let me ask you about this then. All right. Then this is appropriate. The there was a BuzzFeed okay. article that came out today. I mean, it is you know it uh, we it hasn't been uh, confirmed outside of uh, this buzz. But it, uh, apparently, the president told his personal lawyer to go to Congress and lie. Um, do you uh, think that's big relevant? Big nothing burger. <laughs> big nothing burger. Michael Cohn, big nothing burger. The Russia investigation. I mean, come on. You know, what, you know, hey, what about the McKinley assassination? Huh? <laughs> what about the Garfield assassination? I mean, Booth got away with it for like, who was hiding Booth? They're all part of the same system. <laughs> all the burger. Right, uh, big nothing. The deep oligarchy. dark state. Suddenly, the are plutocrats like part of uh, spy agencies? Because I'm not sure I'm using the word plutocrat, but you know, Clapper, <laughs> right? And you know, he's part of the same deep dark plutocracy that was, you know, behind the Clinton Foundation. So there's nothing there <laughs> with Russia, and it. It's just a distraction to keep our eyes off something that you don't know about <laughs> that I can I can lord over you because I read Chris Hedges. I see. And I, I'm smart. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Michael Cohen. They all lie before Congress. That's what they do. <laughs> that, that's what they do. They lie before Congress. What about Congress lying before us? Huh? You don't talk about that. What about the, pluto the plutocrats? I mean, you know, it's just so... I don't know. You're not saying the forest through the trees. By the way, uh, it's a nothing burger, and I'm kind of like driving into the skid of getting older. Right. And I've come up with a new, new, new term. And it's, uh, this isn't my first rodeo, Sam. Is that the new term? Are you the, yeah. The new term that I, that I came up with. It's not my first rodeo. Well, that's not. I've seen, I've seen things. But the, so. the, the, what is the new term that you brought up? This isn't my first rodeo? This isn't my first rodeo because it gives me, you know, Gianforte, that, that congressman who body slams people. Right. It makes me feel like him. Like, like he's <laughs> oh, the kind of guy who's oh, going to rodeo. I see. I see. So the, you, saying it's not your first rodeo, it's it's a uh, it's obviously a metaphor, but it also implies that maybe you've actually you you're a cowboy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. All right. Uh, it comes off. No, all right, so you think... The man, the wait, man I, of the people. Can I ask you a question on the opposite end? Okay, so... Sure. Uh, obviously, perjuring yourself before Congress, lying to Congress, no big deal, because that, that uh, Congress lies to us, as you said. Um, what yeah. about, though, some uh, things in a positive direction? What about Bernie Sanders getting even really conservative and sort of more corporate members, nothing burger members of the Democratic Party, to sign on to Medicare for All? What about that? That must be yeah. a positive signal. Medi Medicare for all is a big nothing. <laughs> now, why do you say uh, that? And because I don't know the difference between Medicare and Medicaid. <laughs> I'm testing this out here. So no, no, it's going it, well. It, it, I actually okay. think that you're probably pu pu pulling members off of our show right now. They're all just like signing up for the new, for the new uh, David Feldman show or the. Is that what you're going to call it with this new persona? Are you going to call it like um, something like not my, not the, you know, not that, not your dad's rodeo or something like that? Yeah, well, I'm not doing this to to make money. I, I've gotten rid of all my memberships. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm getting money from uh, one person. I can't mention his name. You but, can't. Uh, 
No. Can you give us a sense of who it is? I mean, I, I, people are going to probably want to know. He, he's uh, one of the lesser known Cump brothers. <laughs> the one who was excommunicated for. Uh, wasn't one of the Koch no, brothers? No, there's another. There's another Koch brother that nobody knows about. Wow, so he's been giving me money. Yeah. Oh well, that uh, makes how did it Jane easy. Mayer miss him? Yeah. <laughs> you you want to know his name? Sure. Because his last name is Koch. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What's his? He'd be, be one of the lesser. <laughs> Koch. He'd be brothers. one of the lesser known Koch, huh? Which what was the, what was his name? The first name. Well, you know, it, it, he's it, it really changed him growing up because people made fun of him for having the first name that didn't really match Coke, and uh, so. <laughs> what would that be? Yeah. Uh, Do you want to? Yeah, I go pee pee in your. <laughs> go pee pee. In your, his name was Igo Pee Pee In your, yes, and, and uh, it really affected him. That's so fucking stupid. That's so fucking stupid. <laughs> what, I, can you, but can you be? A, can you imagine growing up? You have David Coke, Charles Coke. Oh, and that's our, that's our older brother, Igo Pee Pee In your. So he was, he was he an, old, he's like, an older brother. He was an older brother. Huh? So this was so the Coke. He was the older brother. He, so, so Mr. and Mrs. Coke started with this, and then they realized probably not a good idea. Like that was funny for a while, but then it turns out to be not good. Mm -hmm. So let's just go with David Coke. And is it, yeah, yeah. Is, it, is that a family name or what was that? What, is was it just, they were just like, this could be funny. Let's try it out. They just—I don't know why they would name it. I don't know. I honestly, in all honesty, I don't know why somebody would name their child. I go pee pee in your. No idea. <laughs> no idea. It was it's a strange thing. All right. Well, I mean, uh, let's get back to just uh, one more. Uh, you know, one more. I guess issue. What about this teacher strike? Is that hopeful? For, uh, are you hopeful in any way when you see uh, tens of thousands of teachers going out on strike and um, and, and you know uh, labor actions? Listen, you know, it's a nothing burger. <laughs> it's the plutocrats within the unions using the teachers to further their oligarchical needs. Because, and, and, here, and, and now, I don't know if you can see the crazy in my eyes, okay? <laughs> but trust me, there's crazy in my eyes. No, I believe it. What you've got to understand about the teacher strike and this is why it's a big nothing burger, <laughs> is Crimea, Crimea, Khrushchev, Khrushchev had given Crimea to the Ukraine. Back then it was the Ukraine as a peace overture. So Crimea was always a part of Russia. <laughs> so, and, and we knew that when Obama was president, but suddenly Putin is... An oligarchical uh, uh, plutocrat for for taking Crimea was always a part of Russia. That's why the teacher strike is it's a big nothing burger. And if you don't see that, you need to read Andrew Basevic. Uh. You you need to study military history. <laughs> That's why the teacher strike is not going to make it. <laughs> that, that just doesn't do it for me. <laughs> it's one big nothing burger. But you don't know history. You don't know anything about Crimea and Khrushchev. Uh, it's, I mean, I, 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 I knew uh, some of what you were talking about, but you're right. I guess I don't... Uh... Uh... It's not going to change anything, the, the teacher strike. <laughs> Because they all lied before Congress. Well, no. <laughs> well, no. Wait a second. So is there, do you think there's anything that uh, would constitute a, a full-on burger? There, no. no. There's, there's a big, <laughs> everything's a nothing burger. I'll tell you why. I smoke a lot of dope. <laughs> and, you know, I read the New, the New York Times, my mind wanders. 
That can't be my fault, right? So I need to explain away things. <laughs> Let me just clear my throat. I was going to say you've aged quite a bit. I smoke so question. much dope. Right. I don't like to read. But I like to talk about things. <laughs> and when I pick up, because I have passion, you know, I have a lot of anger. Right. <laughs> I just don't know things to be angry about. But I've got rage that has to be channeled somewhere. And I try to read the New York Times. But, yeah, but it's, you know, you get past the first first letter and your mind wanders in each article. Like I keep seeing the, like, I'll see an article. Oh, I'll read this. This looks interesting. And I see the letter B, like <laughs> by, I think it's like by, and I've lost interest. So I smoke a lot of dope. Yeah, you know, but I you do, I think I know what plutocrat means. Right. Well, I, I got to say, th this new David Feldman, I think uh, there's, there's a market. There's definitely a market. Now, it's not, uh, it's, it's not one that isn't being fulfilled a little bit right now. I got to be honest with you, but um, really, yeah. Well, I mean, do you look out there? I mean, have you have you done any uh, like sort of market testing? Is there anybody out there that you think that uh, you might be bumping up against? You know, that's I, I'm so threatened by anybody that I can't watch other people's shows or listen to other comedians or, or read other writers because you know it just reminds me of my own inadequacy. So no. <laughs> Well, that's <laughs> right. The only part I'm not seeing though is the is the uh, the rage. Yeah, you the rage. Yeah. Well, that's you know that's a different Patreon level. <laughs> that's what the people pay for. <laughs> <laughs> that you got to pay for. Right. Oh, that's <laughs> That sounds like a good business model to me, actually, uh, David. Well, listen, I, I'm glad. I mean, is this the debut? Are we seeing this now the, for, for the first time? Because yes. I got to say, the beta test yeah, has gone I am well. Able, yeah. Thank you. Uh, I, I'm, I'm hoping it's going to work. I think I'm going to cut through the clutter of the internet. Are you intentionally That's using the, the word "dope" uh, to talk about weed? As as like, is that an age joke as well? Dope. What what are the kids calling <laughs> marijuana these days? What is it? What are they calling it, Brendan? What a Jewish one. <laughs> yeah, Brendan doesn't know. What uh, Matt? What are the kids I calling dope just, these days? Weed. Yeah, weed. <laughs> weed. Mary Pot. Jane. Weed. Yeah, sweet Mary Jane, man. Smoke that loud. Okay. Grass. Ganja. All right. People aren't calling it grass anymore. No, because they're definitely not calling it grass anymore. How do you call it weed when it's not even like a, most people are vaping it? Herbal medication. I mean, I'm not vaping it. <laughs> <laughs> well, David, uh, this has been great. I'm glad we got the first taste on this. Is Do you have a website that people can go and check out your new beta version of David Feldman? See, that's the other thing. The internet, uh, I can't type. <laughs> Right. I can't use a computer. I should mention that. So the internet's a big nothing burger as well. <laughs> You're done with it. That's gonna cut. I don't into, use the internet. That's gonna cut into your Patreon uh, subscriptions slightly. Mm. <laughs> well, David. All right. Uh, I uh, thank you so much for coming on. It's been a pleasure. I'm glad we got the first taste of the beta version of David Feldman. Thank you, and this has been one giant, delicious nothing burger. I cannot, you know, I've done a lot of these. This isn't my first rodeo. <laughs> no, we can tell. You yeah. seemed uh, so, well versed. Can in, I say rodeo. something, sure. David? I think this is so funny and so exciting. I'm going to remember Thank this you. riff thirty years from for now. thirty years. Oh well, leave a stone at my grave when you remember it. <laughs> David Feldman, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, David. Thank you. It is always uh, an honor uh, to uh, have our next guest on this program, someone who I watched with great admiration as a young, uh, bushy-haired, big-eyed, uh, what is that? I don't know. I can't access things. Bright-eyed, bushy-tailed. Thank you. 
um, stand up. I would I would see this guy oh. perform uh, in a uh, basement in Cambridge, uh, Massachusetts, and was always uh, always thought maybe someday I'll have the opportunity to talk to him on the phone. And that day yes. is again arrived, ladies and gentlemen. David Feldman, welcome to the program, David, host of the David basement. Feldman Show, right? Yes, that basement that I perform in was featured in Capturing the Freedmans. I don't know if you remember that. Oh, wow. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> That's for the real head. Is that, is that true? Wow. The yeah. one in Feldman coming Wait in Wait a hard. second. Yeah. It was in the, ca- the Catch a Rising Star up there? No. No. No, no. I used to dress as a clown. I don't want to oh. talk about oh, it. Oh, my dad used to teach computer <laughs> to young Forget it. Let's let's talk about the oh, important stuff. Thank you for inviting me back. Horrible, I really horrible thing appreciate. to say. Um, I'm sorry. So, uh, David, uh, just tell us a little bit about your show. What's going on with your voice? Well, I, I'm just waking up, <laughs> and so I, it's first thing in the morning. So, can I just say something? I'm surprised you're having me back, and, and I won't mention the toupee. Okay. That I was told not to mention and the bridge work, your bridge work. I'm not going to mention oh, that. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Right? Uh, yes. Okay. okay. What? Um, but why is that? But the Democratic Party. I'm sorry. Why is that a surprise? What? That I've we've had you back. Because we don't agree on some things, and and, and I want to say <laughs> to your listeners that the Democratic Party is not heaven. Unlike heaven. The Democratic Party has room for everybody. So there's room for you. There's room for me. And, you know, we agree that Trump has to go. And that's all that matters. Let's just stick together. These ideological purity tests that you and Michael Brooks are, they're insane. <laughs> let's just, you know, let's get rid of Trump, okay? What? You no, know me. No, I know, I know you, of course. Uh, what, what, uh, what are the, uh, the, the tests? What are the tests that you feel like you're failing? I feel like when I'm around you and I'm around your listeners, they don't want me in the tent because, you know, I supported the invasion of Iraq, uh, 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 Iraq, as I call it. I want to nuke Iran. I think we need to reverse. I want to reverse the Civil Rights Acts of 64 and 65. Uh, right. I'm pro-oil, and I think some people are born winners, some are born losers, and that should be reflected in how the invisible <laughs> hand rewards us in the free market. <laughs> but I hate Trump. I hate Trump. Right. And, and I have, I think there's room for me in the Democratic Party as long as we don't cannibalize ourselves. <laughs> Right, right. Well, I mean, those are there. I mean, there's a couple of those things that I feel, I feel like like are a little cause a little friction, uh, don't you think? Or, or no? here we go. Here we go. 1972, <laughs> George McGovern. Here we go. This is why I wore the. This is why I put on a hard hat and beat up hippies. And I was and I went to the Reagan. I became a Reagan Democrat exactly because of what you're talking about. There's room for everybody in the Democratic Party. Okay? Right. Right. But now, what now? If that's the case, like what distinguishes it from the, let's say, the Republican Party? The Republican Party, it's it's Trump's, and I hate Trump. <laughs> Trump has to go, and and there's room for me. I, you know, I'm socially conservative, but I'm fiscally liberal. You know that about me. <laughs> I, I don't care how. To, <laughs> I don't care how big the deficit gets. Just so long as marriage is between a man and, a, and an obedient woman, and I think we're going a little too quickly on interracial marriage. I, I'm, not, I'm just saying, let's slow it down a little. Slow That's it all. down. You just there's saying. room for me in the party. Don't cannibalize the Democratic Party. <laughs> it's true. We have been pretty. Uh, we have been pretty accelerationist when it comes to um, uh, uh, mm-hmm. uh, marriage between uh, races. And uh, that, that we've been we've been really peddled to the metal on that thing, and I guess to uh, to bring about you know to heighten the contradictions a little bit. <laughs> it's just something I, I'm I'm a Democrat, and and marriage, you know, let's just let's just say okay, you know, let me just get used to it. Okay, let me just get used to it. Used to the and institution the of marriage. Decide. Okay, right. Okay. Uh, no, I got you. I, security I mean, tests. Yeah. So um, I'm, as you know, I'm socially, socially conservative, fiscally liberal. I, I agree that, uh, you know, we should spend away. We should rack up debt, free tuition at all public universities, basic universal income. 
but marriage, man, obedient woman. This is That's much it. closer to the actual yeah, center actually- of the country <laughs> than we hear on almost any mainstream news network. So thank you for bringing that forward. Like, this is what Morning Joe would sound like if they actually represented mainstream opinion. <laughs> is that Alex Perrine? Yes. Uh, I'm here. Yeah. Well, yeah, now that was Michael, but uh, Alex Perrine is here. Do you oh. have a bone to pick with him? No, no, I had him on my show like five years ago when he was reviewing snuff videos for Maxim. He's <laughs> <laughs> great. Of the, life of the freelancer. <laughs> you got to shovel um, some shit to get to the gold. Did you ever write for Maxim, though? I, would be, no, I would really hope. Sure. No. It's so awesome. Their editors wouldn't take my call. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got to get on. Uh, get I, on I uh, love why. <laughs> I love watching your show. It's like it's like the Paris Review. You have all these like literati, and I mean, you know you're too busy to hang out with me. Michael Brooks and I double dated with his uh, new girlfriend Barry Weiss. Oh, you know? oh, <laughs> Michael, are you dating why? Barry Weiss? Uh, no, oh, right? no, I'm not. I can't. Oh. I can't even oh, say oh, yes. I can't, oh, I can't, right I can't say yes to that bit at all. Wow, I'm you really triggered. talk out of turn, uh, David. That's really um, uh, now. <laughs> That's I want the we fake went out news. On in Brooklyn, Barry Weiss. I, I took my lady, and uh, do, do you want to share with I, us? Is, right, uh, would it. we know who your uh, who your date was? Barry Weiss's older sister. Barry Weiss's grandmother, <laughs> and I. Barry is uh, now. Here's something that Michael Brooks and Barry Weiss they make a really cute cup. It's like Spencer. <laughs> Tracy and Hepburn. There's just a little tension. The <laughs> and they're really cute. And I found out Barry Weiss. Barry is her middle name. Did you know this? No. Her first name is Dingle. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Did you know that? It's Dingle oh, Barry oh, Weiss. <laughs> what is the matter with you? I'm Sorry? here for it. <laughs> Dingle Barry Weiss and the and they make such a cute couple. Um it's I you know, Sam, I, yeah. I you and I both have had successful marriages. I've had a few <laughs> more successful marriages than you. I've had about five more successful marriages. Well, the point is, you have had, and you you need to wrap them up uh, to make them successful. You need to like basically yeah, close yeah. the loop. They need to, as you it were. need to succeed, right? Yeah. There needs to be yeah. a um, you need to you need win to, the marriage, right? You need to declare you, you victory, need, finish the narrative, the, the, uh-huh. the narrative, uh, like uh, close the deal, right? And one of the things I noticed between uh, Michael and Dingle. Is that they're compromising? That that I, they're Michael is turning into the man that I want him to be. He's going to be a great husband. At dinner, we were having an argument, a discussion about Israel, <laughs> vis-a-vis you know America's response to Israel, and and you know at first I noticed, and this is just wonderful to watch somebody grow up. Michael was all in on BDS, and yep. but by the end of the evening, he got. <laughs> But Barry or Dingleberry Weiss, she completely caved on BDS. She's all in on bondage, discipline, and submission. <laughs> and I'm. This is really uh, disturbing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Did you write this out before you came on, or I hope this is just coming no, up no, now? No, I'm, right. I'm just looking at my 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 notes here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I didn't. Now, Alex Perrine, are you still a fan of Bastinato? I'm sorry? <laughs> Bastinato? Oh, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Deep plate. Deep plate. Um, all right, well, David... Uh, <laughs> This is uh, I wanted to, uh, I liked to when discuss. He was Jimmy yeah, I. <laughs> <laughs> my my flamethrower is in the shop, so I can't do that. No, <laughs> let's uh, <laughs> let's talk throw. about uh, your your good friend Bill O'Reilly. Now, my understanding is that you guys started out uh, together in show business, uh, mm-hmm. and then your paths diverged, and uh, now mm-hmm. he's. Um, you guys have come back around in many respects. He's on Newsmax TV, which I know that you were up for this slot, and uh, yeah. you didn't you didn't get it. Um, uh, yeah, maybe it was because of anti-Semitism. Maybe not. I don't know. But um, I sure hope it was. So uh, I, 
this is important stuff because uh, Bill O'Reilly is talking about his experience at a Fleetwood Mac uh, concert, <laughs> interacting with millennials. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of millennials at the Fleetwood Mac concert. And There's so a lot. let's watch a little bit of this because, um, because real news, better talk. Newsmax TV. Hey, I'm Bill O'Reilly, and this is the Talking Points Memo. <laughs> Last night I was at the Fleetwood Mac concert in Madison Square Garden, New York City, and I learned something. Um, I already knew Fleetwood that Fleetwood and Mac was a terrific Adam. group. And it's just amazing to see... Stevie Nicks, 71. Mm. Christine McVie, mid-70s. Mm. Mick Fleetwood, mid-70s. John McVie, mid-70s. Performed for two hours and ten minutes on stage. It's just amazing. Um, and, uh, yeah, 70s to be 40, <laughs> I guess. So they were great. Um, and the crowd was the 70s sold to new 40, how old so is Bill O'Reilly? I got O'Reilly? to see a lot of people. <laughs> and it occurred to me that there's a change happening in America. So the crowd was equally You're ready for divided. this, folks? No, here's, um, hold on, pause it. The change, and I don't want to tip anything off, it seems to be that um, there are new people being born and growing <laughs> older, and then they get to a certain age, and they're uh, older than they the were change, when they were born. The change and then they, that's happening in America is Lindsey Buckingham has left Fleetwood Mac again. Again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. The crowd was equally the divided um, between boomers, baby boomers like me, who grew up with Fleetwood Mac, and then millennial oh, Generation man. Z, younger people, primarily women, who admire Stevie Nicks uh, and Christine McVie <laughs> as feminine icons. So the baby boomers are watching this show, and they're fairly calm because they're old. <laughs> All right. And they had a couple before they came in. They're mellow. He's just talking in. about himself. We had a guy and, and I preloaded um, before I got to the show, he's saying. Millennials, <laughs> generally speaking, but I didn't see one without, watch the show with this in their hand. It's he's like they're holding up a phone. Texting every song. And they were taking some pictures, but at the garden, it's it's hard to take pictures. I always text songs. Because way, yep. and, and it's, it, the stage is lit, but it, it's not a picture uh, kind of thing. Maybe they're recording, but they all had this much in their hand. Boomers, no. It's doable. Wow. Yeah, this is it's pretty stunning. Uh, so I got loaded to Long Island. I got my <laughs> Puerto Rican limo driver to take me. I always call the builder. I say, hey, let's go see Fleetwood, Javier, but you wait in the car. And then I was there, and everybody was mellow. It was really good. And they came out, and these fucking kids are taking pictures. Can we play it, like, like put up the speed so we can get to the payoff? Because I'm curious as to what the big change I'll tell in America you what the payoff is, you fucking Jew. <laughs> Society's imploding. <laughs> I'm on Newsmax, and there's 30 year olds seeing Stevie Nicks, who I used to jerk off to in the Inside Edition days. All right, this is 1.2 speed. I think, okay, 1.2 oh, speed. No. Um, and um, there, millennials are taking selfies and bending over like pretzels to try to get them in the stage and all that. <clears throat> a couple of things. Okay. <laughs> the band <laughs> is non-political. Now, I know the band for many years, and some of them are political. But they didn't do that. They stood away from all that, all right, which was good. So people don't pay a lot of money, and it is a lot of money to go see Fleetwood Mac. Uh, to hear... Entertain and spout off stuff. The <laughs> music of Fleetwood Mac is classic. It's timeless. And there are some songs where you want to jump up and dance, and that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> but the millennial Generation Z people would never sit down. From the time it started to the time it ended, they were standing up. And there were people behind that. You know, some of these people were 75, 80. Aww. And they couldn't see. <laughs> and the millennials didn't care. <laughs> Not at all. Because I saw a confrontation. Hey, I have, I have a some, some of us are loaded in our mid-60s and had to leave a major cable network because we <laughs> called black women uh, mochaccinos and asked if they wanted extra milk with that. And we were there, and we can't stand up because we're a little drunk. Those are some of the other people that might have been there. This is all just about a story, a confrontation he had with a millennial. Right? Like this, was a, this was just people were standing in front of him. That's basically what happened, I think. What I've noticed about America, the way it's changing, is... 
Uh, young people are always standing in front of old people now. <laughs> That's one of the main things that about America. never happened before. <laughs> there was one guy who used to host Inside Edition that had a prominent placement at Play Fox News who was not standing up because maybe he'd had a little bit to drink, and there were people standing in front of him. <laughs> and there were people behind them. <laughs> you know, some of these people were 7, 5, 8, and they couldn't see. And the millennials didn't care. <laughs> they didn't care. Not at all. Not because I saw confrontations. All. Oh, yeah. Oh. I actually had one, but the, the guard <laughs> left. All right, because I've been going there for many years. But this drunken guy stands right next to me in my party on the aisle. Not He didn't have a seat. He just kind of ran down, stood on the aisle, weaving like this. And I said, hey, sir, you're you know, blocking our vision. And, and you know, I gave him a look. And then I stood up. All six foot four of me. Oh, there we go. And he yeah. ran away. Oh. He ran away. And then the usher came and said, you want me to? And I said, no. Just make sure he doesn't come back. So <laughs> the people who were standing and dancing were, they couldn't care less. They couldn't care less. About if anybody could see or what they were doing. And some of these people were like gyrating. Like I just hit my mic. That's what they were doing. And I'm going, you know, this, you know what this is all about? This is all about narcissism. Right. And this is what's happening. Because this thing is you now. This is like your hand. It's an extension of your body. And if these, nar- if these millennials or Z people or whatever, they lose this, Jay-Z or they don't have it, <laughs> that's big. Yeah, I was surprised they by gotta have the Z people. Right? And the Concerts, boomers, too. You know I mean. I'm not saying the boomers aren't doing this, but the younger Americans under 40, really addicted. And so everything is coming through this into here. It goes bing, bing. Instead of coming from life into here, they have this in between now, what this does is it makes everything center around you because people are texting you, Instagramming you, Facebooking you, whatever you're doing. Right. You, 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 you. It's like Neil So, Post therefore, the mentality right. becomes, it's all about me. <laughs> it's about me. The whole You know what's amazing about me. this? Hold on, pause it. No. He is now finally coming around to doing Al Franken's bit from Saturday Night Live, the me generation, <laughs> which is stunning. <laughs> yes. Bill O'Reilly has finally, finally adopted Al Franken's perspective on the world. <laughs> <laughs> After all well, these years. His, it's his delivery of, uh, there were confrontations. I had one. I had one. <laughs> Just coincidentally. <laughs> yeah, how like, dare people dance at a concert? I know. That's the amazing thing. He's like, he's making an argument that is um, completely lacking in profundity, that um, uh, phones allow us to mediate our reality and then tying it into, and that's why people dance at concerts. <laughs> <laughs> no, what you're supposed to do as boomers, you go to see Fleetwood Mac. It's like it's like going to the symphony, and it, you get drunk, <laughs> you get and you drunk. sit there. <laughs> like at the opera. <laughs> you, First you pre-game. go, yeah, you pregame, then you go to the opera. Are we done with down. it? Are we done? <laughs> yeah, I think we've, we've watched you all watch that we can. goddamn performance. I hope that millennial blocked him on purpose. I would have no, if I, I were him. I, I, I mean, I'm surprised that people weren't protesting him. Oh, you know, it would be so funny to be standing up right in front of Bill O'Reilly. <laughs> 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 I think Hero. I might just start going to Fleetwood Mac concerts with the hopes that I'm going to run into him. Like, I stand up in front of him. I probably would have sat down, but now that I know Bill O'Reilly is... He, just, like, yeah. he also Sitting just revealed that he wasn't in a box. He didn't have a box? He didn't have a box, yeah, because someone was standing in the aisle next to him. Well, yeah. you could be in a, an aisle in the box, can't you? I I don't I don't know. I mean, I'm not I'm not a box type myself. Right, no, so it must be. But it, <laughs> if the usher's coming, the guy had access and could run yeah. away. It couldn't have been a box. Yeah. Well, whoever did that well, is actually, basically a troop. He knew they put him in a special section. It was a no-spin zone section, <laughs> so you weren't allowed. <laughs> that's, right, that's what he was mad about, with the millennials kept home. spinning. I'm telling you, he, he brings it, he, he really, he's obviously read Professor Ben Burgess's book, because <laughs> the logic is spectacular if you listen to his conclusion. <laughs> Now, David, do you get up every day and watch um, uh, O'Reilly on Newsmax? I mean, is that part oh, of yeah. your daily ritual? Yeah. Yeah, and I'm actually writing a book with him about his experience <laughs> at the Fleetwood Mac uh, concert called uh, Killing Soft Rock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. He brings it home. If you watch it to the very end, he actually makes a really salient point. Oh, really? Let's watch it. Let's watch it to the end. We only have like a minute left, don't we? Oh, yeah. This is, this is the thing where, you know, where you're making fun of him. But he puts a he puts a nice bow on this, and Alex Perrine, who's a, a writer, a great writer, he could learn about this. 
in terms of structure. Right. All right. Let's see here. Here we go. Americans under 40, really addicted. All right. Go forward a little bit. And more. so everything is coming through. What are you doing? You, 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 you. <laughs> so therefore, the mentality becomes, it's all about me. It's about me, the whole life experience. This me. is why Dennis Miller's not on anymore, Narcissism. because he's taken his shit. And <laughs> this plays out <laughs> into politics, into voting, oh. into how the country is run. I'm right. telling you, this socialism thing. What? This is, this is what happened. This is, it's not Ocasio-Cortez <laughs> or Bernie Sanders. It's that. Well, I want to give me mine, my, 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 my. You know, I, I want to, I'm entitled to it. It's a narcissistic point of view. Right. The government is to provide me with education, medical care, housing, <laughs> food, whatever. Wow. Give it to me. And if somebody has I'm more than sure me, he knows I'm taking it from is. Them. And here's Just another radical idea. You should be I'm able to narcissist. fuck up Bill O'Reilly's constant <laughs> experience <laughs> whenever you want. And that's the talking points memo. I'm Bill O'Reilly for Newsmax reminding you. So wait a second. So if I understand this correctly, in a uh, socialist country, uh, everyone stands up at concerts? Is yes. that what's going on? Yeah. And everyone <laughs> stands and dances in the aisle. <laughs> and the more you stand and dance, the more socialist it is. <laughs> Wow. Social is a nice, socialism uh, is when you run out of other people's views of the concert to obstruct. <laughs> <laughs> sounds, uh, to paraphrase Churchill, it sounds good until you can't see Stevie Nicks anymore. <laughs> every, every, everyone under 30 who does not block views at concerts has no art. Before, uh, before I was 30... Uh, a socialist for that heart. Oh, yeah. yeah socialism is great. And drunk, socialism is great socialist. until you're 85 years old and tried to watch Maroon 5. <laughs> <laughs> and all these young whippersnappers are jumping in front of yeah. you. Socialism is fantastic until you're 90, multi-millionaire, trying to watch the Rolling Stones. Oh, you know, my God. If anything, I mean, I know he's probably only talking about himself. I think baby boomers almost dance more when they go to concerts, in my experience. I brought my mom to a 24-hour drone festival a few years back, and she was, uh, she was actually annoyed that more people weren't dancing. What hour was it, though? I mean, by, <laughs> by hour 22, I feel like people are just fried. That was the evening. Okay. It could have been dancing. My mom danced. It was adorable. There you go. And uh, at the DSA Christmas party as well that I helped put together, there were some really awesome baby boomers just dancing the whole time down in front. I took a video, so fake news, Bill O'Reilly. Yeah, basically, that baby boomers English are the narcissists. They might be, you know, and your dancing special is flex disgusting. syndrome and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, David, um, thank you for uh, introducing us to that, uh, that Bill O'Reilly segment. Uh, I, I feel... Um, I feel like I figured it out now. And they all have iPhones, yeah. so all of a sudden they think they should get health care. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Alex Perrine texted me to do this joke. I don't think it's funny, Alex. <laughs> he wants me to do it. Because I, 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 it's not spontaneous. It was written down. He said, you do it. You're funny. I don't want to. He said this is uh, going to be recorded uh, for a new Fleetwood Mac album entitled... Fuck it, we'll do it live. I don't find that. <laughs> <laughs> thank, Fuck thank it, you we'll though. Thank you for doing concert. it. <laughs> I think you delivered it much better than Alex would have. So yeah. I can tell you that right yeah. now. Yeah. Well, it's David, like it's funny. David, yeah, it's not funny, Alex. If someone wanted to, uh, <laughs> if someone funny, wanted Alex. to listen to your uh, your podcast, what would they do? Or your radio show, right? It's a radio show podcast, isn't it? Uh, have uh, silver fillings in their molars, IUDs. We found that people, <laughs> women can hear my show if they have an IUD installed. Right. <laughs> um, really? And fillings in their teeth. Wait, so what is the... Uh, That's what's pretty the, much... Yeah. All right. Uh, I noticed that... Uh, very uh, I'll be I noticed that you in. named it after yourself. Uh, is that because of your phone uh -huh. use? My phone use? Yeah. Like, it's all about you, isn't it, David? <laughs> <laughs> what does the O'Reilly factor fit into that whole narcissism spectrum? 
my factor. I mean, no, but I'm just saying, like, not only did well, you name a show after yourself, it was like your, well, yeah. Well, glass houses, Michael. Anyone, I mean, anyone who has ever hosted a cable news show has just no business diagnosing another person. I know, it's <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> I'm sorry, I really do want to... Like, I look millions of dollars the, paid out to the because Rachel of Maddow in her sexual twilight sexual assault years. and sexual harassing. Rachel Maddow's like, so we're at the Tracy Chapman concert. <laughs> and this new generation... <laughs> <laughs> and she's going into Fast Car, which is her most famous song. I used to play it on the river. <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> This is, this is Ari Melber complaining about a Roots show 20 years from now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you used to be able to go. That's and so everyone true. was excited to see Questlove. <laughs> and now they all have these chips they in their head. The <laughs> the chip in their head. It's like it's literally embedded in their heads. And they're now, singing we karaoke all have it embedded to in our heads. So all of a sudden I'm not just hearing Tracy. Uh, I'm hearing them. Oh my god. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> David uh, Feldman, thank you so much for your time today, you. buddy. I love you guys. Thank, thank you. you so I love you, you. I love you right. guys. very much. I Back know. to the majority report casual Friday. Michael Brooks here. <laughs> Joining us now is the host, the illustrious host of the David Feldman Show. He's also a, a comedy writer, a stand-up comedian. You've seen his work in any number of television outlets. He's written for all sorts of people, including people that I make fun of on a fairly consistent basis. David <laughs> Feldman, <laughs> thanks for being here. Hi. Thank you so Thank much you for so doing much. this. Can you hear me? I can hear you very well. I'm assuming Matt, Brendan, okay. can you guys hear uh, uh, DF? Yeah, you can hear me, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey. so I just have to keep this short because I'm doing Sam Cedar's show today. <laughs> so I, oh, wanna, really? So uh, I'll, but, uh, you know, until they call me because I'm expecting a call from Sam Cedar. So the minute he calls, I have to hang up. But I love your, you know, I love your show. So Yeah, you like the, the uh, sort of A for effort kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, David, you had a couple requests for me before we came on. Uh, you wanted to, and people are jonesing over this, but I guess we'll get to that later. But you had something that you wanted to say about Ben Shapiro. Is that true? Yeah. I mean, I disagree with you know everything he stands for. Right. In principle. In principle. <laughs> you know. In principle. Uh, uh huh. But in principle. Here's the thing. I, I watched the clip of his walking off that BBC interview. Mm. And, you know, I'm opposed to this man in principle. But uh, <laughs> I think he realized, if you watch during that interview, he it dawns on Ben that he's talking to somebody from England. And he walked off because he didn't want to violate the Logan Act. <laughs> So in other words, okay, so I'm assuming because the Logan Act is in the news because Donald Trump has accused John Kerry of violating the Logan Act. And you think what actually happened is that Ben Shapiro is so, I mean, as the New York Times called him, the cool kid's philosopher, he's so acute mm -hmm. intellectually that he thought to himself, wait a second, I'm BBC, British government, who funds it? That's a public broadcast, I, Logan Act, I got to get out of here. It's, he's in violating of the, I think it's called the Logan Paul Act. I don't know. I, I studied this kind of stuff. Did you, so I, so I, he wasn't I having a temper. Okay, but we won't get into the weeds. But in what? other words, he wasn't having a temper tantrum. He was just trying to obey the law. There is a law on the book. And I get, you know, I don't want to come off as too esoteric. and Because, you know, I know you're a big picture guy. You don't get into the weeds on minutia, but it's actually called the Logan Paul Act, and it, it, it outlaws YouTube celebrities from trivializing suicide. Uh, so it's the yes. Logan Paul Act, and, 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 you know, Ben is, he doesn't, you know, he does not want to trivialize suicide the way Logan Paul did. It's against the law. Did you think... By the way, I, yes. I have a comedy where if I could work for Logan Paul, I would be so happy. <laughs> <laughs> He's the Jesus voice Christ. of a generation. Oh, thank you. Uh, 
Did you think when you were coming up in show business that one day there would be a way to build like a pundit profile for yourself? Not not just a pundit profile, but a pundit profile as like a preeminent conservative intellectual by like, you know, humiliating 19 year olds in college campuses and then getting them clipped up for the internet. Did you, did well, you anticipate I that? Well, I, you know, I used to humiliate college co-eds when I was in college, but I didn't know you could make money doing that. That was, you had no idea. I, no, I never. By I, telling I, them that they were stupid, that you could get clipped and get paid by oligarchs to give talks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I want to get paid playing video games. That's, right. Uh, I'm looking into that. Did you see the uh, ad yeah. that Delta did? They encouraging their people not to join a union because for their union dues, they could buy a, a game console. I listen. You know that I am pro union in principle, right? <laughs> In principle, yeah. In principle, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, the labor movement is only about 150 years old. We have to go slowly on this. Right. So, and, and uh, Delta, yes, theoretically, uh, in principle, I would love my stewardesses and my pilots to have health care because, you know, I don't want them to crash the plane. In principle, I don't want them to <laughs> crash the plane. But we have to be adults, okay? So, David, I'm I'm sensing a theme here with this in principle and you know sort of abstract goals versus concrete actions, and it's disturbing me because I thought that you were a Bernie supporter, but you sound to me like you might be switching sides here to someone like Biden or Buttigieg. No, 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 no! Oh, you no! Come on now. <laughs> I love Bernie. Okay, good. I love Bernie in in principle. I, I <laughs> and you know me. We can, you you know yes. that my heart bleeds when we talk about socialized medicine and and the sixty thousand Americans who die each year because they're underinsured. You've seen my eyes well up. Yep. I care. Yep. You, you know that that that. But right now. We need to put everything on the back burner and defeat Trump. Oh. Now, now, now is not the time to worry about the 33% of American children who are food insecure <laughs> or that we have only 11 years before the planet is destroyed. We have a constitutional crisis, and those only come around every three years. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is a constitutional crisis. Crisis, because <laughs> we have we have to stop everything to figure out what the subpoena power is of the House Judiciary Committee. Because if Jerry Nadler cannot have Mueller testify before the House Judiciary Committee, we everything will fall apart. The whole world will come crashing down. Yeah. And we have to be adults, right? And put everything on the back burner. And focus on defeating Trump, not impeachment, just defeating Trump. Well, and then uh, we can fo focus on the important stuff. Right. Na well, naturally. I mean, I think that you're reflecting the, you know, certainly that sounds like the opinion of most of the Democratic leadership. But I, I, I'm, I'm confused by this, David. And, you know, I think we have a little bit of a different perspective on this. But I'm, I'm genuinely confused because I'm, you know, I'm totally a... Uh, we have to defeat Trump and also make sure that the food supply stays on earth. And, you know, in those 33% of children that are food insecure, we need to take care of immediately. We can't back burner it. Yes. So that's why I'm voting for Sanders. But that being said, uh, you know, I don't he can't win. I don't oh. mean to interrupt you. He well, can't win. Can we get to that in he a second? Win. Can we get to that in a second, though? I obviously okay, I disagree with I, you, but I want to talk about why I can't, ask you a question. why can't Congress. And I'm I'm serious, David, because I I don't spend any time talking about Mueller or any of this stuff. But it seems to me that regardless of what you think of the, of Russia or blah blah blah, that Donald Trump has broken the law w repeatedly. Uh, Mnuchin is ignoring Congress. Barr is ignoring Congress. Why, if this and this actually is a problem, why can't they impeach him today instead of all of these telephone games that they're playing all the time? What? Ah, explain that to me. Uh, okay. Okay. First of all. 
First of all, you know we're on the same team, right? <laughs> so we're not going to deal with the circular fire okay, squad right, here. Sure. Because, you know, the last thing we want is the Democratic Party to hive off into separate little groups and not show up on Election Day to defeat Trump. So let me just say up front, and my eyes are welling up right now, and you know that I've had a lot of tragedy <laughs> in my life. So, and even though, so we're on the same team. Right. Okay? Yes. Okay, and, and, and again, I love Bernie, and I, you know, I believe in everything this man stands for, in principle. So let me talk to you about why you can't impeach. Okay. Okay, okay. why can't we okay. impeach? You can't impeach because we're a nation of laws, <laughs> and, we, we, and, and the, the American people need to be taught a lesson that nobody is above the law. That's why we can't impeach. That's why... <laughs> Well, you know, that's why Lori Laughlin and, and Felicity Huffman are going to prison. Not that their crimes were that bad, but we have to set an example and remind the Americans that everybody has to play by the rules, including Congress. And I, as you know, Trump has to go, he has to be defeated by the American people, but the Democrats have to play by the rules. And the rules are. Democrats don't do anything. <laughs> Until or what you is have it? to obey the rules. <laughs> so the rules are dem is that what Elijah Cummings meant, Congressman Elijah Cummings, when he said the American people need to wake up and he think he said that yesterday. And and some of us were a little bit like, uh, I thought didn't we give the Democrats Congress, Congressman? Yes, to be reminded of what makes America great. To, to in tell principle, us, in principle, but to actually go through an impeachment that will alienate the vast swaths of Americans who don't think impeachment is right. Right. We have to worry more about what what the crowds think, what the mob thinks, and the rule of law, which you know. This is like, I don't mean to get esoteric and in the weeds with you. Right. You know, I know you're a big, you're a big picture guy. I'm, but I'm, I'm what they call, I'm an ideas man. <laughs> really? Yeah, I don't like I'm to talk idea. about people. I like to talk about ideas. Yeah. yeah. And, and believe me, no, I would like to take Donald Trump out into the, you know, back behind the schoolyard and, you know, punch him. Believe well, me. Right. I would like to, I'd like to knock him out, but, uh, no, you know, we're, you gotta be adults. You gotta be adults. So why I, every poll, uh, suggests that Bernie Sanders, is one of the most popular politicians in the country and that he runs well head to head with Donald yeah. Trump. I wouldn't to, I wouldn't necessarily put too much weight into any poll at this time, but I will, he's one of the only people in American politics that has stayed steadily uh, positive with a lot of exposure and, you know, the, the sights of the Democratic establishment and the Republicans all reigning in on him. Why do you think he's unelectable? Well, I think he's clearly unelectable. The polls, I think, I mean, go to his rallies. Okay. Uh, have you been to any of his rallies? Because, yes. Because, you know, we're have. trying to, you, you can't win unless you get those white working man male Democratic moderates. Right. You can't win an election without them. And if you go to a Bernie rally, it's very threatening to ordinary Americans. The crowds are way too big. They're <laughs> very boisterous, enthusiastic. Right. Uh, you know, I mean, did you see Bernie at the town hall on Fox News? If that wasn't a reason not to vote for him, because <laughs> he... He does something to an audience. He, he, he won over the, the town hall, the Fox News town hall. And that's very threatening to uh, Democrats like me who live on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. <laughs> and you cannot win an election without appealing to us. Right. He is, it's right. almost demagogic the way he tells people not only what they want to hear, but what they actually need. Right. That you can't win an election by appealing to the American people's actual needs. That's not what Democrats do, and we have to obey the laws. 
There are laws. <laughs> Democrats just are nostalgic. That's all. Right. So in other words, if you're, if you're making, like, say you're making under $40,000 a year and maybe you're working two jobs, maybe you're about to lose a job and you're in Pennsylvania. I don't want to hear about that. I, I know. I know. I, I don't want to hear about that. Right. You wouldn't want to hear about That's that. But, but maybe that person, but who knows? Maybe they, maybe, maybe the preoccupations. Are there people and cons- like that? I think there's a lot Are of people, people like, like that. that. Yeah. I think, I think even if you walked... Uh, even to this day, with all the gentrification, you could you could walk I don't know twenty thirty blocks up from where you are and find some people uh, really catching a lot of hell uh, on the upper Upper East Side. Okay, so just help me out here because I'm a details guy. <laughs> okay. You know, I talk to Rob Reiner a lot, and I don't want to lord <laughs> my relationship with Rob Reiner over you because we really get into policy. When you right. say forty thousand a year working two jobs, right? That uh, that doesn't qualify as middle class, as I understand it, right? Well, I think so, it actually. T- I think you might. I don't know what the what the number is, but I I know that the the official government uh, numbers on a lot of these things are actually not very generous. So I I don't know. Well, all I know is I, I don't I'm know what officially puts class, you. Joe. Okay, you're going for okay. Yeah. So why do you think? That uh, Joe Biden, because again, I noticed with the taking Donald Trump behind the school, that was a Joe Biden line. So clearly you've been imbibing Biden. Why do you think Joe Biden is the right way to go? Why, what makes him the most electable? Because he's middle class. Right. And, and you can't win the election without appealing to the middle class. And, you know, Bernie is focusing on, you know, uh, the lower classes, and that's not what the Democratic Party is about. We're about the middle class, not the 150 million Americans who can't scrape up $500 in case of a, a, an emergency. You know, I, I get that. 150 million Americans, nearly half this country, can't find $500 without going into debt. That's not who we're going after. We're going after the middle class. Eventually, you know, I'm concerned. And look, I don't know if you, this is, you know, uh, this is the phone, but my eyes are welling up right, right now when I think about <laughs> those people. And I've had a lot of tragedy yep. in my life. You yep. know that, right? Absolutely. So I can relate pain and suffering. You know that I can relate to pain and suffering. My, my son is, my son fell in love with uh, a widow in my, anyway, I don't even want to get this. I but I can relate to pain and suffering. And but I'm middle class, right? I, I'm, you know, I made a lot of money, but I'm middle class in my thinking, <laughs> and it's incrementalism. We'll work our way down. Let's just start with focusing on the middle class, and that will work our way down to starving children in America. Sure, but let's do it incrementally, and that's what I love about Joe Biden. He's he's an adult. He's definitely an. I mean, certainly an adult. Uh, when you think so, okay. So I think we just have a disagreement about what we need to take care of and how fast we need to take care of things. But you said earlier, and even the middle class, because you know, some, it's not me; it's Rob Reiner. You know, so Rob, Rob Reiner, they, tell tell Rob Reiner about the barbell economy. But but I look, I don't want to get into the weeds. The barbell economy. It's the idea that 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 it's all, and it's probably not even a great image because there's way more in the bottom, obviously, than at the top. But the idea is that the weight is on the top is on two sides, and the middle is there's nothing in the middle. The middle is just a bar. What's the hockey stick? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's a climate change. I like thing. the hockey stick. Well, that's oh, the I, hockey stick is climate change. Well, that's that's what I was going to ask you because you yourself said earlier that we might have eleven years to keep the Earth inhabitable uh, for people, frankly, mm-hmm. like your son, uh, and and I don't know how old the widow is, but Joe Biden today yeah. apparently is announcing a centrist plan on the climate. Does that really sound like something that's going to keep the Earth alive? Yeah. You have to reach across the aisle and negotiate with carbon dioxide. <laughs> Otherwise, it's not going to work with you. And, 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 and Joe Biden has a history of reasoning right. with climate change. That's how we <laughs> defeated Hitler. I mean, you know, I don't, I know, you know, you lose the argument when you bring up Hitler, but we defeated Hitler. We sat down with him and said, right. we're reaching across the aisle. 
you know, kill <laughs> six million and stop there. <laughs> That's you negotiate. It's all a numbers game. That's so, what Joe will do. So if Joe, he, if Joe Biden, Biden was you- if Joe Biden was president in the uh, 30s, he would have. He would have offered the uh, six million deal for Hitler. He would have. He would have gone in low. Is that what Rob Ryder said? said? Yeah, and he would have said Hitler's a decent guy. Right. That's all. You know, that's the key to all of it. Was Hitler you, middle you, you class? Come in, Hitler was middle class. Yes, <laughs> very bourgeois in his thinking. <laughs> right. But don't get me started on that because you know you just had a guest on. I, I don't, you know, about socialism. Hitler was a socialist, you know. So I don't want to get in there. It's in. It's in the name Nazi. Right. It's an acronym. I don't want to get too smart for you because I'm lording my supreme intellectual. <laughs> knowledge over you, but right. uh, I was watching Ladder with Crowder, and, and uh, he talk, He told me that Nazi means mean socialism. Right. So, he was a socialist. Well, I so. can't, I, I can't argue with that. I don't have, um, uh, so, okay, so. <laughs> Just listen, let me ask you. Let me, yeah, let me, go let me, ahead. Hang on. Go ahead. I, I, I don't mean to be a bully, because I'm trying to bring everybody into the tent, okay? Right, right. And in principle, and I, I'm welcoming. And I, am I being likable here? Very. Am likable. I being likable? Very. I would say middle likable. class. Okay. Yep. Thank you. And you know, I've had tragedy in my life. <laughs> yes. Year after year, <laughs> just I've been incredibly unlucky. If you look at my biography, right? One tragedy after another, and I've never won an election, other than uh, senator from Delaware, but. I'm going to bring all my good luck to America. That's what I want to do, is bring all my good luck that I've had in my life to America. Because I'm a lucky guy, and I think luck rubs off on a nation. But Rob Reiner, that's what Rob Reiner told me. And he cares, Rob Reiner. And uh, and he directed The Ghosts of Mississippi. Did you see Ghosts of Mississippi? Uh, it was very powerful. Great movie. I think I saw some of it on TNT before I... Uh, was trying to find a basketball game, but yes. Yeah, that is a movie. Let me just say something to you young people. Rob Reiner directed Ghosts of Mississippi, <laughs> and that is a movie about, I, I, I don't know who the black guy was, but it was something about voting in the South right. and trying to get into his house. Anyway, it, it's like, it really, it really taught me the importance of uh, you know, black people, and we have to <laughs> something with them. There was, I, you know, I'm nervous. I can't remember what goes to it. I know it was about a black guy, and Alec Baldwin was thin back then. And he just, and you support listen, civil listen, rights in principle. Civil rights, yes, right, right. And you know, we, you know, why we have civil rights in this country? Why? We went slowly on it. <laughs> Right. Well, that was what ML- that was what MLK was about. I mean, and also p- uh, reaching out to the middle class. That was why he was in Tennessee class. to organize the middle class. Huh? He was in Tennessee to organize a, mar- a middle class march. Yeah, the the, yeah. the uh, garbage strike. Yeah, the well, yeah, the mm-hmm. rally to restore sanity with yes. Dr. King. Yes, yeah, so yeah. easy. Right. So we, when and, and what I love as a comedy writer is Martin Luther King, Dr. Martin Luther King said, incrementalism is a sin. And as a comedy writer, I appreciate his sarcasm. When he said incrementalism is a sin, I go, God, this guy is got, got using it. wit in comedy. He's got it. Like he, he would have killed at the White House Correspondence Center with that kind of stuff. <laughs> That actually, I, to your I, listeners, could you, you imagine guys, though? You know, <laughs> Everybody's here tonight. <laughs> Dana Bash is here. <laughs> BuzzFeed was here, but Facebook changed the algorithm on them. No, I'm just kidding. How's everybody doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. All right. 
Uh, well, you know what? <laughs> you got any I'm movie recommendations for us, David? Yeah, everything by Rod Reiner. <laughs> if, if Rod Reiner directs, let, let me tell you something. When it comes to how to live in your how to live your life, here's yes. a general rule of thumb. Yes. Always ask first. What would Rod Reiner do? <laughs> That's the key to, to life. Who's, what would Rod Reiner do? Would Rod Reiner eat this? Yes. yes. Would Rod Reiner approve of this? I don't know. Rob Reiner's voting for, for, for Biden. I know, but Rob Reiner, Jesus think? Christ. <laughs> Rob Reiner really... I have the perfect running mate. Want to know who I think the perfect running mate for... For Biden? For, uh, Rob yeah. Reiner. I'm sorry? Rob Reiner. As if I wish, but I, <laughs> you know... He's got to make more great movies. Yeah, right. Who like should... the bucket list. <laughs> <laughs> who should be... All right, who should be Biden's running mate? Well, I, I kind of wish maybe we can get like a, a Kickstarter campaign that raises about a million dollars for me to move to Los Angeles and lobby Rob Reiner to run for president. And, uh, <laughs> if we can get a million dollars, I could, you know, set up a 501c3 and pay my kids a salary. Um, <laughs> One of the things I like about you, I would think one of the things I like about your podcast is you really do have a very detailed understanding of how modern politics works, and I think you're demonstrating that in your Kickstarter. I don't know what. Well, I think you know. Uh, I think it's a good use of Kickstarter, but anyway, I think you should have moved to the the right, David. I think you. I think you could be headlining CPAC. (laughs) You're a lot fun. You're much funnier than Dennis Miller. And people oh, might understand people what your are. references are. I hate those people in principle. <laughs> and I, they sickened me. And you knew, you saw me. I was at the Javits Center when, right. when Hillary lost. <laughs> and you, you've seen pictures of me. Yeah, I, you, I couldn't get out of bed for, for a month. I couldn't get out of bed for five days. <laughs> I couldn't get out of bed for five days with Hillary Walsh. And and I lead with that at parties. People have to know up front that I hate Donald Trump. Right, of course. Everybody needs to know that I hate Donald Trump. But that's <laughs> who a, I am. It's a I real differentiator. Because there's a lot of people I'm that sorry? like it's a real differentiator because in you know, in journalists and, and entertainment and comedy circles in Manhattan as an example, you run into a lot of people that like uh, Donald Trump. Yeah, I hate him. Yeah, Ooh, no, I hate him. No. <laughs> Oh, I hate that man. <laughs> oh, hate him. I always lead with that, especially in Hollywood. Uh, you know, when I'm at, with Rob Reiner, I just go to his cocktail parties and say, don't get David started on Donald's. Oh, I hate him. Visceral, it's visceral. It's visceral. Oh. And then people like me. And then I, you know, and then I have to remind people that we have a constitutional crisis. Right. And these these things only happen every six months. Right. But then somehow no, we can't do anything about it because Democrats are constitutionally mandated to do nothing. Because we got to win. Not do nothing. No, you're you're taking you're twisting my words to remind us of how great things were once upon a time, <laughs> right. and that we're better than this. That's the role of Democrats. That's the role. Tell us who we are. When there's a shooting, anybody can outlaw guns when you're the president, sign an executive order, right. you know, taking away the NRA. You know, Obama could have taken away the NRA's tax exempt status, but he did something more important when that church was shot up. He said, That's not who we are. <laughs> and then he sang Amazing Grace. <laughs> That's. You know one of the most devastating parts of a Feldman bit or when it's like, yes, that's literally exactly what happens. Yes. <laughs> uh, and this is not a bit. This is, this is like, why do you think this is a bit? I'm sorry, Paul. De- anyway, here's who I think Joe's running mate could be. Okay, tell me. Okay? Yes. And, uh, you know, and this is, this is my being an adult, okay? Yes, please. You know how, you know how Joe has a, you know, Listen, Joe has a woman problem. He's not he's not perfect, right? Sure. So who should his running mate be? You know? <laughs> okay, hear me out. Okay. Mayor Pete. Mayor Pete. 
I repeat. Now, wait, wait, wait. How, would, know, this, how would this solve this woman problem? Because he's gay. <laughs> Did you know that Mayor Pete is gay? <laughs> I knew that he's gay, and I know that he's a, a gentrifier and a and a and a military guy. Those, that's what I know about Mayor Pete. And he gets it. Yeah, but he's gay. Okay. So but he's gay. Right, so did you know that he's gay? <laughs> yes, I did know that. Yes. Okay. 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 Uh, you know, and I agree with you. I have a lot of problems with Mayor Pete. Uh, I, Rob Reiner is furious at him for, the, for you know, what went on in South Bend. There was something with the African-American police chief that he fired. And yep. some, something, something, uh, demolishing <laughs> black people's houses. Something, something, black people being rounded, rounded up by the... It's a ghost of Mississippi thing, Rob. You should rent the movie. I know I'm sorry. But, you know, he, he's got a problem with the, the black people. And believe me, <laughs> uh, you know, a mayor running a, a city... Uh, you know, and by the way, that's a lot of responsibility to be running the oh. fourth largest city in Indiana. <laughs> I mean, that is, he's up against a lot. So, yeah, the, the, whatever, something with the black. Isn't there, isn't the there, the isn't there a, uh, a, a, a mayor from Florida who runs a city that's bigger than Mayor Pete, who nobody's paying any attention to? I don't even know the guy's name. Is he gay? He's a black is man. Is he gay? He's an African-American man. He's black. No. So, what uh, the hell? Does he does he go slowly on things? I, well, I, I think he, I think he does. Reiner. I think he does. Well, I think unfortunately he. Po- I think the problem with him is that he supports fully abolishing ICE. So you guys might not be as excited. That doesn't sound very middle class, I guess. Oh, I hate ICE. Oh, I live in. I, I, I stay with Rob Reiner. And oh, I hate. Oh, I hate what they're doing. I hate what they're doing to Rob Reiner's cleaning people. I hate them. And, and, and uh, I, does Rob Reiner, I, does Rob Reiner have a poster welcoming refugees that he shows to, to uh, the people that clean and, and maintain his home? Refugees well, are welcome here. The, he tells the undocumented workers who work for him, I've been there. He said, do not talk to ICE. You'll be violating the Logan Act. <laughs> You cannot talk to foreigners. It's a violation of the Logan Act. And, you know, they're going around. You know, I, I stay with Rob Reiner when I'm in in uh, Hollywood. Right. I'm not trying to lord my relationship, but, uh, you know, he's got seven undocumented workers working for him, and we're terrified that they're going to get rounded up for ICE. So what we did on Wednesday was uh, we got them an Uber. A big Uber and took them. We swung for the Uber just on Wednesday. Uh, you wanted so to make sure back. because because maybe what maybe what some people don't know I don't know if you know but the Uber and Lyft drivers were striking because the companies have them in an indentured servitude system and they can't make a living and so they're asking people not to use the services on Wednesday afternoon and that was the time that you and Rob chose to send his undocumented cleaning people away from his home <laughs> to evade ICE in an Uber. Is that, do I understand you correctly? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, you're saying Uber, that's ride sharing. It's, you have a car, it's capital, that's like, Uber is socialism. You're, you whole people should know that Uber is, it's ride sharing, right. remember? Well, I do remember, I think that was, that was the old, that was the first branding for these services in about like 2013 and 14, Yes. As a socialist, I can't believe you're putting down Uber. I have a car. You need to go somewhere. I'll share my car with you. It's beautiful. An Airbnb. I'm going to share my home with you. Why would you make fun of that? Well, I, I think I'm making fun of it because I think the, the, the execution is different than the sales pitch. So you're, you're going through an app. Are you? Yeah. I don't know. You lost me at execution I'm against capital punishment. <laughs> so, and, in uh, principle? What, what? Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm against capital punishment. I, oh. I believe. All right, fair enough. Let me ask you a question about Uber, though. Yes. If Uber's so bad as you say it is, why is Ariana Huffington 
on the board of directors. <laughs> you mean what because, you because Ariana, Ariana Huffington? Do you know who Ariana Huffington I, I is? I do. I mean, you do know that there was a lot of controversy at Huffington Post about, like, you know, not paying people for blog posts, maybe some not great labor practices. There. It's Ariana. work sharing. It's a sharing economy. <laughs> it's, it's work sharing. It's work sharing. <laughs> it's work sharing. <sighs> I believe when so people when Post? people were fired at Huffington Post, I think they were. I think it was that they were disengaged. Is what well, was what they called it. Disengaged. I think they weren't getting enough sleep, and, and I think <laughs> that's what. It, <laughs> You've been reading Ariana's work on the sleep revolution? I think that Ariana came back to the Huffington Post. She looked around and said, you know what? You have bags underneath your eyes. You need more sleep. You're fired. <laughs> go home and sleep. <laughs> Hopefully you'll be, you'll be depressed. You should go into a depression. So you'll just stay in bed all day. And that's the best thing for your health. It's just to be depressed, immobile, have no money. Almost like disappear, fall through the cracks, so you can just focus on your sleep. That's yeah. what Ariana was trying to do for them. So it was actually she didn't make any altruistic. money off her. What? So it was altruistic. Mm -hmm. So D David, you're, I, you're, you I said it was altruistic. David, you're you're. A, we only have like a minute left or so, but I just have to say you're a horrible person. You are you are like in everything in principle. In principle, <laughs> every single evil tendency of the modern uh, media and democratic party and corporate practice you are embodying from rob reiner to uber i mean jesus you're no. just you're terrible I, you know what? joe biden to ariana is this a sarcasm thing that you're doing no, I'm not. Or do you I'm, really I'm, mean not that I'm, I'm not sophisticated enough to do sarcasm. I, I just I speak from the gut. Do you really think I'm a horrible person? Middle class. I, I mean, David. This I'm is, sorry. This is just this is just this is just horrible. It is. It's horrible. But I hate Trump. <laughs> How can I be horrible if I hate Trump? And and, and you know, I talk really loud at Starbucks about the constitutional crisis. <laughs> And pound the table. <laughs> and how I want to punch. Like, I hate Bill Barr. Right, you want to hit him. I want to punch him. Take him out behind the, the schoolyard <laughs> and punch him. How am I a horrible person? The first thing I open with is I hate Trump. This is this is this is this is becoming so triggering. <laughs> This is like why I don't watch MSNBC. <laughs> it's just a bunch of absolutely horrible people who think that, that that recognizing that Donald Trump is a horrible human being is some type of exemplary behavior. <laughs> what do you want, a cookie? <laughs> Love you. Oh, I, I love, love you so Manish much. Haibi please. Show. I love huh? No, I I just gotta say to people, please, I I don't listen to many podcasts. Um, but I really I listen to your podcast almost every episode. It's great. And the the commentaries, no, even the bit on Uber, I mean, I know that you just did this really smart uh insight like this history of the rideshare scam. You do you do a commentary, then you... I mean, what other show are you going to have <laughs> Ben Burgess and then Jackie the Joke Man Martling on? <laughs> By the way, Ben Burgess, I want to... That's why I know we're at it. I love you, man. I, I love you, too. Sam. Sam, you, Sam, you're the best. But Ben Burgess <laughs> has really turned me on to Marxism. Yeah. I owe you for that, so thank you. And, you know, we're all in this together in all seriousness. And I mean this, that, you know, we're all part of the same fabric of the universe. And I've learned that because you've allowed Ben Burgess to come on and my show and teach me about Marxism. So I'm going to ask you for a favor. Sure. Don't take this the wrong way. I need exclusivity <laughs> with Ben. He can only do my show. <laughs> I, I think pushing Marxism is a zero-sum game. Right. <laughs> there are winners and losers, and I'm poaching your Marxist professor, because I want to be the number one purveyor 
of Marxism <laughs> on the internet. <laughs> I think I can win this way. Well, I support that in principle. Thank you. David Feldman, I please. Love you, I love you I so love you. much. You're a- I love your show. I love Sam's show and I love your show and I love when you like talk to Professor Richard Wolf and go, So what's the deal with your dad? <laughs> You ever kick it with them? You still get along with your dad? I love how you probe into their personal life. Get them to talk about <laughs> their struggles. Like, he's like a fucking Marin bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have Richard Wolf on. I go like, he studied Altasair, but who are your guys? Who are your guys? <laughs> <laughs> Lennon, man. I tried to read Lennon once after a terrible breakup. <laughs> I love you, David. I love you. Thank right. you. Let's take so, coffee or something. Of course. I'll, I'll text you. Okay. All right. Bye. Uh, folks, on the phone, it is a, I don't know, we'll find out, I guess. Possibly, potentially a pleasure to welcome back to the program the host and proprietor of the David Feldman show, I believe it is, uh, that uh, runs both on a uh, Pacifica station out in, um, in L.A., is my understanding, and also is available as a podcast. David Feldman, welcome to the program. Hey, thank you uh, for having me on, Sam, and I uh, want to compliment you very brave to have a truth teller like me on the show so well i tell the truth you do you tell the truth and um i i like to think that we've had other people who come on the show who tell the truth but if you want to feel like you're the first one that's your prerogative well i'm a little different from the other truth tellers because I see the slippery slopes that are out there. And I also recognize the existential threats, unlike the other truth tellers you have on your show. So, well, what, what would you like to start with? What truth would you like to lay on us that is that much more truthful than the other truth tellers that we've had on the program? I mean, you're, you're clearly well, implying that um, you're both more truthful and more courageous. Is that it? Is that the sense I'm getting? Be- because you're brave enough to recognize slippery slopes and existential threats that are out there. For example, they're demonetizing Louder with Crowder. And that is an existential threat to new new journalism, and it's a slippery slope. Uh, it's an existential threat to new journalism. So are you suggesting that, that Stephen Crowder is a journalist? I'm suggesting that first they came for Louder with Crowder, then they come for Jimmy Dore, and when they come to me, I won't be able to say anything because they got rid of the First Amendment. (laughs) That's why. But why wouldn't you be able to say anything if you've been demonetized? You'll still be able to speak, yes? Yeah, but what's the point if you can't get paid to speak? (laughs) That's the whole point. I want to get paid for my opinions. And once they take my my money away, why bother to opine on things I have no right to be talking about? <laughs> that's actually, that's actually, I mean, I, I mean, I, I think that I understand the point you're making, but I thought that the, uh, the point for you to opine was to speak out on behalf of the truth. I mean, you start off by saying you were a truth teller. Um, and I'm telling I mean, that, that, yeah. Well, that doesn't. It doesn't seem like you've qualified that truth telling with having to get paid. Like, uh, but I guess you're saying like, uh, you, are you are you a truth teller for hire, or are you just a professional truth teller? Like, you don't do it. You're not an amateur truth teller. Hey, I I read a book two years ago. Okay, <laughs> and I repurpose that book every day on my show. I just regurgitate this book that I read in different ways, and I layer on emotion, right. and it's very compelling, and I should be paid for that because I, I believe what I'm saying, and I want to get paid for that, 
And occasionally, you know, I cross the line and reveal how misogynistic and racist and homophobic <laughs> I truly am deep down inside. But hey, I'm a comedian. Sometimes I don't know where the line is. And I want to get paid <laughs> for trying to negotiate that line. Because it's an existential threat and a slippery slope to demonetize these guys. And, you know, you're glib. You're glib. <laughs> Well, all right, wait a second. Before we get to my glibness, totally I have to ask you, what what was the book that you read? Listen, Liberal by <laughs> Thomas Frank. I read it two years ago. That's all I need to know. Okay. I read that book two years ago, and I can go on five days a week and just repurpose that, just with a little screaming and yelling. Sometimes I cry. You know, I make it about me, like John Stewart testifying by the House Judiciary Committee. Standing ovation. Did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> standing up. Now, wait a second. Standing. Now, do you take issue with, with, with John Stewart's testimony because he wasn't paid? He wasn't paid, but it was a it was really good PR, good exposure. Good exposure. Standing ovation. Yeah. And he told Congress to do its job, which was very brave, to tell Congress tell the House Judiciary Committee to do its job. I mean, who talks to the House Judiciary Committee like that other than Candace Owens? <laughs> uh, all right, so, so it, you, you have, you've mentioned the existential yeah, anyway. threat and I guess the slippery slope here. So you're worried basically that they're coming for your money. I'm not, no, no, I love uh, this, this country. I love this country, and I, you know, I'm not going to tell you how to do your show because I watch it. You know that I watch this show. I, I, I that, I've, I've picked up on that. Yeah. Okay, and and you were talking about the debates. You're upset about the lineup for the, the Democratic debates. Well, I'm not upset about it. I'm uh, I'm assessing it. Yeah, because you're not a truth teller, and you don't see slippery slopes. Don't you think the debates are an existential threat to the Democratic Party? Well, I, in, in what respect? Well, why are they having debates? Why do the Democrats have to have this circular firing squad and shoot themselves in the foot by debating? This is exactly what Trump wants. They, they want us to divided and arguing and fighting among ourselves. <laughs> We should be. We should be having. I'm a. De you know. I'm a. You know. I'm a Democrat. Wait. Right? Wait. 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 Hold on. I have. A, I, wait. 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 There are two particular types of absolute asshole personas that you seamlessly move in between uh, David Feldman, and I feel like now you're going. We're going from certain web personalities to certain MSNBC personalities. All of a sudden, where are we? Which direction are we going in? I do not like ad hominem attacks. <laughs> when you, you 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 just called me Feldman, yes. Why bring why bring my religion into this? <laughs> <laughs> Can't I have a conversation without you calling me Feldman? Well, it sounds like you have a strong case for YouTube. Now you don't. Do well, no, wait a second. <laughs> You're upset about the the circular firing the debate. Yeah, the debate, which you call a circular firing squad, uh, where uh, Democrats are going to be going after Democrats. Um, what? Uh, it, it's Democrats once again never missing an opportunity to miss an opportunity. <laughs> what are we arguing about? Why do we have to have these debates? It's exactly. Do you think there should exactly, be no primary whatsoever? I mean that would be the logical extension there, right? No, I, I, I think there should be primaries for the same reason I wear clothes. You know, it's good to hide things and not reveal everything, but this is an existential threat, I'm not Trump. <laughs> and Joe Biden, Joe Biden is the guy. You know, you, I know you're going to you think I... Go ahead. Did you see Joe Biden this week? I did. In fact, we have video of Joe Biden uh, talking about uh, Donald Trump. Uh, here is let's play a little bit of, of that since you you brought it up. Here is okay. a, is this an ad that Joe Biden did? It's a campaign video where he's talking about a pledge that he's going to sign or that he actually signs on camera 
so here it is. Here's um, here is uh, uh, Trump, you know, asking for thirty thousand emails. Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the thirty thousand emails that are missing. Folks, this is simple. American elections should be decided by the American people, not by Russia or any other foreign power. Donald Trump doesn't think it matters if candidates for presidency accept damaging information on other opponents from foreign governments. I believe he's dead wrong. Your campaign this time around, if foreigners, if Russia, if China, if someone else offers you information on an opponent, should they accept it or should they call the FBI? I think you might want to listen. I don't, there's nothing wrong with listening. I won't be part of any attempt to undermine our democracy or public confidence in our institutions. In February, working with our close Democratic allies in Europe, I helped develop a pledge that we encourage candidates running for office to take, promising they would use no disinformation in their campaigns or tolerate outside interference. I said then that were I candidate for office, I would sign the pledge. Today, I'm making good in that promise. And then, he, and then he signs the uh, pledge there. I also noticed that in the background, he had a bunch of books on the windowsill. One of them was, was Mr. Putin, I see. Uh, yeah. What are the other books that he's got there? Anyways. Do um, you want me to respond to that? With, I mean, I'm, I'm yeah. afraid I'm going to I'm afraid I'm going to end up lording my deep intellect over you guys. But I, that's why we I'm, have you here. Please. Okay. Do lord. That, I, I am shocked that that ad is still running because it is identical to the Lyndon Johnson Daisy ad that he had a poll in 64 against Goldwater. That is so daring for him to do something like that. And that's a game changer, that ad. I can't believe he had the courage to do that. That's the Daisy ad from 64, and they're going to pull it because that's not – I mean, he's he's playing rough with Trump. You know? So you think that's a, just a go at him, like, uh, in, in that the the signing of that he, document he, on his page on the, on his desk is is the equivalent of dropping a nuclear weapon. He he took Trump out behind the gym and punched him in the face. That's what Joe Biden did, and he shouldn't do that. That's not who <laughs> Joe is. But sometimes, you know, Joe has to throw down, and he just did it. You know what Joe said? He, well, Middle class Joe. What did, what did middle class? <laughs> what middle did class say? Joe. Yeah. Middle class Joe, and he is middle class because if he were part of the upper class, he could have afforded a better facelift. <laughs> <laughs> that he's a man of the people. Right. I you should be I demonetized for that joke. Yeah. That was very that, mean. That is very <laughs> odd hominem. Of odd hominem. 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 What are you? Doing? What are you Ralph Crampton? That's that's well, that was a Crampton reference. Yeah. No, Joe Biden. <laughs> you know what he said this week? You know what Joe Biden said this week? No. Which no other candidate has said. What's that? He what? called Trump an he called Trump an existential threat. Yes. To our country. He he literally said that. He said. He said Donald Trump is an existential threat to America. And, and, you know, your guy, Bernie or Elizabeth Warren, what do they talk about? Student loan debt, climate change, health care. But Joe Biden, he goes after the really big stuff, existential threats. <laughs> it's true. Uh He's going after. What's, Bernie, what's Bernie's plan? You're, what's Bernie's plan on existential threats? Well, I think his plan is probably just to win the presidency. That's, I think, what everybody's plan is. Bernie's plan is is to defeat existential threats by just winning the presidency. Well, well that's actually, what, isn't uh, that what Joe Biden's plan is? Like that's that the well, way our, you get our, rid of. He said, he said Donald Trump is an existential threat. Right now, he's just a blip. But if he stays on for four more years, he'll be an existential yeah, threat. Yeah, well, actually, Bernie drew uh, some pretty powerful historical parallels in his speech the other day. And I think he wants to not only get rid of the threat of Trump, but of the conditions that lead to Trump and Trump-like things, David. Or uh, Feldman. Oof. Like what? <laughs> like what? What's more important than an existential threat? You tell me. I see us an existential threat level orange. That's how bad it is right now. Did you, you wait, wait, what, did you did you work on that system with Rob Reiner? Great man. 
great man, Rob Reiner. <laughs> when Harry met Sally, I, I watched that movie and I go, I want to know who directed When Harry Met Sally and whoever directed that movie, he's going to tell me who to vote for. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you watched that movie and you wanted to know what she was having. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cats is delicatessen. Right. Don't, don't, think I don't, get, don't think I don't get the anti-Semitic subtext to that joke. <laughs> Where Meg Ryan fakes an orgasm at cats is delicatessen. And I'm supposed to just, I'm supposed to roll with that, right? Okay. Right. In other so words, what is, what is in that? other words, that if you're like if if someone is um, having an experience with a Jew, that they could only have a fake orgasm. I uh, I I, I want to talk politics. I don't. Okay, I don't okay, want to okay, talk. Okay. 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 No, I understand. With you. I, no, I understand. I, I, I understand. I understand. I, um, I, so, David, <laughs> uh, Joe Biden has has named an existential threat. His solution is to win the presidency. And mm -hmm. you are waiting for any other candidate to talk about what they perceive as existential threats. Is that what you're saying? No, I think it should, in all honesty, I, he, it's his turn to be president. And I don't see why we have to debate this. But, you know, we need to get rid of Trump. That's all. And, and so, so you, are you calling for basically everyone else to drop out of the primary? Is that what's going on? I'd like people to stay in, but I, I think they should have a debate, but the debate should be how great Joe Biden is. That's what we should be debating. Like, what do we love most about Joe Biden? Uh, uh, David, 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 were you, yeah. are you at all concerned that the same attitude you have now was potentially basically the same attitude that led us to picking Hillary Clinton and that didn't work out so well? I, I love her because I support women. I love women. And she was a female, and it was her turn. She waited in line. She took the number at the bakery and waited patiently. At Katz's. But wait, she Katz's took the number deli. at Katz's. Now, if it yeah. was, what, why isn't it, it was a, her turn? Why isn't it a turn for a woman this time? Because this is an existential crisis, <laughs> and and it, it's not Elizabeth Warren's turn or Kamala Harris's turn. Or Cory Booker's turn. <laughs> Am I allowed to bring that up? B bring up what? Cory Booker. W w what exactly about Cory Booker? You know, he's a man, right? So says you. But uh, <laughs> Biden. Biden. You know, you know, and I don't mean to be rude because I like doing this show. And right. I, I think you guys are cute. And the naivete is kind of... Delicious, but you're you're childish, and and you're not you're not pragmatic. You're you're not adults. You don't recognize the slippery slopes and the existential threats, and you don't understand the the, the sweeping arc of history. That if Biden or when Biden becomes president, everything goes back to the way it was, and it's going to be perfect. No, I was going to ask you about this. What 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 what, what the way it was was that. Mitch McConnell was not even giving hearings for a Supreme Court nominee. You're talking about Merrick Garland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, that's because of Trump. But, but Trump was Trump. not president at the time. Yeah, but uh, McConnell knew that Trump was going to be. Once you get rid of Trump, McConnell is going to be the centrist. He's dying to be. It's so simple. It's it's so simple because Joe knows how to negotiate with McConnell, and and you know Joe was better than Obama. Had Joe nominated Merrick Garland, McConnell would have approved him because Joe knows how to negotiate. That's with fascinating. Republican. Is there any other differences between Joe and Barack that you could identify that might have led McConnell to be more receptive to Joe, David? Well, let's see. Uh, uh, let's, what are the differences between Joe and Barack Obama that 
would appeal to a senator from Kentucky, Obama. Well, uh, they're, bo they're both not Jewish, and uh, I don't know what the difference is. There was something about Barack Obama that I don't know what it was. Maybe, oh, he was from Illinois and a community organizer. That's right. That, that, you know, McConnell hates community organizers. That's what the Civil War was about. Right. Lincoln was deploying community, community or organizers to the South. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the giant, it was a union army, a union of organizers. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Well, Lincoln did come from I, Illinois as well, and that probably uh, stuck yeah. to sticks in the craw of a lot of right. people. He found, he found it Illinoising that Lincoln. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, wow. That's a joke. Illinoising. Right. Hey, did you, you see that the you Democratic concerned at all, David, if uh, if Donald Trump was able to do a kind of he's you know, he obviously has no shame and he'll lie and uh, that he's going to go back out on the trail and have a lot of opportunity to talk about how Joe Biden voted for all the trade agreements that were so bad for the industrial Midwest and was a main point person for credit card companies in the Senate to hurt working people that he even fought against Obama and big parts of health care, apparently that. Trump can turn right around and, and shamelessly lie and attack him, maybe even from like the fake left, the way he did to Hillary. Does that worry you at all, or is that naive? Huh? <laughs> well, well, I, don't, I, don't know what, I don't know what you're talking about, about Biden. Well, I'm talking Biden's about Joe Biden's guy. record. He's, he's what happened the last the time? The firefighters support Joe Biden. He's middle class. He's a union guy. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> You're just making up stuff now. I think the firefighters supported trouble. Hillary, and that didn't, and along with all the other major labor unions, that didn't save her from this, from her own voting record. Oh, so you don't like the firefighters? So you think John Stewart was grandstanding in front of the House Judiciary Committee this week? That's really nice of you. The first responders. You hate the first responders. Why? Why do you hate first responders? Well, I, I would I, obviously uh, you should be demonetized for lying about my view like that. It's a slippery slope if we let people lie like that about other people's positions, David. David, you're a child. You're a child, and Sam's a child. You're all child. Children, You're all children, children. You're all child. Let me, children. Let yeah. me ask you this: uh, where, where exactly are you monetized, anyways? I speaking fees. I have a deal with a gun manufacturer. Uh, that, uh, I I brandish the gun during my show because uh, I'm leading a movement, like like ladder with Crowder, and uh, you know I'm for reasonable gun ownership. But who's but, monetizing uh, you? Like I like like you're you're worried about YouTube demonetizing you. You don't even have a YouTube show. Yeah, but I, I get I, I'm monetized. I Dave Rubin throws me some Coke money, and I care about this country, and and I want you know I'm afraid of chaos. That's what I'm afraid of, and you don't care. You don't have children. I do have children. Worried about the few. Yeah, but I saw them. Not really. And what do you mean, the, not really? What does that mean, not really? <laughs> They're real children. It's not the kind of children that that. That I would approve of. I, I, I don't know what that me. means. And I, I'm not going to come on your show and tell you that you're not raising your children properly. That's something I would tell you in a private conversation <laughs> for five hours. Well, nevertheless, they're still children. I mean, if I'm they're not raising children. them well, they're, I'm still, they're still children. You said, like, you don't have children, implying that I don't care about the future, but I do have children. Yeah, but, you know... You yourself are a child, so they're more like peers. <laughs> well, if I'm a That's child, then wouldn't I also care about the future? I, I think you're naive. <laughs> I don't think you've learned what real politique means. Uh, but, uh, David, you know are you at all inspired by what's what, what is the name of the? I forget the young woman's name, but she, I mean, she's uh, she's maybe not even a woman. She's only like fourteen years old, but she's been doing these incredible earth, you know, these really moving speeches on the climate crisis and demanding that adults actually take literally her future viability to live seriously. 
Uh, what is yes, her name? Greta, she, Greta she, Thunberg. She, what do you think of her, David? Is she is she just a child? Yes, she plagiarized her entire policy from Joe Biden. She lifted Joe Biden's climate change policy word for word. And, and Malala yeah. Yousafzai, I'm guessing, is not giving Joe Biden credit either. You know, you guys, you're disrespectful to, to a great man, Joe Biden. Hey, did you see in Flint, Michigan, you want to talk about bravery? You want to talk about great Democrats who are pragmatic, who know how to pronounce real politique properly, <laughs> unlike you guys, because you're, you just have this narrow view of the world. Did you see the Democratic attorney general in Michigan isn't prosecuting the Flint lawmakers? for putting lead in the drinking water and poisoning an entire generation of African-Americans, pretty much causing ethnic cleansing in Flint, Michigan. Did you see the bravery of the, the state attorney general not to prosecute the how, people in Flint for how, poisoning the water? How is that brave? It's, it's that, That's the same thing you would ask of Pelosi and Biden. How, how are they brave? You don't understand the bravery. It's the easy path would have been to hold the Flint officials accountable. But the Democrats, it was a profile in courage not to prosecute these Republicans because we need all hands on deck. All of us need to be focused on defeating Trump at the ballot box in 2020. And, and the idea, all hands on deck. And the idea is that if you, if you were to do that, it would um... dilute the product. I see. In other words, if we had Democratic prosecutors focusing on the water in Flint, we're, we're diluting the effort to defeat Trump, which is the only thing that matters. And once we get rid of Trump, the drinking water in Flint will automatically become lead free. That's a fact. <laughs> That's a fact. Wow. Um... It's bad politics to prosecute for the Democrats in Michigan to prosecute the people who poisoned the water in Flint. That is childish. It's the uh, it's the Obama torture principle. You know, we got we, when it comes to poisoning uh, families and an entire city with lead. You got to turn backwards, the page. not yeah, turn forwards, the page. not backwards. Right? We got to turn the page. It's a turn the page scenario, is what you're saying. Turn exactly. There you go. Well, you know, but David, David, can I ask you? And I and I know, and I don't mean to bring up some a lot of shared heritage in this room, but and and certainly with you, uh, Feldman. But there is a quote that I, I heard uh, years ago from someone who was prosecuting uh, Nazi war crimes, and I think in this case, collaboration of the Vichy government officials in France, and there was a. A, a Nazi guard that they were thinking they were bringing charges against in the 90s. And someone said something to the effect of, you know, can't we just move on? And the prosecutor said, you can't turn the page until the page has been written. What do you think about you're that, about David? Claus, you're, you're talking about Klaus Barbie. I don't think it was Klaus that Barbie. Was, Klaus Barbie was in Latin America. I think they found Klaus Barbie in Latin America, but I think Klaus Barbie was the, the French collaborator. Right, Sam Barbie. Uh, he, I, I think he was the. Um, I thought he was the head the, of the the, uh, the the doctor, right? The, I know that was Himmler. I thought. I no, Himmler is no. no. That was that was that was Mengele. Mengele, right? Exactly. No, uh, Barbie. I, I don't know if it was the uh, French prosecuted Barbie. Oh, I, I, I was. I have all the training. Oh, he cards. was the head of the SS uh, and Gestapo. Um, Barbie. Yeah, and he. Oh, you're anybody, right. Yes, anybody, yes. He was known as the Butcher of Lyon. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. And then he. And boy, the the Butcher of Lyon. I will tell you something. You get a pork chop from that guy. So lean. <laughs> I'm just saying. And then he went into the. Then he went into the Holocaust business, and it was all downhill. But uh, he we should be. We should butcher. be demonetized for that joke. It's a slippery slope. He then went, you know, that he went to Bolivia and worked uh, for a, a, a cocaine government in Bolivia that was backed by the CIA and had a paramilitary that worked for drug cartels. Oh, you're right. Well, and he was needed. extradited to France um, in, in 83, and then he died in 91 of cancer. Um, 
So there you go. Well, the the page must be uh, must be written and read, and then turned, and then turned. The page must be turned. Like for example, we were talking about. But bars, sometimes you don't right? have time to write it, and you don't have time to turn to read it, and so you just turn it. Uh, you turn the page. For example, I had a Ken joke, like a Barbie and Ken joke. Right. But that time has passed. I've turned the page and moved on, and I'm not going to do a, a Barbie and Ken joke because I've turned the page. In other words, you, you that that page is gone. Well, um, well, you know, I'm going to take hey, can a lot I, of. Can I, can I criticize? Do you mind if I? Because we've had fun. Right. Uh, we've had a spirit. We've had a spirited Somewhat. debate with. Very few, may I say, ad homina homina attacks. Okay. But I have a problem with your business model. Well, let's get to it because um, my business model requires that I uh, let you go shortly. You ask your listeners for money. And, uh, uh, you know, I give to NPR. And I'm going to ask you a question. Do you think I should give to you or NPR? I think you should give to us, of course. Mm Mm-hmm. Did you know that Steve Inskeep from NPR only makes half a million a year? I was not aware of what Steve Inskeep makes at all. No. Jesus Christ, half a million dollars a year to do that? How does he live? I mean, so you're, meanwhile, you're asking me to give money to the majority report when poor Steve Inskeep and Scott Simon are only making half a million dollars a year. Uh, you know, I got to be honest with you. I, have we, have we, we played clips of Steve, Steve Inskeep, right? Yeah, not that impressive. Not, not good. That, not impressive. But I, I, I got to be honest with you. I don't listen to NPR, so I, I really, not a hundred percent sure. You know, well, are these guys well, on a lot? If you listen to NPR, if you listen to NPR, you would stop asking listeners to donate because we need to support the truth tellers at NPR. They, you know, they are, they are on the front line. They're on the vanguard. They don't waste. The listener's time putting Glenn Greenwald on or Noam Chomsky or Ben Burgess. You know, if we lose NPR, that's an existential threat. <laughs> and, and we would, would you say that NPR is the Joe Biden of media operations, David? Uh, w- well said. I wish I had come <laughs> up with that. If we lose NPR, we will no longer hear original voices like Sarah Val, David Brooks. <laughs> The New Yorker's David Remnick, and I, I can't live in a world where I don't spend my weekends listening to ten-year-old archives of Click and Clack <laughs> or, or, or George Will. Did you know that they have George Will on once a week, waxing poetic on baseball? You never do that. No. Yeah, uh, and who's going to berate me for voting for Jill Stein in New York if not NPR? Well, exactly. We might. Yeah, I was going to say, I. Uh, that sounds like a job for me. I have a tote bag for that. <laughs> Here's something you'll never hear on the majority report. Baseball is a metaphor for life. That's something you never hear on the majority report. <laughs> is that no, Scott no, that's, Simon or no, George that's, Will? That's George Will. I read that book. That's George Will. Yeah, yeah. But you read the book. But you're too afraid to talk about it on your show. It's true. Unlike NPR. I mean, I forgot about it. I read it like 30 years ago. It's an old book. No, you rather waste your listeners' time prattling on about Lula and the Sudan, unlike Ira Glass, (laughs) who cuts through the noise and tells us the truth about Brazil. They consider all things. They can all things considered. Last week, Ira Glass on This American Life introduced me to a barista working in Astoria who brews a roast made up of coffee beans from Brazil and Sudan. And, <laughs> and, 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 you know, Michael Brooks, and I know you're friendly with Michael Brooks. And I mean, he's a cute kid. He's sort of. Here. But you don't cover... Huh? Nothing. Go ahead. Well, he, you don't cover the world talking about whatever he talks about. You cover the situation in Brazil by introducing us to the tastes and sounds of Brazil. <laughs> because I'm white 
I'm white and I'm college educated. I'm college educated. <laughs> so I already get it, Michael Brooks. I already get it, okay? What do you I get, get David Feldman? I, I don't need to hear you go on and on about Lula in Brazil locking up Bolasnero. We get it. <laughs> Lula is Trump. I went to college, Michael Brooks, okay? I don't need to keep hearing this over. How many times do I have to be told that Bolsonaro is being held in prison? So you get that Bolsonaro is an iconic left-wing political prisoner. You understand the point. I, I don't need to hear how Lula is locking up his political enemies. I need to hear Ira Glass telling me how this barista unlocks the flavors of a Brazilian <laughs> coffee bean. That's right. what, that's, well, I listen. think he only makes a million a year, I request. <laughs> David, we will, we're going to take this all under advisement. I feel like to a certain extent, we've all learned something today from you. Uh, your, your children, your children, your children, you're, you're, you don't know how the world really works right. and you'll never ever ever be able to pronounce real politic the way i can well we're gonna take uh we're gonna clip your saying that and we're going to practice i think that over sam and, and i have again. a very good sense of real uh, politics i think you're an existential threat to <laughs> Well, well, David, you're right about journalism. one thing in that we are both cute and delicious. I don't know why you would say that, but <laughs> you're a child. David, uh, it, it, was, it was nearly, nearly at several moments during this time a pleasure to have you on the program today. Uh, David Feldman, available at the David Feldman Show. Thank you, uh, David. Thank you. It's been a slippery slope. Right. It certainly, it hey, certainly I got a big, big earful uh, from our next guest about uh, what we were doing wrong, apparently, on this show. David Feldman. Uh, David, welcome to the program. Hello. Hi. I'm always glad to be back. Uh, just a little, a little surprised by the tenor of the your show today, Sam. Yeah, uh, a you, surprise. you mentioned that. Now, do you want to be more specific? Well, you know, a hundred million people stay home on election day, <laughs> right? Right. You know that? Yeah. And I'm not trying to be critical of you, but it's this lack of civility. They're not coming to vote because of shows like yours where you came up on on good people. You know, I don't agree with Joe Biden. I, I'm like David Brooks. You know, I'm a socialist from way back. <laughs> and, <laughs> okay. Did you read David Brooks? Did, did I you read, read David Brooks today? He, he used to be a socialist. And that means you have bona fides you should be listened to. And I'm an old lefty. Yeah. I'm an old lefty, Sam. Yeah. You know that. I know that. But you're not you're not gonna win beating up on good people like Joe Biden. He's a good man. I don't, I have problems with him. I, I you know, in principle, I want Bernie. You know that. In right. Principle. In principle. But, but in, in, yeah. in, are you suggesting there's a difference between your principle and your, um, yeah, here he is, uh, David Brooks. We have a picture of him up there as uh, a social Democrat back in Republicans the day. Republicans can have him. And, um, but, so what do you, what do you mean by in principle? Like what do you mean in principle? We, in principle, we need to listen to the adults and have a civil conversation and not attack Joe Biden because sometimes he tells the truth and sometimes he doesn't. The Democrat, <laughs> this is a party, we're a big tent, Sam. There should be room for facts and lies. <laughs> and to go after, you don't, you don't win that way you know there should be room for for somebody who had no hair and then suddenly has hair there should be room for a candidate who when his teeth got brown 
he, like Biden did, he sent his brown teeth off to prison because they were super predators, and he got them capped and made them nice and white because he didn't want brown super predator teeth. And there's room for everybody in our party. <laughs> and you sit there, you just sit there, and we're not going to win. We don't win this way. You know, like the, way you, the way you treat, I, I, it was heartbreaking to see Kamala Harris have to walk away. She could have won. She, she could have won the nomination and beat Trump. But the, the Bernie, they, they destroyed her. Wait, 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 she could have won. I still think she can win. Yeah, I still think she can win. <laughs> but how could she win if there was no support for her? There is support for her. Ask all my friends who know something, who know politics and policy, we know she can win. She can win the nomination. <laughs> but, you know, she, she, you know, she just couldn't take... She had it with the Bernie Bros, you know. <laughs> so wait, so you're saying she just like was just sick of it? She was sick of it and just was. So she, she was. Does, she was. She walked away. It wasn't that other people walked away from her. No, we lost a good candidate because the the, the way Bernie treated her during the debates with I don't you know Bernie... outperforming her <laughs> the way he outperformed her. That's not how you win alliances by outperforming. Your opponents in debates, that's not how you bring the party together and hold them accountable for their policy on Medicare for all. She was for putting the, the insurance companies out of business, and then she's not. That's good. That's how you win in, in the general. That's and We lost her. Hey, we lost her. No, but no, what is your theory on how she can still win? That's what I'm curious about. Now that she's not a candidate. Am I saying this with authority and a timber in my voice? Yeah. She can win. Everybody knows that. See how loud, when I say this loudly and categorically? Right. How can you argue with this? It's a fact. The Democrats are centrists. Do you hear how loudly I'm saying this? That makes it a fact. And Kamala can win. But don't get me wrong. I love Bernie in principle. <laughs> I'm an old lefty Wait. like David Brooks. <laughs> I want I want all the things you want. But you know, the way you mock Mayor Pete. Right. I, I well let me it does not help the it doesn't okay. help the party. So all right, it, David. It, you know. Since you brought up Mayor Pete and and, and I want you I, I, and I sense racism. I, I have to say that because Mayor Pete is an African American. No, you I said <laughs> Mayor Pete sense, is not an African American. I sense racism. Ah, you, you have that white privilege, and you don't see how important it is for young gay girls who are transitioning to see Mayor Pete and say, you know what? I can be our first African American president. <laughs> you don't understand. It. You don't understand the importance look, of that. Look, <laughs> David, let's let's play a clip. Of you know what I I'm gonna say something I don't mean to play the Jew card with you Sam yeah but you don't know what it means to be afraid well you I have to I'm you Jewish. don't know what it what fear means no I and that is how you appeal to the Democrats by by preying on their fears <laughs> now wait a second you gotta vote your fears now wait a second wait a second I how can you play the Jew card on me I'm Jewish. Yeah, I don't think you've ever known what it's like to be alienated and isolated. You don't understand identity politics. You mock it. That's why you, I know you want Bernie, and so do I. Believe me. I want, to, I want everything Bernie wants. I just don't think we can get there right now. Well, when, <laughs> when do you think we can get there? I, I want everything he wants. I want everything he wants. Okay. Everything. All right. Well, look, yeah. let me ask you about this clip, uh, David Feldman. You have you sit here. You have criticized us uh, about. For and don't get me wrong. I have a lot of respect. OK. For the work you're doing. I okay? appreciate that. But you've criticized. I just think you're. No, I'm not criticizing you. I think you need a bigger tent. OK. You're suggesting that we are too narrow in our perspective because we have been. Uh, you know, uh, attacking Mayor Pete. Here is a clip from Mayor Pete 
where he is okay. once again using a right wing frame. And frankly, not only using a right wing frame, he is using the right wing tactics of completely lying about the reality or just doesn't know it. Here, here is this. Why, why should they be responsible for my, my death? It's a, it, it's a great know. question. Uh, you know, like climate, fiscal policy can be a question of intergenerational justice. And I know that my party's not known for worrying about deficits and the debt too much, but it's time for us to start getting into that business. Because what we've seen in Washington is that the party that talked a lot about the deficit when they were trying to kill off programs, uh, when it came time for this corporate tax cut, turns out um, they don't care. There is a trillion dollar deficit now and created under a Republican administration. Which means if my party doesn't start getting interested in deficits of that, nobody will. And I, I view it the same way you do, as a generational question. Because, uh, you know, I think we may not have to wait for kids and grandkids to, to see when those fiscal time bombs start to go off. Okay, now, David, I know that you think well, I, that we're- I, I, Hang on, hang on, the tingle down my thigh is subsiding. That was amazing. <laughs> Go ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. So you were really... How is, it possible, how is it possible that the youngest guy running is the adult in the room? Well, how is that possible? The reality <laughs> is... The reality is, is that if you compare every president that we've had in, uh, in modern times, you will find that... The debt skyrockets uh, under Republicans and, yes. uh, and then drops under Democrats, um, you know, uh, unless like the inciting event happens the day before uh, uh, Barack Obama comes into office and that grows and then it starts to come down until uh, the Republicans come to town. I mean, so here he is. Putting aside the fact that he's just reciting uh, Pete Peterson's mantra, the um, uh, the Nixon Commerce Secretary billionaire who uh, mm -hmm. you know went on to basically wants to cut Social Security and Medicare by 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 creating this sort of debt hysteria. Uh, he also talks about these ticking time bombs, which he must be talking about. I guess Medicare and Social Security, I mean, because that is consistent with uh, the right wing talking points. And the fact that the the reality, if you did care about something like that, is that his party has been far better on that accord than the Republicans to the extent that, you know, and I don't necessarily subscribe to the idea that it that it's even relevant, but everything he's saying is a load of, of I'm sorry, is a lie. Malarkey. Oh, 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 oh my God. I mean, this is why 100 million people stay home on election day. First of all, A, a it's refreshing and different to hear a Democrat for the first time talking about fiscal responsibility. That, this is the first time I've ever heard the, the big spending party. There, it's, no, this is new, something new, and you need to get used to that. Now, here's the other thing. That, and th I don't mean to Didn't Bill Clinton personal. run on that exact same thing? We're going to make government meaner and leaner? Uh, I, see, I don't want to split the party and attack the Clintons. This is not... Mean <laughs> the Clintons, so I'm not going to do that. This is typical Bernie bro. This is your problem. And I don't mean to attack you personally, because this is not what I do, but I sense your white privilege. <laughs> I do. And I'll tell you why. The Republicans, yeah. historically, as you just pointed out, they balloon the debt and the deficit. They go on a spending spree. They cut taxes for the, the wealthy, and they create a mess. And who steps in and cleans up the mess traditionally? The Democrats. Mm. And you, perched in your ivory tower, think you're too good to clean up after people. Well, I've got news for you. If you want to uh, appeal to the 99%, a lot of those people make money cleaning up. You know, these are janitors and maids and housekeepers. And you're an elitist. You're saying we're too good to clean up the mess that the Republicans left us. That's not how 
you win in November, Sam. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're, you're mocking people who clean up messes for a living. But I want to vote for the president who 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 appeals to the guys and gals, the folks who, when they come home from work, have to take a shower. That's that's who I. That's who I respect. Do you take a shower when you come home from work? I do. <laughs> I don't doubt that. I don't. So you're saying I'm part I mean, of I just, you're saying I'm I'm part of the 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 type of workers who shower before I go to work instead of after I go to no, work. No, I'm saying I'm saying you don't shower enough is what I'm saying. I'm saying Bernie supporters need to shower more. And can I I know where I know we're going to wrap it up because I'm winning the argument. <laughs> I'm winning this argument once again. Well, I didn't think of it I as an argument. I thought it was, I was just really, we were engaging in a conversation. No, no, I win. See, that's the thing with you people. You don't know how to win. <laughs> that's, we can't, a conversation, you got to win. Right, right. Okay, so go ahead. We're coming up, uh, we're coming up yeah. on a, uh, Today, actually, uh, the Japanese, and we're coming up on, I think it's the 30th anniversary of the surprise attack <laughs> on uh, Pearl Harbor. And, you know, I'm an old lefty from way back, right? You know that, right? right? Roosevelt, Democrat, okay? And, and, he, and he went before the American people on television the day after the... Uh, Koreans, the Japanese attacked <laughs> us, and 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 Franklin Roosevelt said yesterday, December six, a day that will live in infamy. <laughs> and what did he say? He says we're going to go to war with the Japanese. I have a plan, and I know how to pay for it. <laughs> that that was the genius of of Teddy Roosevelt. He said. <laughs> I mean, go back and watch Franklin Roosevelt's speech. Total focus. Total focus. He says, we're going to fight the Nazis, the Japan. We're, we're leaning in, because that's important, to lean in, because we know our worth. And we're saying, you cannot attack us. And, here, and then he said to the American people, he said to the American people, join me on this rendezvous with destiny, but you have a choice. You have a choice. There's, I'm presenting to you in this speech a, a public option to fight the Nazis. <laughs> you can choose to stay home and, and fight the Nazis in the private sector. And you know what? Because, and this is what you don't understand about Elizabeth Warren. What Roosevelt did is he presented the American people with a choice. They could choose the public option and fight with our army, or they can stay home and, and fight the, the Nazis, you know, in the private sector by, you know, no longer investing in Harron and Brothers and, the, you know, Ford and Coca-Cola and IBM, the people who were doing business with the Nazis. You could, you know, that's one way to fight the Nazis. Right. But when we saw how well the war was going, I know your, your father may be too young, but a lot of Americans opted in for the, the public option and said, you know what, I'm going to go. I'm going to go fight after, the Nazis. Right? I'm sorry? A two years after. Well, first there was, the Roosevelt said, there's a public option. And then, and then in about, and then in no more, no later than three years into my, two years into my next term, I will present the second phase of the war option. Yes. <laughs> Is this Michael Brooks? Yes. Yes. I'm helping you out. I'm David. surprised you, I'm surprised you know something that happened before uh, 1996. <laughs> and do you know why? Do you know what? Let me ask you a question. Because I don't always like your politics. I think you're a uh, little brazen. Do you know why D-Day was so successful? I, you know, David, you're going to have to educate me. Because Winston Churchill and Eisenhower, before they stormed the beaches, they told the boys, we have a plan to pay for this. <laughs> We know how to pay for this. You don't send... We, our fathers, or your grandfather, when they stormed the beaches of Anzio, if they weren't certain that all this was going to be paid for, they didn't want to leave you, their grandchildren, <laughs> with intergenerational debt. That Mayor Pete, I, I gotta say, 
You know, I love Bernie. I do. I'm an old lefty from way back, but I got to say. An old lefty from way back. I got to say. I got to say, you know. Yeah, yeah. So... uh, I've actually I've been to Anzio. It was uh it was I went You've been to, to where? Anzio. Went to Anzio. Anzio. Yeah. I went to in, Anzio. In Italy. Beach. In Italy. In, in Italy. Yeah. yeah. My friend David Waterman, we reenacted uh his grandfather having his leg blown off uh with uh, army men and uh and they made a little video. Well, that sounds like respect. You think that's funny. See, this is you, you think this is funny. <laughs> well, you know that Bob Dole, Bob Dole, Bob Dole lost his black tip felt pen at a <laughs> And you think that's funny. You think that's funny. You're making fun of the greatest generation. Okay. But see, this is this is not how you win in November. No, you, I, you hate our troops. So, you okay. hate our troops. All right. So just be a little bit more. I mean, you you've you've made it clear that you in principle uh, support Sanders, that you're an old time lefty, so of course you want everything that Bernie from way wants, back. From, from way, way back. back. <laughs> uh, like David Brooks. Like, like David, David Brooks. Brooks. You you and David Brooks probably in yeah. the well, I don't know. Were you guys in the SDS together or uh <laughs> <laughs> Nick? Um, but so so who are you who are you supporting who who is it that you think should be the nominee then i mean if you have such a uh such a a clear-eyed vision as to who can win in the general election i want somebody who can defeat trump because he is more than an existential crisis. He is a, a threat to, to our democracy. And we need to put aside our differences and, and pick the candidate who can beat Trump in November. I, you know, Kamala. I think we should try to get her to come back in. And uh, she can win. Uh, I, I just think if we apologize... For, you know, (laughs) pouring over her policies and holding her accountable for everything she said and did. You know, yeah, it was wrong to lock up the parents of truants. She should have locked up the truants. I think you you get them early (laughs) into the system. More time for them to get reformed. More time to, I didn't hear what you said. To get them reformed. The earlier you get the kids into the system, uh, the, the, the criminal justice system, the more time for them to get reformed. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> that seems kind of ambitious to me. Can we, afford to, can we afford to lock them up and reform them? I mean, that sounds, sounds fiscally irresponsible. I mean, in principle, it would be nice if... Prison was more than being punitive and locking up people of color. In principle, I'm against that, but I don't know if we can reform these so, super predators, David, these, what, these what? 16-year-old kids who don't go to school. These people are dangerous. <laughs> David. <laughs> so I'm guessing you didn't like that tweet from Shuja Hader saying that someone should lock up Kamala's parents because she dropped out. Uh, I, I, first of all, uh, I just want to say that I love hearing the voice of somebody with an identity. I don't know who you are, but you have an identity and I respect your struggle. And I want to appeal to that. And, and I'm for what you want. As long as, long as you don't, as, as long, I don't know who you are, but your struggle is my struggle. So long as you don't want to raise my taxes or unionize. <laughs> That's Jamie. Uh, no, that really means a Jamie, lot to me. I, Jamie, <laughs> I, I want everything you want so long as it's not uh, a union, or I'd like you to have a choice, you know, if you, you know, uh, not to unionize <laughs> or, or make a, you know, or make a livable wage. <laughs> But your identity, I am thoroughly behind whatever your identity is. Uh, <laughs> David, uh, Brandon Sutton's in, in studio. Uh, uh, sir, if I might jump in here one second. Uh, I'm a black speaking real quick, uh, so I also have an identity. Um, I've been floating the idea that... Well, let me just say, let me just say, let me just say, 
Uh, I am, I am a hundred percent. I, Malcolm and Martin. I, I, you know, I, I read their speeches, and and you know, the thing about Malcolm and Martin was that it wasn't digging up the past. They, yeah, they weren't divisive. They didn't say, "Oh, the white man did this to us." They were forward thinking, and they and they told all. All Americans to lean in and know your worth. <laughs> right? Am I right? First, I, I want right? to you know I want to thank you for your allyship, and also, <laughs> of course, you're, you. of course, you're correct. Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr. were famously uncritical of white people, but I, I again, as, and they as, said go slowly, and they talked, to, and Martin, if you read. Dr. King, and I call him Dr. King. <laughs> and, and so I'd like you to pause there and just think about the fact that I called him Dr. King and the license that affords me now. <laughs> Dr. King said we need to go slowly. We need, if you read his speeches and Malcolm, let's go slowly. Let's not rush things. Didn't he say that? <laughs> Multiple times. Uh, you know, that was yes, his, that was his most famous uh, speech, the March on Washington for Equality and a Slow Incremental Change. Is, <laughs> they they, they, yes. often, they yes. often leave that second part out, as you, I'm sure you're well aware. Yes, thank you. Can you tell me all your identities so I can play to them? <laughs> well, uh, I... I lie at the so intersection. So you say you're African. You're African American. I, I'm African American. Uh, I am Good, also okay. of average height, five nine, uh, five eleven in boots, Tim's. Um, okay, I uh, need need more. more uh, so I. I but, but my, well, let, let's move on. I, I just need to know people's identity. That's <laughs> the most important thing to me. I was just going to ask. Do you like? Ty, you know who I like? I like Tyler Perry. I'll tell you why. <laughs> Tyler Perry. Do you like Tyler Perry? I think he gave the Democrats. You know, they, did you see the debates? They, I, they held the debates in Tyler Perry <laughs> Studios in Atlanta, and you know that was a big tent thing to do to to hold the debates in the. That was the Democratic Party's Medea moment. I, I have because Tyler Perry. That's a right to work state. And the Tyler Perry Studios, the Tyler Perry Studios are non-union and they're being sanctioned by the Writers Guild and AFTER because Tyler Perry believes in choice. <laughs> Tyler Perry, he said, I could produce my movies in Hollywood and choose to pay my actors and writers a livable wage, but I believe in choice. I've, I'm choosing to pay my employees starvation wages. So, so I <laughs> agree with that's what America is about choice. So I agree with ninety nine percent of what you just said, but I want to push back a little thank bit. Thank you. And I feel as though you know, no, no thank you. So thank don't you. be aggressive. Thank you for, are you being aggressive? No, no. I, I'm. <laughs> I, 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 I'm push back. I'm, I'm going to take it a step further. What actually, do you mean push back? I, I'm going to take it a little bit a step further. What I think that back? they could have had Medea on the panel. I think that you know they, there was room on that uh, moderator panel for Medea for Tyler Perry himself uh, <laughs> to be to be questioning uh, the candidates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, stop silencing yeah. <laughs> women of color's voices. Yes. Absolutely. I thought it was very brave of the Democrats to, to, to have the debate in the Tyler Perry studios, which are, just are, speak volumes to the value of a right-to-work state. Because and this is what I like about Joe Biden, that he knows... The middle class was built by unions, and he loves unions, but he's not afraid to take contributions from people who destroy unions. <laughs> Big tent. Big tent. Big tent. Hair? No hair. Brown teeth? White teeth. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to see if we could summarize all of this. You're voting for Klobuchar? Yes. <laughs> I, listen, listen. You know, uh, you know. I too have a father who's an alcoholic, <laughs> and I I don't know what her policy is, but you know, when she talked about her father looking for grace and giving up drinking, I thought. 
I, I like this woman. I, 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 I like her. <laughs> I like her identity. <laughs> well. <laughs> I like, I like her Because I identified, I identified with her identity. She, she has a father who was an alcoholic, and that spoke to me. <laughs> well, uh, David, this has been um, it's been very illuminating, and uh, I think there's a lot of stuff, of year. <laughs> a lot of stuff that we need to uh, think about. Oh my god! <laughs> um, I think you've given us a lot of food for thought today, oh and thank uh, you. Maybe, maybe you know, we'll digest this and, and come back with a with a slightly different tone in our show. Yeah, thanks for sticking up well, for my gonna, identity. I love your identity. <laughs> and, and, and do I know all of it? I, I know. I mean, <laughs> it seems to be a high pitched voice, so I'm going to assume it may not be a woman. You you may be a person of shortness. I don't know. No, that that's but, me. Uh, <laughs> you, you're a person of. I mean, whatever, I'm not whatever tall. Whatever you're identified. You're tall. I'm not tall. But you have a high voice. But you have a, may I say, you have a voice that if I were testifying in court and a lawyer asked me to identify your voice, <laughs> my, my conjecture would be a person of uh, uh, femininity. Is that a, is that a <laughs> Am I respecting you? In what, co in what context would a lawyer ever say, can you tell from the sound of that voice what the identity of the person oh is? What, in what context would that oh, question during be? The, during, the, during the OJ trial, there, there was, a, there was a, a conversation about whether or not somebody had an African-American voice or not, whether or not you could tell okay. if a person was African-American or not on the phone. And I made a promise to myself after that that I would never <laughs> decide a person's identity just by the sound of their voice. Because that's what this country is about. <laughs> identity. 100%. Well, Yes, 100%. Listen, whether you're a man, a woman, a person of shortness, a per I don't care as long as you don't unionize or ask for a livable <laughs> wage or raise my taxes. But I support everything about you <laughs> as long as I can keep my money. <laughs> and, and I, that, he's, this is everything that we talk. Thank you. <laughs> distilled the entire modern professional class of Democratic Party and most major media personalities. Thank you for your service. <laughs> yes, David, uh, we, you. we appreciate your, your coming on. Like I say, it'll give us a lot to think about. Okay, did I win? Uh, I, I'm trying to show you how to win in November. I, I feel like you, you, you certainly won on, on, you know, it depends on what the metric is, but I think certainly there are metrics in which you won today. And so, well, uh, give Mayor Pete a chance. Give Mayor Pete just listen to just listen to Mayor Pete with fresh eyes and fresh ears. I w we will do that. Mackenzie, gotta love Mackenzie. <laughs> <laughs> David Feldman uh, and David. My understanding is your show is uh, eight days a week. Is that right? Eight, eight days a week. We added an extra day in the calendar, and each episode is. Uh, 29 hours. I have to admit, uh, four of those hours are a waste of everybody's time, but uh, there's a pony somewhere in all that horseshit. <laughs> the David Feldman And I, I'd like David. to invite, and, and it's for all identities. Yes, it's for there all you. identities. Very, very big tent. David Feldman, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Oh my oh, there you go. That's Oof. the funniest thing. That's let's ever uh, no, uh, I'll, I'll take the break later. Um, let's uh, bring him on. I understand he's a little bit. Uh, 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 okay, there's David Feldman. There's a picture of David Feldman. Do we have him uh, on the? Hello. Uh, oh, there he is. Uh, uh, am I going to do this? They won't see the image. Uh, they won't see that image. Okay, uh, David. Um, welcome to the show. So I'm going to do the show. I, yeah, we're on now. I understand. Okay. I did, you know, I, no. I, I don't want to express this, but I just saw from Brendan that you have some hesitation and I was not aware of that. Um, to, to come on today, I, 
Um, all right. I, I, all right. Uh, <clears throat> I, you know, you've put me in an uncomfortable position. I didn't. Uh, I honestly, I Brendan sent me the uh, message very, very right. uh, just a moment ago, and I'm sorry. What's is there a problem? No, no. I, I think you've just you you put me in a uh, awkward position that, that that I have to come on uh, after that discussion about uh, Afghanistan, and uh, I don't know. I I, I I'd it's rather reschedule. Disturbing. I. Uh, I mean, we can reschedule. I know this is disturbing, but I mean, we've talked about, you know, difficult stuff on the show all the time. That's sort of part of the. Well, yeah, but you know, you're, you know, the show. like I have to, re you, you're putting me in an uncomfortable position because I have to respond to some of the things you've said. And I don't want people to misapprehend uh, what to I respond think. respond to some of the things I've said in, uh, uh, in 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 the conversation with with Heather about Afghanistan, the things you've been saying about Biden's decision to uh, surrender in Afghanistan, and I I, I didn't say that you know I don't want to be the surrender. guy I don't want to be that guy, but I you know I don't want to be the guy who who says we we shouldn't be surrendering to the I Afghanistan. Didn't say that we, we we were surrendering. I didn't say that. Okay. Are you right? And Rudy Giuliani, right, right, right. Rudy Giuliani and Donald Trump didn't say storm the Capitol on January six. I mean, wait you, a second. Are you, you know what? You know how to say things, Sam, and not say them at the same time. You know exactly what you're doing, and that's why wait, wait, I wait, told wait. Brendan I'm not really comfortable uh, talking to oh, you no. about surrendering in Afghanistan. I didn't. Okay, wait a second. So, are you suggesting that? Are you you are characterizing what Joe Biden is doing as surrendering? You're, you're putting words in my mouth. I no, I'm asking. No, no, you're putting words in my mouth. I'm not that guy. Well, I'm, I not, I'm not. I'm a pacifist. Guy. I'm a pacifist. So I don't want to be put in a position where I have to say that people like you are doing a disservice to. You're stabbing America in the back in Afghanistan. I don't want to be that guy. That's not who I am. I'm a pacifist. I'm against war in all its forms. And to have me have to come on now and say we we, we shouldn't surrender in Afghanistan, I don't want to be that guy. I'm a pacifist. Well, but you're being that guy. I mean, no, I, I'm not. You, you no, I'm not. You you. We've talked. I America should. I'm against war. I hate okay. aggression. I hate conflict. I, I'm a man of peace, and uh, quite frankly, if you don't think I'm a pacifist, I will smash your face in. Seriously, I, I, it, that's how opposed to war I am, and, and I'm the least violent person you know. Well, I, 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 I'm not contending that you're not not violent. I just, I, you, you seem to be saying that um, this is a. A surrender by Biden. If you want to call it a surrender, that's fine. But do you think it, we should leave, or do you think we should stay? See, this is—I don't want to—I don't want to have to answer that question. I'm just saying. This is why I told Brendan I don't want to follow this conversation because I, I'm saddened by, by this, and I—I uh, I, I, I don't think sad about it because. <sighs> I'm a pacifist, okay? Right, okay. And so we're getting out of the country. We're not going to be, well, we're not going to be waging the kind of war that we've been waging. I, I think it's a little early to end our endless war in Afghanistan. It's been 20 years, David. 20, not, not even 20 years. It's just well, a kid. It's a just half. a kid. The war is just a kid. <laughs> So you're saying that a 19-year-old war is too young. It's to too young to, to just end it. And, and I don't want to be this guy, Sam, who has to talk this way because I'm a pacifist. But you just don't pack up and leave an endless war, especially when we're so close to winning this thing. Wait a I second. Mean, you're suggesting that we're close to winning in Afghanistan? You're dishonoring the weapons with that sarcasm, quite frankly. 
And I don't want to be the guy who's saying we should stay. I'm not that guy. But you got to give the Pentagon another 15 years. We've only another been there. 30, not even 20. So you're not saying, even 20. You're saying that not even, a, the war should last 35 years. What, what, like, what, why 35? What, why? Because, what, what, because we're, we, are, we are so close to achieving serious headway. We are, we are like years away in Afghanistan from achieving and making serious headway. And you're stabbing, you're stabbing America in the back by saying, br 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 you know, end it. Uh, wait, wait, what, what is serious headway? What does that mean? Serious headway? A serious headway, it, it's, yeah. I would say 15 years away from serious headway. And then we all know what comes after that. A, a potential beachhead. I mean, I don't want to be this guy, Sam. I don't want to be the guy who's saying stay in Afghanistan. I'm, I'm from the 60s. I'm a peace guy. But you can't leave when we're only a few decades away from, from a, a potential beachhead in Afghanistan. I, you know, it, it's, a, it's a disservice to our weapons, what, what, wait, a disservice to our weapons? What is the, what does that mean, a beachhead? A beachhead for what? So how a disservice to, you don't care about our weapons? What, what, what I don't, no, I don't. <laughs> You're saying that, oh, wow, wow, man, you are ice water through your veins, man. Well, really, well, you, you, our, you, our you would say this in public that you don't care about our weapons? Really? Yeah. Wow. No, wait well, you just re you just you reveal drinking? so much. I'm having I, it's uh, it's uh, I'm having a little uh, Irish coffee. Wait, now let me ask you a question. We wait. We 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 stay there for 15 more years out of respect for our weapons. Yeah, and we get a beachhead, and then then what do we do with the beachhead? We we reassess. Blue Ribbon Commission. So we have, uh, you're impatient. You're Look, you think you think you've cornered the market in in feeling bad about the war in Afghanistan? You think you're the only one who misses our weapons? You think it doesn't pain me every day sending our our warheads and our firearms off to foreign lands with no guarantee that we'll ever see them again? You you think you're the only one who feels bad for our weapons? I don't feel bad for our weapons. I, you do. I, you're just saying that to to be a, a you know the devil's advocate. I you of course you feel bad for the weapons. What weapons in particular do you feel bad for? I, I feel bad for for the weapons that that keep us safe that that put it on the line every every day, and and they're brave. And what about the what about the 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 the, the, the military personnel that we have there? You know, you you you, you don't get it. You, you don't get it. What about you, you, civilians? Uh, hey, don't don't go there. You, I've known you. You knew me. Come on, you know my my mother's brother, Paul. Come on, your you're going to go there on that, your Sam? Uncle Paul, my uncle Paul. But the, the military, you're going to bring up the troops? You're going to bring up the troops? What, what, I, wit I witnessed Paul. firsthand. I witnessed firsthand what war can do to a man. My, my mother's brother, Paul, came home from Vietnam. Yeah. And they spat on him. They did not spit on him. They, they spat on him. There was no spitting. That there was. The, 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 yeah, because that's what you want to believe. And they called him a baby killer. All because when he was in Vietnam, he killed babies, a lot of them. And, and, and I had to see my Uncle Paul come home from Vietnam and get called a baby killer because he killed a lot of babies. So don't tell me that I don't care about war and the troops. I've seen the damage that it does, okay? It, right. it's, it's the whiny liberals. And I think you're a leftist, quite frankly. You, you, you lost the war for us on the home front in Vietnam. You made us fight that war 
I was. With our arms tied around our back. We could have won in Vietnam, but it was it the was. demonstrators who lost the war. Seven or eight, I think, when the whole Yeah, your began. mother was bringing you to those anti-war rallies and, 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 and undermining, undermining the war effort. Right. And and do you see that happening here? I mean Yes, you're 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 stabbing America in the back and you're dishonoring the memory of the hundreds of thousands of weapons we've left on the battlefield. Were they, did they explode in vain? Is that what you're saying? How do we explain to the, the manufacturers of all those warheads that they were exploded for no reason? Is that you want to you want to look at the people who own stock in Raytheon and General Dynamics, you want to look them straight in the face and say all those bombs that you you dropped on Afghanistan were for naught? All those bombs, all your bombs are never coming home for nothing? Is that what you want to say? Are you willing to go on record and say that, Sam? I don't think you are. Well, I mean, I am, but that's not the, that's not, that, oh, that's not the point. I mean, you know, you think you're being funny. Oh, I am. I, uh, you, th you think you're being funny. Jesus, we're talking about endless war, Sam. We have an endless war in Afghanistan and you're trivializing it. Uh, I don't think that there's really, we're pulling out because of mass protest. Have you seen mass protest? It's the mass protest. It's. It's the it's the way you treat the people who work at Raytheon and Dow Chemical and General Dynamics. You make them feel bad about what they do. You and and it undermines the war effort. And it's why we, we it's why we lost in Vietnam. Because people made the um, folks at like uh, General Electric um, feel bad because of all the weapons they were building. Yeah. Yeah. You're stabbing, you're stabbing us in the back because you're impatient. You're impatient. You're a child. I, I, I shouldn't be. This is why I told Brendan I don't want to come on today because I had to follow that conversation. You're, you're, you're an impatient child. You want instant gratification. And uh, I, I can't believe that it, it's not even 20 years in Afghanistan and you want to bring the weapons home. I, I can't, I can't believe it. Let, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, David. Um, uh, first off, I mean, 20 years is, is a long time for a war. It's the longest war that we've ever participated in. No, no, your, your generation wants instant gratification. That's the problem. My generation is, um, has, has basically, uh, well, all right. Uh, You're impatient. You're impatient. Mommy, mommy, now, now, now. Mommy, mommy, give it to me now. I, I showed you, the I last time my, we had dinner, I showed I you the time. In my mid-50s. Well, you know what? You should know better, and you should act like you're in, in your mid-50s instead of the child, the child that you are. Impatient, instant gratification. There's a timetable for bringing the weapons home. What is the timetable? You, you, the timetable, you have to understand the timetable. The war, it's a war on terror. It's an endless war on terror which puts America on, you know, a, uh, a permanent war footing against uh, Islamo-fascists. Mm -hmm. and, and you have to think of, of Islamo-fascists like you would the Nazis, you know, or Dax Shepard. You know, you, you have to fight them every step of the way. They're World not just— World War II was lasted, uh, you know, by any uh, measure, you know, less than— Six years. Too soon. We didn't end the war. We, we didn't take on Stalin because of the protest movement back home. We, we, we lost World War II. We surrendered half of Europe to communism, to, mm -hmm. to Joseph Stalin, because people like you, oh, it's too much fighting. Oh, the, let's end the war. We'll, 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 we'll just cave to Joseph Stalin and give him all of Eastern Europe. Uh, David. We didn't win world. We lost World War II because of people like you, who are who are who were who are children. What? Tell me about your uh, time in the military. I, I would have uh, served in Desert Storm in in 1991, but I had a football injury. I destroyed my knees blowing a man for Super Bowl tickets. Fair enough. 
Yeah. But I would have served because I was for that refugee, war. Uh, what do you feel about the idea that we're not taking in refugees? Now is not the time to bring people into America. And, and I say this, you know, my, I, I wouldn't be alive if it weren't for Ellis Island. Uh, you know, America saved my entire family from the ravages of World War II. So it pains me to say this. I got mine. I don't care about anybody else. And it pains me to say that, but I'm an adult. I'm an adult. America saved my family during World War II. If you're a refugee, go find another country to save you. You know, believe me, when we've I see the enough. Statue of Liberty, my eyes well up. We've, we've done enough is what you're saying. I'm saying I got mine. Fair. I got my, I got what I needed from America. Can, that doesn't mean everybody should be able to get what they want from America. And it pains me to say that, but I'm an adult. Well, I, I'm, I'm okay. an adult. You're an adult. All right. Let me yeah. ask you this, uh, David. Um, I want to, I want to, I want to just turn, uh, w can we just agree to disagree on this? No, you don't, you have, you, 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 you hate America and, and you rather see us surrender and lose face. I mean, what about pride? What about just the pride of losing a war? Doesn't, I mean, is it, you have kids. Is you, you tell your kids, hey, don't worry, you lost the soccer game. It's okay. No, you don't lose. We don't, we, we don't lose wars because that's a matter of pride. It's a matter of pride. And, and you know what? You, what? We, you want to keep that war going on until. Uh, For pride, to save face. Yeah. And you don't end a permanent war. This is a permanent war on terror. Permit, you want a timetable? We, we leave Afghanistan when we have achieved a permanent war on terror. The um, war on terror is not permanent yet. Dude. When it's permanent, then we can leave Afghanistan and go fight terror somebody else, somewhere else. My understanding, uh, David, uh, I didn't want to get into any of this, frankly, and I don't think it's... Um, uh, you're stabbing, you're stabbing America. You know what? During Vietnam, it was in the back. You're stabbing America in the heart by, the by heart. saying, in the heart. David, uh, my understanding is you got a new job recently. Is that true? I'm writing for Gutfeld. Right. Yeah. He's a good man. <laughs> he, he's read a book. I, I think he's even read more than one book. Are you enjoying it? Are you? I, I, it's an open and safe environment, and it's it's a free and easy writing room. And there's kindness, kindness first. He always says, you know, it's not important to be funny; it's to be careful who we're targeting. What are we saying? Who are we targeting? He's a, a great great kind man Do you have and, he, and he doesn't problem? smell he, he does doesn't. not smell despite what he looks like he, he does not spell smell or spell he can't spell either uh right parts of his brain well, have been great. scooped I'm out by a lobotomist out. i'm glad that's working out for you the, uh, and and we don't stab america in the back like no, they do over not. the majority report yeah yeah do you, do you know do you know the pal doctrine uh you break it you own it no, that's, uh, I believe that was Chris D'Elia's pickup line to a 17-year-old girl. Okay. I right. break it, I own it. I yeah. think, mm. before he deflowed. Yeah, you, you, this is good. Uh, so you, uh, you've been working at Gutfield for a while then. Yeah. And one of the things I learned is you, when you go to war, you, you, you have a clear and a, a attainable oh, objective. Overwhelming. Okay, yes, right. I got you. And an exit strategy. And your exit strategy is no exit. No. The fighting continues until we achieve a permanent state of war. That's the exit strategy. That's not an exit strategy. What's the um, what's the vibe in the room at the gut field? Oh, you know, you know uh, it's, uh, you know, we make fun of the displacement theory. And, uh, you know, the, the idiots who, you know, think Dominion rigged the election in favor of Joe Biden. A lot of reading. Uh, we have a book club. Yeah. Uh, we're reading uh, Ulysses, James Joyce. Greg is a big fan. 
of Ulysses and uh, very well read, very well educated, Greg well, Gutfeld. David, yeah. let me uh, just uh, thank you for coming on today. I would love to hear more in the future, but we uh, sadly have run out of time. Okay. All right. Yeah. So uh, um, I'm, I'm sorry that this sort of broke down into this. Well, I, I, I would have preferred to, uh, you know, not have to come on the show and be the guy because that's not who I am. I'm not the guy who says don't surrender uh, uh, to the Taliban. You know, right. I'm not that guy. I'm, I have long hair. I use the F word a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I smoke dope. Yeah, I have very. I listen. I listen to rock and roll. So I'm not the guy who's for continuing the war in Afghanistan. But you've, you know, I, well, I don't want to be corner. that guy. I don't. Right. You put I me in a corner. I put you in a corner. Yeah, Dave, I mean, Dave, I, I have I have faded jeans on right now, Dave, and, I, and I and I call people brother. I, sometimes I'll even say, "Hey, brother, man." So I'm not the guy <laughs> who's who's going to be saying, you know. Let's stay in. I don't want to be that guy, but you've right. kind of forced me. No, I'm sorry, brother man. Let's what say, would you uh, tell Joe Biden if you were in the White House, in the Oval Office with him, just you and him? Privately? Yeah. It is an honor to, to be in this room. I, I, <laughs> I, and, uh, and I have not looked at the Daily Mail in the past month. Mr. President, I have not seen the pictures of Hunter with his meth teeth because I, I think <laughs> who cares if Hunter Biden has meth teeth and, and makes videos for Pornhub and and does crack cocaine with prostitutes. That's none of my business, Mr. President. You know why it's none of my business if Hunter Biden smokes crack with prostitutes and would be in jail if he were black and not the son of the president? You know why it doesn't matter to me? Because it's not Eric Trump or Don Jr. smoking crack with a. If, if they smoked crack with a prostitute, Mr. President, then that would be compromise. And we would have to, we should look into that <laughs> because they could bribe Donald Trump. If people got their hands on photographs of Hunter Biden, I mean, uh, uh, Eric Biden, Donald Trump. Junior Biden with meth teeth and a prostitute and crack cocaine, that would be compromised if that were on Trump's son's laptop. And we would have to investigate that, but not if it's Hunter Biden. That's what I would say, Mr. to Mr. President Joe Biden. Well, David Feldman. You can uh, check out the David Feldman show. I'm sorry this uh, didn't uh, was, didn't go as planned, uh, David. And uh, hopefully next time we you come back on and uh, we won't have uh, so, you know uh, this type of controversy. Okay, I just want to remind everybody that I'm a pacifist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you if you say I'm a warmonger, I'll I'll, I'll smash your fucking face. In. Okay? Sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That. Okay. Yeah. David Feldman, ladies Peace. Ladies. Peace, brother man. Peace, brother man. Uh, peace out. Brother okay. Man. Okay, brother man. Bye. So we're going to be talking to uh, David Feldman, I believe, in just a second. Folks, of course, know David Feldman. He is a, um, he is a uh, host of the David Feldman program. Um, uh, David, are you there? Can you drip with more sarcasm? I'm sorry. Could you say that again? I had you uh, drop down. No, I was just wondering if you could drip. Could you drip with more sarcasm in that introduction? Um, I, I I I was not being sarcastic. I'm sorry. You, sorry you uh, you took it that way. I'm here with Emma Vigland, who I'm sure you know will have a tone that you'll appreciate more than me. I like Emma. Oh. Hi, David Feldman. See, she meant that. I could tell she was. I could tell that she was happy that I'm coming on the show and that I'm on like this last. Like you called everybody, and I was last on your list. Like I can tell she's excited to talk with me, Sam. You're, yeah. You're, well, uh, I'm, I'm your excited to talk to you about it. Is, is, uh, is all, yeah. 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 No. I mean, uh, David. One of the things I wanted to talk to you about because I know there's a, there's a big um, big component of this in L.A is the Medicare for All uh, march this weekend. 
uh, I want to get your sense of, you know, uh, what you think about um, uh, that march happening now. Um, you know, I don't, yeah. I don't know that it's particularly controversial that it's happening now, but well, I, I think it's a little, I think it's a little too soon. I, I, I you know, it, it reminds me of force the vote. Uh, I don't think it's smart to start marching right now. Well, wait, wait, why, should... wait, 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 well, how does it, how is it, uh, how is it like force the vote? Like, why is it, why is it too soon? It's, it's children. It's people who don't understand how things get done in Washington. And just, you know, a march for Medicare for all. So they they have this big march, right? And then Monday, Nancy Pelosi doesn't introduce Medicare for all in Congress. Then we blew it. Then we'll never, you know, it's like, you wait your turn before you have a march for Medicare for all. What happens? They have the big march and then it doesn't get voted on on Monday. Then the whole thing, then we're never going to have Medicare for all. Well, this but is not, you know, it's just amateur. It's amateur hour. Is it, is it, isn't the march about getting, um, you know, uh, getting more people involved in a movement to push for it? Like, uh, you know, presenting the idea that there's going to be a lot of people who want Medicare for all. Yeah. Well, this is what happens when you have inexperienced people who don't know how things get done. And, you know, I want Medicare for all more than anybody. You know that, right? Yes. No, of course. I know that. Sure. Yeah. I'd like to know how we're going to pay for it, but I, I want Medicare well, taxation. for all. Taxation. Um, like I said, I'd like to know how we're going to pay for it. I think the march, uh, the, a, a, an entire nationwide march telling the world that we want Medicare for all is so stupid, so childish. It's not how you get things done. That's Anyway, I, can I talk about something that's a, a little more important to me? Uh, sure. Do you mind? No. Well, I, you know, uh, I was reading... Michael's piece in Jacobin, Michael Brooks. Yes. His piece in Jacobin. And uh, <clears throat> you know about the Michael Brooks Legacy Project, right? Yes. You and it, I. It's have... creating work. Hello? Yes. Go ahead. It, it, it's creating work that continues his legacy. And if you go to patreon.com forward slash TMBS, you can donate money. Correct. Uh, to the. Yeah. So, you know, when I donate, it's between me and, and my God. You know that, right? I, 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 I do. I don't donate to get my name on a plaque, unlike you and your family. I remember growing up, every time your father <laughs> donated, we had to hear about it. Well, first I of think all... That's, you... I, I think that's disgusting. David, you and Quite I... Quite frankly. Did not grow up together. <laughs> okay. Well, all I remember is your mother and father, if they donated to any cause, we had to hear about it in the car on the way to camp. What? I give money. I was raised <laughs> differently it. from you. I was raised when you give money, you do it because it's the right thing to do. You give anonymously. Okay. And that's what I decided. I decided to give a donation to the Michael Brooks Legacy Project. Yeah, you, David Feldman, right? It's it, You know, it's not anonymous now that you've said it, David. No, I, 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 I'm not telling anybody that I donate. I went to patreon.com forward slash TMBS. And when I donated, uh, they asked if, you know, they wanted, like, they could put my name on a list. and. You know, I gave a lot. I gave a lot of money. Wait a second. David, a lot. David. A lot. Yeah, no, I, I I I I appreciate that, but I mean you realize you're you're telling us makes it not anonymous. No, no, no. They asked me at, at patreon.com forward slash TMBS, they said, Do you want to be put on a list that of people who gave. 
And uh, David, you understand, that one, but 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 the, but the but the point is though is that you're you're making, in addition to the fact that you you you've never met my parents, we never went to the same camp. Um, I, I I in fact we did not know each other until I was well at least into my twenties. I don't even know if you knew who I was. I mean, I have no idea. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But aside from that, the tr- so the trauma, so the trauma was so bad. You've just blocked a lot of things out. I, the, the, the trauma of being in a car with your parents, smoking cigarettes on the way to camp, bragging, oh, we gave money to this, the fire, the toys for tots. We gave this much and that much. We're such good people. You were traumatized by how tacky your parents were in just wearing their generosity on their sleeve. They couldn't do one good thing anonymously, unlike my parents who taught me, nobody needs to know that you donated to the David, Michael Brooks Legacy Project. You realize that, that's not that's the, not how I was raised. The nobody analogy, needs to know how much I put on my credit card. That's not why I donate, Sam. It's not about me. It's about Michael's legacy, okay? Listen, right now it's as if we're in a car together, except for you're not smoking cigarettes. I mean, it, 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 the... the the hypothetical, in fact, untrue scenario that you, except for the cigarette smoking, frankly, uh, that you uh, constructed there, um, that uh, that aside, what's happening right now is very much like that. You're sitting here telling, you've just told Emma and I that you donated. I donated anonymously because it's, it's, it's not about you or Emma saying, hey, hey, what a great guy that David Feldman who will be appearing in East Orange, New Jersey this week at the Mask Optional Comedy Club is. I don't need to hear that. I don't need to hear you saying what a great guy. That's not why I donate money da- to, I, to a cause. David, can I pull you back to something else? Uh, I'm curious. I'm going to be at Mask Optionals. Hang on. I'm going to be at Mask Optionals in East Orange, New Jersey. I probably will not even mention that I, if somebody asked me, did you give money? And I gave a lot, a lot to uh to michael brooks yes, patreon.com Patreon. uh, yeah. slash tmbs uh but uh, yeah i gave a lot david no yes. i gave a lot but yeah. at mask optionals wait mask optionals weekend, is the name store. of a comedy club <laughs> hey i'm playing mask op- yeah thank you yeah i mean i'm you know mask optionals in east Orange. people are going to probably ask me did you give a you know to michael's charity i'm not you know that's not let, that would be bragging let let me let me let me ask you this, okay? Um, let, I, I, if if we could just turn it back to something in the news, the yeah, let's uh, talk about let's talk about something else because that's not that's not why I called, Sam. I, I, I there's a march on uh, Medicare for all. We we have to get to the bottom of who was behind the insurrection. Well, uh, let me you ask know, you about the, that the, since the, you ra- since you um, raised that uh, insurrection. Um, Kevin McCarthy is basically, um, you know, uh, uh, well, has pulled all the members of the Republican uh, Party off the commission because Nancy Pelosi rejected Jim Banks and uh, Jim Jordan. Um, Jim Jordan, you know, uh, more so because they wouldn't validate uh, the election of, of Joe Biden rather than Jim Jordan having a problem with, you know, ignoring uh, pleas from the wrestlers who he coached as to uh, their their charges that they were being molested. But what is, what is your perspective on that? I don't need a thank you note from uh, the Michael Brooks Legacy Project. And it, and it doesn't bother me that I accidentally donated more than I intended to. That does not... I, that doesn't I, I don't bother understand. me. You you accidentally donated more than you intended to? Did you put an extra zero? I on put it? a little extra. I, I thank you. I guess you heard that I accidentally put. Uh, you just a little too us. much. You just told a us. too much on the. Hmm. You just told us. Told us what? All right. Look. What about the? I told you. What did I tell you? No. What did no, I just the tell you? January sixth commission. Just you know, let's just. I mean, I okay. Patreon.com yes. slash tmbs for the yes. legacy project. But January seventh, 
the worst day in American history January in my lifetime. 6th. Yeah. January 7th was, it, 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 we need to get to the bottom of January 7th. No, no, I think you mean. I will never, Jan- for, I will never forget January 7th. David, I think I think you mean January sixth. January sixth. That was the day. I think I think you are abusive, and you don't honor my mental illness. You know I sleep a lot. You know I didn't find out about it until the next day that I've been depressed. I, I, and, I mean, and you had to bring. Why would you do that? Why we, would you bring up we, that I sleep? For long stretches of time. And for me, it's January 7th and not January 6th. Why don't you respect? Uh, People generally, um, you know, pin events to when they happen, not when they find out about them. When when I woke up. Well, I understand. You don't think you don't think make calling it January 6th instead of January 7th. How do you think that makes me feel? I, 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 I. Um, like you've been corrected as to when the specific event happened? I don't know. You think you're being inclusive by calling it January 6th when I didn't wake up until January 7th that I had been depressed and sleeping for a couple of days? You think you're, you think... David, how I, old, I you were how all old about were inclusivity. you when you found out about World War II? I don't know. I don't know. You, you know, you, you, you have this whole patina of, you know, oh, everybody, let's play with everybody. But people who are who are suffering from mental illness, like me, who have been depressed and been sleeping a lot, because I'm an empath. I'm an empath. And this, this pandemic has hit me harder than than most people and I've been sleeping a lot. Well I and don't to call it January sixth instead of January seventh when I first found out about it makes me feel left out. All right. January sixth and seventh. Would that be better? Thank you. See? Yes. Or just January seventh. Or the, just January The event 7th. that happened in the Would first make, week of January. How about we just call it January seventh to I, respect I think it's my gonna be confusing illness. for other people. That's why. Uh, I think I've had an especially tough the past year and a half, okay? Well, and I, I would prefer it if people honored my pain and called it January 7th. All right, fine. And quite frankly, I, I think you are uh, insensitive. And uh, I'm going to take, I'm taking to Twitter right now. Well, wait a second. Wait a second. Before you go to Twitter, let me just okay. No, I'm on Twitter. I, I, no, I'm on. Emma, I'm leaving you out of this. This has nothing okay, thank to do you. with you. Just, I mean, but just know that when you take to Twitter, you could ruin Sam's career. But, yeah, but you know what? You know what? I don't know. I don't, don't care. Uh, okay, so January seventh. What is your perspective on this commission? We need to get to the bottom. Of who was behind this? Okay, that is that is how we win big. You got to go big to 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 keep the house in in twenty twenty two. And you know, I want to filibuster proof Senate. You know, right? And so the only way you do that is you go big. You go you you go you know big 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 <laughs> like unimaginably big. Well, and, and and we should spend the next year. If you want to win, you you spend the next year focusing only on the January seventh insurrection. You put that's why the Medicare for all march is childish. It's it's bush league. It, it's they don't know. Go what big. about the infrastructure bill? You don't think that's big? It, it's it's not good enough. It's only three point five trillion dollars. It's not big enough. Bernie sold us out. Bernie. Forget it. I'm not interested. <laughs> Go big on the insurrection. That's how you defeat the Republicans. The Ameri- you got to put numbers on the board, Sam. You, the Democrats need to say, look at what we've done for you. <laughs> look at what we, what are you going to run on in 2022? A $3.5 trillion infrastructure bill that is painfully short 
it's it, it, they came up completely short. Bernie completely sold out the party. There's nothing in the that party? infrastructure. There's nothing. So throw it out. What do you mean? There's nothing. Always, There's literally the three point five trillion dollars. He he abandoned me. Just like, you know. He abandoned me. I'm not interested. Focus on the insurrection. That is what will get the Democrats reelected. David, don't you think it's going to be confusing for people who would vote for Democrats under your plan when they talk about the January 7th insurrection and people are out there just going, you mean January 6th? Because most of those people with total respect for your sleeping habits, were awake on that day, and they found out about it on that day, on the 6th. Wow, wow. I'm just asking. Wow. I'm asking a question. Why are you being you ableist? Do you talk to your kids this way? I mean... You talk to your, you talk to your kids this I, way? I, Is that how you treat I don't have people to, in your personal life? Really, to be totally honest, because they're 8 what? and 15. I don't really have to. Yeah, are you that cruel to your kids? I mean, what what part of what I'm saying is cruel? I'm just asking you if you don't think it's going to be confusing for people. Like, surely I, I have I have faith in the American people. I think they're smart enough to to see the Democrats going big on the January seventh investigation and and they're and saying, hey, wait a second, this party cares about me. They're trying to get to the bottom of what happened on January 7th. I think most Americans are smart enough to say, you know what? Infrastructure, Medicare for all, that can wait. I'm looking for I'm looking for, I'm looking for a, 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 a Senate and a House that can put out the hope that in 2023 I might get to see Donald Trump's tax returns. <laughs> see that that's how you win elections, Sam. By holding out the hope that we could possibly maybe see Donald Trump's tax returns in 2023. Uh, David, you got to do big things. You got to do big things, Sam. Uh, uh, maybe let's turn. Maybe it'll be easy. Let, let's let's turn to the what's see, happening. See, you, 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 you're with all due respect, with all due respect, you're a fool. You, you don't understand the American people with all due respect. You don't understand the American people. We do big things. We do big things. Like Richard Branson, the first billionaire into space. Didn't that make you proud to be an American? Well, well first of all, Branson's uh, you... British. And I don't know if he was the first. Wasn't it uh, Bezos or I don't know? Richard Branson was the first American billionaire in outer space. Is it, isn't Branson that British? Me... Hmm? Isn't Richard Branson his? He's Sir Richard Branson because he was knighted. I think he's British. Well, Paul McCartney was also knighted. That doesn't make him British. <laughs> it didn't make him British, but what? he he was British. He Paul McCartney was British. Is is Sir Paul the Beatles? The Beatles but were. So. Liverpool, yeah, you know England. what? Let's just you know. Uh, I'll compromise if you say. Richard Branson, the point, Jeff Bezos, okay? Wasn't that great? He went big, Jeff Bezos, right? Well, I mean, he, we That's went what up the Democrats 10 minutes. have to do. 11 minutes, Sam. Geez. 11 minutes. That's right. So look how far. That was amazing. <laughs> Didn't that make you proud? Look how far we've come, Emma, in 50 years. 52 I, years ago, we walked on the moon, right? Right. It took a week to go to the moon and back. Look at how far we've come in 52 years. We're sending people into space for 12 minutes. Yeah, the but moon David, took a week. It's that, like Moore's that technology law. was that technology was around for for quite a while. The the one that Bezos and Branson kind of used. Uh, I don't think you understand how exponentially the, the private sector has made. Uh, it brought efficiency into space travel. I, you know, you, you know uh, with all due respect, Sam's a fool. And with all due respect, it, it took a week to go to the moon and come back. Jeff Bezos went into a suborbital flight 
and back in 12 minutes. That's like Moore's law. You know how chips get more efficient? Yeah, no, I know Moore's law. Months? I know Moore's law. Yes. All right, but wait, let me ask you, okay, let, let's turn to the vaccine. I, I mean, you think about this. This is why you privatized the space program. A week to go to the moon and back 52 years ago, that was just like a boondoggle. That was like the, the big dig in uh, Boston. Well, I mean, the big thing, they, they a waste did of money. It. And, I mean, it was, you know, I mean, it was expensive and there was a lot of overruns, but it was, it was, it ended up being pretty good. Yeah, but Jeff Bezos, <laughs> six minutes, he was actually six minutes above the Carmen line. Da- David, David, I'm getting a little bit frustrated. Ba- Let's, I want to uh, just ne- talk about Neil Armstrong, things. like a week. It was right, a week. Listen. It took him a week to get to the moon. David, you pers- understand math. <laughs> You're all right. Let's talk math. Let's talk a little bit about vaccination rates. Um, I don't know if yes. you've noticed over the past week, there's been a, a change in the, and at least in the, some of the re- Republican elected leaders, they are now seem to be embracing vaccines for people. What's your uh, take on that? The Republicans being for vaccines. Uh, I'm not a doctor. I don't know if they're safe. <laughs> Well, okay. I mean, I'm not a doctor. Doctors are telling you that. It's are you safe. a doctor? I'm not a doctor, but I don't know that any medical treatment is safe. Um, and the doctors do, and the doctors say it's safe. The doctors say it's safe. Correct. But I'm not a doctor. But I'm not a doctor, so I don't know if it's safe. I think it's up. To, it's individual choice. All right. To decide. Do you take if any medications? Safe. Have you ever mm-hmm. have you ever taken any medications? Have you ever had any any uh, uh, medical intervention at all? I'm not a doctor. No, I'm not asking if you have men- I don't medically know. intervened. I don't know. I'm asking I'm as a patient. Doctor, so have you ever been a patient? Medical intervention or not? Have you ever wait, wait, been I mean, a patient? What, what the- have you ever been a patient? I don't know because I'm not a doctor. So I don't. When I <laughs> if, I, if I'm in a hospital. I don't know if I'm a patient or a doctor because I, I, these things are beyond me and I think it requires study. So I don't know. I don't know if I've ever been a patient because I'm not a doctor, nor am I a scientist. All right. I don't know. I'm just saying that people should, if you're in a hospital, right? Yeah. You should decide, you should, you should decide yourself if you're the patient or the doctor, that should be your decision. Okay. So Sam, why government. are you, so you're the, violating the David's HIPAA rights what, what, here. I'm sorry. But I mean, why is Sam violating your HIPAA rights by asking all these questions? Exactly. Who's, who's it's a, it's a, thank you, Emma. Thank you. See, Emma gets it. Wait, wait a second. It's nobody's, so, so, okay. it's nobody's so, business. If I've been a patient or a doctor, <laughs> First off, she's absolutely right. That's the first thing. And it's my choice when I'm feeling a pain in my chest or or my lungs are are filled with fluid. It's my choice to decide if I'm going to go to the hospital. And it's my choice to shop around to see which hospital is the cheapest. And, you know, if I'm having a heart attack, I I go, I'll go to Lenox Hill. How much, how much? For defibrillator. Okay. That makes you right a patient back. though, maybe, right? Let me go right? down to Mount Sinai. I hear it's cheaper. Just hang hang on. Yeah. And, you know, you shop around. And then when I get in the hot, when I settle on a, on the price of, you know, the heart valve being replaced, you negotiate. Of course. Uh, when I, then I decide, am I the patient or am I the doctor? Then I decide. And that's my choice to decide, not okay. yours, Sam. If okay. I'm a patient or a so doctor. If you're so, not- what is what are you asking me about the vaccines for? I'm not a doctor. <laughs> People should decide for themselves. You're not whether a doctor. They're a doctor I'm, not, I'm asking you. You're not a doctor, so you're a patient. No, I'm not. <laughs> Am I a patient? I don't know because I'm not a doctor. <laughs> that I know that I'm not a doctor. And so people should make the choice for themselves. So you, God, you're, you know, 
you're impossible. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. You know, so you think everybody, you, you want the government uh, demanding that everybody gets a vaccine, right? Um, I'm, right? I'm pretty close to that. I mean, I think it would probably be more like um, if you want to participate in certain things in in society, uh, I would be okay with people requiring. Mm-hmm. And, and where does it stop? So, so first, the government is knocking on my door, and it's like it's very innocent. Hey, did you uh, get a vaccine? We're just asking. It's just the Biden administration trying to find out if you've had a vaccine. Very innocent, right? And you go, uh, no, I haven't had a vaccine. Oh, okay, we're going to write this down. And you know what? Here's a vaccine. I don't want a vaccine. Here's the chip. Here's the chip. I mean, the vaccine. What is here's, the chip? The What's the chip? chip? What's the chip? Huh? What did you say? The chip? I meant the vaccine. <laughs> I meant the vaccine. Uh, and then, so, you know, now the Biden administration, they innocently give you a shot. They they knock on your door. And, they, and then what is to stop them from coming back a week later and saying, hey, do you watch gay porn? And I say, no. Well, here. And then they quickly, like, fly, they open up their phone or their iPad, and suddenly I'm looking at gay porn, and, and they're, they're converting me. Converting you? To be a homosexual. <laughs> converting me. Because that is, that's, it starts with, hey, come on, did you get a vaccine? We're, we're looking out for you. And the next thing you know, you can't take your eyes off gay porn. You want that? You want that for your your country? Well, maybe I, you do. I mean, <laughs> it's not a very Tucker Carlson at that moment, but I, but I have to Thank say, you. David, thank you. I, I just saw, I saw Jimmy door on Tucker. Uh, and I think it's great that, uh, Tucker's having Jimmy door on. It, it shows that he's, he's, he's open to all sides of the argument, <laughs> getting the brightest, the best from the left on so people should, I would give anything to be on Tucker Carlson to support him. <laughs> and, and give credence to Tucker Carlson. Uh, That's well, what everybody on the left should be doing. Well, we actually do have a... Uh, going that, on Tucker Carlson. We have that clip. Um, well, can I just ask I, quickly, should he have mentioned the march on Tucker? Because I don't think he did. Yeah, no mention of the Medicare for All march, uh, Feldman. What, what do you think? Uh, why was Jimmy there if he wasn't going to promote Medicare for All? Because he cares so much about Medicare for all, right? That he that that he, if he were to bring it up, it would have been you know rude to Tucker Carlson. You're a guest on his show, so you say the things your guest wants you to say. Well, let's play that clip. Uh, this is um, um, Jimmy Dore on Tucker Carlson on Tucker Carlson's Today Show. And this is Jimmy explaining the dynamic as to why um, folks like AOC are sellouts, because they're afraid of a challenge from the left. Hmm. So what I'm trying to tell people is that when you vote for them, when you vote for somebody inside the Democratic Party, no matter what they say, no matter what they believe, they're going to go along with Nancy Pelosi. And Nancy Pelosi goes along with Goldman Sachs and Raytheon. So when you're voting for someone inside the Democratic Party, you're voting for Goldman Sachs and Raytheon because they are not standing up to those people. So the idea that we have progressives inside the Democratic Party, it's actually more deleterious to the progressive movement to have them there. Why is that, Jimmy? Because it gives people a false impression that there's somebody in government fighting for you, that there's one of the parties that are kind of on your side, and they aren't. And the quicker people realize that, that both parties are not on their side, they only serve the oligarchy, we are in fact in an oligarchy, your democracy was stolen way before Trump, until that happens, we won't ever have real change. Well, what about Ocasio-Cortez? She's so on Instagram. Wise. That is so wise. Ocasio-Cortez. So wise. Well, hold on. Campaign. I've never go heard back, that. Go back. Go back. He used the word so wise. It is so wise. Deleterious. He almost pronounced that properly. When I, the way I think you come across as smart, Sam, is you steamroll something you've memorized and don't leave any room for questioning. That's how you... Well, I mean, to be fair... How, no, wait a second. You interrupted here because uh, Tucker did uh, question Jimmy. So uh, let's listen to that question. Okay. Well, what about Ocasio-Cortez? She's on Instagram. <laughs> 
Ocasio-Cortez campaigned on a floor vote on Medicare for all. And she campaigned on creating what she called a ruckus, meaning you have to stop being polite. This is a quote, you have to stop being polite. We tried being polite and it got us nowhere. And it wasn't until we started acting out and speaking impolitely that we even created the circumstances for change. That's what she tweeted. So I'm just doing what she said. So I started to put heat on people like AOC and Rashid Tlaib and Ro Khanna and all the, the, the Justice Democrats and the squad to force the vote. And they said I was committing violence against them with my words. That's how scared they got. <laughs> they did not. They Were did you? Not say That's that. how scared. You really telling them to, to do what they ran on? That's violence. That's how afraid they were. And all the things. So they had people write hit pieces on me in the Daily Mag, uh, New York Magazine, Newsweek, BuzzFeed. They tried to shut me down and squelch me. They made me trend on Twitter negatively. They, but me. they couldn't <laughs> shut me up. And me. they couldn't stop me. And they don't know what to do with me. Because, again, me. all the usual... They have Wikipedia putting smears on me that I can't get rid of. CNN's calling me, me. It's unbelievable what's going on. Just a comedian, a pothead comedian in his garage. What you can do when you want to tell the truth inside journalism and politics. And you can create a ruckus. And I did. And so now everybody sees that those people are fakers. And they're no. corrupt. Fantastic. And the reason why I say they're fantastic. corrupt is not because they take corporate money and this do the is, bidding of corporations. Uh, yeah, go ahead. This, so, is the, the, this is the height of intellectualism. When, when you say, I'm just a comedian. I'm just a moron. I'm just a D's, Dems, and Do's guy. That's, <laughs> that's convincing to me. What, how, how is it that I'm a fucking idiot, but I'm getting it right? Even though I'm a fucking idiot, that's brilliant. Well, I, 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 I you know what? I salute him. That is a, I, such a great rhetorical device. I'm a fucking stupid comic. I'm a moron. I don't read. You know, I don't know anything. How come I know for a I'm fact so he doesn't smart? read. Well, you know, uh, to be fair, though, to be fair, he's probably convinced a lot of Tucker Carlson's viewers that AOC isn't the person that uh, she <laughs> says she is. That's probably, she's exactly. he's probably been able to sort of like uh, bring people around uh, on AOC who watch Tucker Carlson. But but continue, Eric, because he's got a very interesting theory. He makes it but clear. Here's, the, here's, your, here's the thing that you don't understand. Before you play this brilliant mind, this well-read policy nerd, because that's what he is, uh, before you play that, what you fail to understand is focus. Jimmy understands focus. You're all over the map. Jimmy has isolated who the enemy is, AOC. AOC, and that is so wise on his part, to, to focus on the most powerful person in Washington, D.C., who, who she could wake up tomorrow, AOC, and decide, you know what? I do want Medicare for all, and I want it yesterday. And she can go do that. That's how powerful she is. He knows who the oligarchs are. He, he used the term oligarchs. He knows that only a few people control politics in Washington, D.C. He knows who the, unlike you, he knows who the power players are. The squad. You don't see that the squad is the most powerful. They're like the trilateral commission and the building group into one. We need to hammer AOC and Pramila Jayapal every single day. And the fact that they're women, women of color, that's irrelevant. Well, we need to hammer the squad. To Sam. be fair, he also they said are the, Ro Khanna. You, you, know that, you know that women of color or Rokana of color. They are the most powerful people in Washington, D.C. Jimmy's going after the oligarchs. Yeah. Hey, David, is this... And, 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 and the squad, they're the most powerful people. Well, okay. got, they're I, the only thing I, that's keeping us David, from Medicare for all. Yes. Uh, and, and, and uh, okay. Uh, let's hear uh, Jimmy's explanation of their corruption. It is not the corporate corruption that um, that uh, the, the Justice Democrats have. Go back a little bit. This is uh, an important point I think he's trying to make here. 
couldn't shut me up and they couldn't stop me and they don't know what to do with me because again all the usual they have wikipedia well, putting hold on smears one second. Uh, since we're here uh david what what um when he says they don't know what to do with me like what what uh, do they need to do something with him don't you wake up every morning and say what are we going to do about jimmy door i mean i that, do. that's the whole of course but but i mean haven't you been following well, what, we don't. What's we been don't going on with to. the young Turks? Wow, <laughs> I, I haven't been following that as much as as I probably. You should. don't wake up but, every morning. You haven't donated hours of your. I my entire show, my entire show, my sixteen hour. I spent sixteen hours a day talking about Kyle Kalinsky's tepid response <laughs> to Jimmy's attack <laughs> on Jen Uger because we can't have Medicare for all until we resolve this dispute between the Young Turks and Jimmy. Okay. And no. you don't understand that. Okay, but... but I want Medicare but for wait, all, wait, but wait. we can't have Medicare but for who all is the, the until we they destroy they AOC and the Young Turks. Do. Who is the they that doesn't know what to do with Jimmy? Is it is it the Young Turks don't know what to do with Jimmy or the people All of us. Okay. All, all of us. All of us. All He's us. that powerful. Okay, let's play. Let's continue yeah. to play. Me that I can't get rid of. CNN's calling me. Now. It's unbelievable what's going on. Just a, a comedian, a pothead comedian in his garage. What you can do when you want to tell the truth inside journalism and politics, and you can create a ruckus. And I did. And so now everybody sees that those people are fakers and they're corrupt. And the reason why I say they're corrupt is not because they take corporate money and do the bidding of corporations, but they're doing the bidding that. of their own career. Right, their own self-dealing. Yeah. So if I go along with the establishment, I'm going to get a book deal. I'm going to get speaking fees, and I'm going to be in Congress for at least five years, and then I get a pension for the rest of my life. That is corrupt, and that's why they're not pushing back. Because Nancy Pelosi could come in and crush you. Hey, we'll fund somebody in a primary to your left, just like she did to Joe Crowley, AOC, right? So that's what they're all afraid of. They're afraid of the power of the establishment taking away what little power and uh, that they have in Congress. Now, yes, David, AOC. About, wait, 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 wait. Sorry, Pelosi That's is funding. That's pretty wise stuff yeah. coming from a guy in his garage who's got the door shut and the engine running, suffering from carbon monoxide poisoning. I mean, that's pretty wise stuff. Is Nancy Pelosi... That's a real truth teller. Nancy Pelosi... A guy Pelosi, in his garage smoking pot with the door shut and the engine running. How many times has Nancy Pelosi... That's pretty Pelosi, smart stuff. Uh, David, how many times has Nancy Pelosi uh, mounted a challenge to a... Uh, an incumbent from their left. What did Crowley do <laughs> to make her fund AOC? Crowley? Did he say Crowley? Was yeah, he said, a lefty? I think, I think, no, no, I think the idea he was, was trying to say that AOC primaried Crowley from the left and that the next, that's going to happen to her, but Pelosi is going to be the one funding the leftist challenger. So wait a second. Are we, should we oh, be rooting so for Pelosi? So it would be a false flag operation. Wait. Yeah. That should would be we a be false rooting flag for Pelosi? Is he selling boner pills? Does he sell boner pills too? <laughs> should we be rooting for Pelosi to fund left challenges to the leftmost? I mean, I, I'm sort of in favor of that. Yeah, Let's, I hope Pelosi does that. Yeah, <laughs> that, base that Pelosi. Good. But now let me now now, David, I think you know, probably because you are in show business and have had wild success as a show business person. That you're if welcome. AOC You're welcome. If yeah, I just want to say you're welcome for all that I've given. There's been a lot of things I'm sure that you have been peripherally involved in that I've enjoyed. Um, yes, your show of shows. <laughs> The Eddie can the Eddie Cantor show, right? I remember it uh, well. I mean, I saw yes. it at a museum once. But listen, um, <laughs> a AOC would if yes, she the most powerful person in the world. Yes. If she were to uh, lose her seat, she'd never get a book deal, right? She would never. No, she would no. not. She would have a tough time making money. She'd probably have to go back to bartending. Is that uh, is that your sense? I, if Jimmy says that, I think it's true. Well, I, well David, I trust the D's and Dems guy who's never read a book in his life and has to hire writers and smokes dope and uh, attacks women of color. And maybe some I other trust things. that guy. David, why do you think that he didn't mention Medicare for all in, in this segment uh, in studio on Tucker's daytime program or really re the Republican Party for all we know? Emma, Emma, Emma. 
Have you ever heard of three-dimensional chess? I, I do. I remember it. Have you? I remember it from uh, yeah. being Jimmy, discussed many times in the Obama administration. Jimmy Dore is playing three-dimensional diarrhea. <laughs> is that a game? This is way beyond. Yeah, it's way beyond. It's a level of politics beyond your grasp. Can I turn Three-dimensional it, diarrhea. Just to elucidate this, David, because I'm interested in your understanding what is of this. two-dimensional diarrhea? Well, Three-dimensional diarrhea. That's what Jimmy's playing. <laughs> David, um, are you familiar with the Nina Turner race and how uh, Hillary has endorsed her opponent? Do you think that, you know, the right way to get Medicare all, for all is to oppose Nina Turner and vote against her? I, I'm sorry, I'm having, trouble, I'm having trouble hearing you, in all seriousness. I'm asking, should we, should we oppose Nina Turner um, so the squad doesn't get more powerful as a way to get Medicare for all faster? I, I think that Nina Turner uh, is a, a threat to democracy. And it's too soon. It's too soon. It's too... <laughs> well, uh, David, this has been really um, enlightening. I am a little surprised with some of the positions that you're taking on things, but um, that is one of the things why people, I think, tune into your show, the David Feldman show. It's because you're right. sometimes a little bit unpredictable. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, again, I donated to Michael Brooks legacy project. Anonymous. Uh, you, you did anonymously. That. It was very big of you to do yeah. that in an anonymous fashion so that no one would know that and it was a big it was a big, big donation. It was a big donation. Part of it was it a was mistake. Big. It was a fair. mistake. It was a mistake. It was I accidentally added a zero. And it's not bothering me at all. <laughs> not it's, it's like, you know what? Who cares, right? I added an extra zero. Who cares? Let it go. I'm not even thinking about it. Are you going to try and get your money back? No, not at all. What? Money back from what? <laughs> I've already forgotten about over-donating, accidentally donating too much to the Michael Brooks Legacy Project at patreon.com TMBS. I'm not even thinking about the fact that they probably... I mean, you would think. I know we have to wrap it up. We do. Uh, and, I, and, I, and I don't really care. I just find this curious. You would think that the people over at the Michael Brooks Legacy Project would have seen my donation and, and maybe double check to see if that was what I really wanted to donate because it was so obviously a mistake. I mean, who gives that kind of money? You know, certainly not. You would a... think that somebody would somebody would have seen the extra zero and it would have raised a red flag over at the Michael Brooks Legacy Project. And I and I would have received a, a phone call double checking. Hey, Mr. Feldman, we noticed you're in Winfield, Connecticut next month, opening for Bobby Collins at the Peace Spot, and, and we also noticed uh, an extra zero. We noticed you donated ten dollars instead of one. Is that extra zero a mistake? That's all. You would just a call. Wait, ten dollars? <laughs> an extra zero. Yeah, I, hey, you brought that up, not me. And I donate just to donate. I, I don't need to. Hey, David Feldman, what a magnanimous gesture. No, you. I don't. That's tacky, Sam, to bring that up. Well, that's not the way I was you raised, know? but we've already been through that. Uh, David, um, as always, a real pleasure talking. You to know, you think they? I don't care. I really don't care, Emma. I really don't care. They could have double checked with me. Uh, I'm not a, a mathematician, but You're not. there is an That's exponential, correct. You there's are an not exponential lurch. Sam, there's an exponential David lurch Feldman from $1 to the $10. David Feldman show. And you thank would you think so someone today. would really have called me and said, David, thank you, you think somebody would have said, David Feldman, host of the David, unofficial you armchair so expert Dak <laughs> Shepard <laughs> postgame wrap-up. Thank you. Where you thank review you. all those amazing thank things Dak Shepard says. Hey, David Feldman, are you sure about this? Are you sure you want to donate this much? You would... Yeah, we had to let him go. You know who is a big fan of tea? I think our next guest is, actually. He oh. is here on phone. Uh, do uh, want to make sure that... Um, uh, okay, good. All right. And uh, let's bring him on, ladies and gentlemen. He is the host of the David Feldman Show. Um, I also believe he may be an Emmy Award 
Well, maybe nominee. I don't think he's ever won one. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, uh, David, are you you're speaking on a phone? Are you speaking anywhere near a phone? Yeah, you, can you hear? I'm having one of those weeks. Can you can you hear? It's like we live in a third world country. All right. Well, you can need you to speak. Now? Yeah, we can hear you. Just gotta continue to to speak into the phone. Yeah, it's one of those weeks. This is a third world country. Uh, broadband, it's pathetic. Broadband is. How do I do, how do I sound? You sound like a like you're calling on a like a like a cup with a string. To be honest yeah. with you, but well, let me try it. Let me try it this way. I hate my life. Uh, I just everything. Hang on, I'm, right. I'm really sorry about this. Well, no, uh, you, you seem to be doing okay. Um, hang on, that, that's that's fine. Uh, David, uh, let me just ask you this. Let me, let me can just you hear me. Here? Yeah, I can. We can hear you. Okay, I, I'm really sorry about this, but this is the country we live in, Sam. No, the infrastructure, I, it's the infrastructure. It, it's, uh, and I'm just, I, you know, uh, I have no internet. The broadband in my apartment building is clogging. You know, I have dial-up, but the building has broadband, and so it makes the dial-up even slower. Anyway, hi, You're Emma. calling you, from you, a I'm phone. I, I it's just, a dial-up phone. I just, mm. I, I just want to <laughs> ask you. Did you say that you have dial-up internet? Yeah, yeah. I do, live do, simply. You live in New York, though, right? Don't you? Or you live in a yeah. major metropolitan area? Let's put it that way. If you think New York City is a major, for you, you would, you know, New York is a major metropolitan area because you're a bit of a hick. So yes, you would come to New York City and think, "Wow, this is a big city," but. <laughs> anyway, well, that's me. The end of it. I, I'm, I'm in a bad mood. No, I can see I'm, that. Uh, I can see that. But I was just, I'm just struck by, well, now I'm struck by two things. One, that you have inter, dial up internet, which I, I mean, I haven't even heard of anybody who lives anywhere that is like, you know, where there's a neighbor within yeah. 15, yeah. 25 miles who has used yeah. dial up yeah. service in over 20 years. A yeah. and B, what, what city do you consider big? if not New York? Uh, well, I'll tell you, a city that's getting too big is Washington, D.C. Oh! And, uh, yeah. Too big for and, its bridges, yeah. huh? Well, you know, Emma, uh, I'm sure you have broadband because, you know, uh, it's all, let's get the newest thing. Let's, you know, let's spend money we don't have. Let's get broadband because I can't wait five minutes to download the Guardian, you know, it's, but, <laughs> and this is the problem with our side, you know, this is the, the, you know, we're all on the same team. We're, you know, we're Democrats, we're blue, no matter who I'm a, I'm not even a, uh, I, you know, progressive. I, I'm a, uh, I'm not even a, I'm a Marxist. You, you pretty much know that I'm a Marxist, <laughs> right? You're you're Marxist from way back, yeah. almost like the time of Marx. I'm a Marx. I'm, I'm a. I'm, but I'm a small government Marxist, <laughs> and small. this is not working. This is not working. What's going on in Washington right now? Pramila Jayapal. Uh, I, you know, I like her, but she is the leader of the Progressive Caucus, and she is a bad cop. She is. She is a rogue cop, and she murdered that beautiful bipartisan infrastructure bill last night. It's it's lying in a pool of blood right now, and it's on life support, and she just wants to kick the ventilator out and watch it die. And we gotta we gotta stop her and and, and Bernie, who I love, I love Bernie, but this is an embarrassment. This is a disgrace. Well, they just didn't take the vote yet. They humiliated Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> humiliated. And, and it looks bad. They're making the Biden administration look bad. And there's the, they want a civil war. Bernie, and I love Bernie. <laughs> I, you know, 
I love him, but it, it, I look at the Democrat. It's a crack up. It, it's it's like Israel. I look at the Democratic Party, and it's like Israel, Sam. Emma, it, it's we're looking at Israel, but you know, and <laughs> and, and it's it's, it's a de- how so? How so? Well, the, you know, the the progressives are the Palestinians, and then you have the moderates: Mansion, Cinema. Godheimer, who doesn't love Godheimer? He solves a lot of problems. I call, I cannot tell you how many times I've called, I grew up with Josh Godheimer. He's a problem solver. And uh, sometimes I can't, you know, the, the Wednesday New York Times crossword puzzle, call Josh Godheimer, uh, Biden, Schumer, they're the Israelis, right? And uh, this party's going to be destroyed because. Both sides, both sides need to come to the bargaining table and compromise. The moderate Democrats, like the Israelis, they have to be willing to give an inch. And the progressives, like the Palestinians, have to be willing to live in an open air sewer. (laughs) Otherwise, the whole thing, otherwise, the whole thing falls apart. And I just don't think. I'm not optimistic about the Democratic Party. I'm really disappointed with Bernie and Pramila Jayapal. You know, they want everything. They want they they're like the Palestinians. They want drinkable water, housing, medical care, food for their kids, schools, economic, socioeconomic mobility. Yeah, yeah. I mean, where are the adults who are going to say to to these progressives? Yes, who doesn't want that? But you gotta, you have to give and take. It's all compromise. And I don't think this is what Bernie and the progressives understand. You know, I, on paper, you know, I, I'm not a child, Sam. You know, no, no, I know you're not a child. You know, like I would like faster internet, but how are we going to pay for that? Uh, <laughs> How do you pay for this? Well, um, I mean, you tax it. You tax. Okay. See, tax and spend. I, I told you I am a small government Marxist. I don't believe in, in tax and spend. And I don't, I don't think taxing solves. Okay. Okay. Big Pharma. Negotiating with Big Pharma on Medicare. It's a good right. idea, right? It's a great right. idea. It doesn't even involve taxing, but it would raise... Exactly. Would... How are you going to pay for that? How do you pay for negotiating with Big Pharma? You can't tax that problem away. That's nothing you... to do with taxes. Now, but How wait are you going to pay for that? David, I, 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 I think you're confused about the dynamic here. When you negotiate... Oh, now it's a, person, now it's a personal tax. Now it's a per- I'm confused. Now we're attacking me. I don't like the tone of your voice, quite well, frankly. I think maybe that's your phone. Maybe your phone is just... The, uh, it's because I'm just trying to explain to you that with the negotiation, Medicare negotiating with Big Pharma about the drug cost, this is the government paying for these drugs for people on Medicare. It could save $600 billion over the course of 10 years. Of course. But how do you pay for it if you can't tax it? Well, you, you you pay for it with the savings that you're expect. You're you're you're, you're a child. You're a ch- I don't mean to be condescending, but <laughs> you're, an, you're you're an infant. All I hear is goo goo gaga, ma 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 ma, mommy. Where's 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 my breast milk, mommy? So I can feed off the teat of of big government. Uh, I gotta tell you, company, I I can't tell you how strongly I wish that we had clean, cleaner audio of you saying that. But that's not the point. David, I... I, you're, I you're saying my audio isn't clean? You're well, talking I'm, my audio? I'm not mad at that. I'm a guest on your show, and you're saying I have dirty audio? No, I'm not saying you have dirty audio. I, 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 forgive me. I, I apologize. That was out of, out of line. <laughs> uh, and, I, I, and I'm all for clean audio. Climate change, okay? You're a child. You're, and, and don't take this the wrong way. Right, no. You do not, don't take this the wrong way, but you're, not, you, you're, you haven't developed <laughs> yet. And, and climate change, okay? Right. I hate the oil companies. You know that. No, I know that. Of course. I, I, I loathe the oil companies. You hate them. And 
<laughs> and we are subsidizing. We are giving billions. And I read The Intercept. Do you read Brian Grimm and The Intercept? Yeah. In fact, we just interviewed him on the show. Well, did he tell you? Did, did you know that our government is is subsidizing the oil companies? That we get, we literally yes. give. Yeah. You, you know that, Emma? Yeah. Okay, so that's insanity. That's fiscal insanity. The climate is falling apart, and our government is giving money to Exxon, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So theoretically, it would make sense to cut the subsidies to big oil, right? Right. Well, practically. How do you, I mean, not how do you pay for that? How do you pay for that? Mm -hmm. How, how do you are you going to pay for How do you pay for that? How do you pay for Can the you, cut? How do you pay for the cuts? How do you pay for not giving big, big oil those subsidies? Well, you, sure. And, 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 you know, if the world smelled like cinnamon and all we had to eat was cupcakes, I would be for, yeah, cut the subsidies to Exxon. But you can't tell me how to pay for it. Well, I, the, you don't need to. When you stop paying somebody, there's no expense associated with that. There's savings. I'm sorry. I just hear goo goo gaga, mommy, mommy. I'm hungry without your government teat and feed me. That's all I hear from you well, infants. I, I mean, That's all I, don't, I hear. Now it's me now, too, huh? Yeah. I mean, it's like mm, grow up. Turn, David. Cutting, cutting the Pentagon. I would, I yes, 20% off the top of the Pentagon. Great idea. How do you pay for it? What you, did you, that. <laughs> David, no, no, honestly, I feel like I no, I feel like you're being da, da, da. purposefully obtuse in some way. I mean, I think people are familiar with the concept that when you are paying for something and you stop paying, for, let me, well, let me, let me, let me put it this way: Do you pay for your dial-up internet? Yes, I do. Okay, let's say. You decided, I'm not going to pay for my dial-up internet. I don't need the internet. I'm watching Matlock. I get it on over-air uh, TV or, you know, uh, Murder, She Wrote, or whatever it is. 10, 10, 10 o'clock, Murder, 10 She Wrote, 11.30. Right. Yeah. So you cut yeah. your internet. Do you have to pay for that? Again, I'm not trying to be rude. You you sound like a, a, a one-year-old child who has been sucking off the government teat for 60 years, and now your diaper is full but, and you're cranky. But, but, but how could I suck off the government teat for 60 years if I'm one years old? All right. You're just an A. You know, think about the left, and I am a Marxist. But you're you're vicious. You're vicious. That's the problem with our side. You are on my side. I mean, what you're vicious. The way you talk to me, the way Emma, I hear Emma laughing at me. And I I've, I've watched her demonize Joe Manchin. That has to stop. I mean, it really Well, what did you think about him on his uh yacht saying that we're going to cut we're going to we're going to tax the rich and the celebrities which I think you should probably be a little bit concerned about. Yeah. Uh you're talking about uh heaven what, 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 his yacht. Almost uh, heaven. Almost, almost heaven. heaven. Have well, you been I there? Yeah, I call it heaven because that's where Lindsey Graham caught covid. Oh, so to me that, that's heaven. Yeah. That, that was I, I have a problem with Lindsey Graham because I'm a Democrat. Right, a of, Democrat. Course. of course. Of yes. course. And I don't and I you know, and I don't mind demonizing the other side, but don't demonize our team. Joe Manchin is on our side and he's my brother. Is Joe Manchin your brother? Uh, no. Is he a he's Democrat? Not, he's not my brother. Uh, no, but let me ask you this, Dave. Well, you're saying you're saying he's a woman? You're saying he's your sister? No, I'm saying he's what of you, no relationship to me. He's your brother. He's part of our family, the Democratic family. 
and you d- and Emma. But but he is I going pr- against. Now wait a second. No, no no wait a second. I want you to address this because I let you I let you like filibuster for a long time. Like you really you really you just you you monologued on this quite. Oh, a bit. I suppose you want to get rid of that too, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, based upon this experience, I, d- I certainly do. All uh, um, right, all right. Oh well, wait, just Jesus. let me. Can I make a point? Go right ahead. You are blaming. Take the pa- take the pacifier out of your mouth. The, you are blaming. I'm just going to ignore your. I mean, you're getting insulting. Not me. All you're right. my brother. If you're still a Democrat, you're my brother. Listen, you you claimed that the progressives were, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, going off on their own. They are defending Joe Biden's agenda. Right. This is like pre-negotiated. They they are. Uh, this is the agenda that Joe Biden signed off on. It is Joe Manchin and Kristen Cinema who are obstructing my sister, my sister. <laughs> it's your sister and your brother who are obstructing my sister and my brother. your sister and your brother who are obstructing the entire Democratic administration's project, essentially. What are you talking about? There's an infrastructure bill waiting to pass. It's well, sitting that's, there. That is literally one sixth of the agenda, and it's really not even as um, as as poignant as the rest of the agenda. It's I mean, so it's, it's once it's something, but it's but, something. It, it, but it, I mean, how is that even remotely like equitable or fair to Joe Biden, who I imagine in your mind is like your either your older your brother, maybe your dad? He's your dad, yeah. What, what, I, Who's your you, daddy? You know, hang on, you you have it, you kids want instant gratification. You pass this bipartisan infrastructure bill, right? Right. Right. Well, okay. Well, I want to see where you're going with this. For the sake of I argument. Agree. And I'm let's see right. if we like it. Before before we get another kitten, let's see if we like this cat first. Let's give it some time. And then if, if you take care of this infrastructure bill and you're responsible and you change the box, then maybe we'll talk about Bernie's bill. But yeah. first, prove to me that you 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 can handle this bipartisan infrastructure bill that was carefully pruned and shaped by Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema. I mean, Joe Manchin, he's not your enemy. I mean, you're just, you know, you're, you, 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 you have to have somebody to demonize. The man represents West Virginia. You know, I know you coastal, I, I know uh, that uh, Emma, uh, uh, I think, according to Jimmy Dore, uh, cul-de-sac, is there a cul-de-sac in your life? I, I've I've heard I've heard rumors of a cul-de-sac, but uh, really it's just a suburban street line. Well, I watch Jimmy Dore. That's where I get my mm-hmm. uh, information from. Mm. And I and he he accused you of being a cul-de-sac, as I remember. I don't know what a cul-de-sac is, but. When if Jimmy, that's a big word for Jimmy Dore to use. Cold well, it's actually, so. I mean, to be fair, it's three words. But Well, wow, did he, he accuse me of, of being a cul-de-sac? I think I heard there was so much vitriol and saliva and misogyny spewing from my hero, Jimmy Dore, when he, I, I, I think he was using a French pejorative. He, I think he said, Emma is a cul-de-sac. That's <laughs> what I heard. Listen, You're right. I, I don't pay it. Listen, when it comes to Jimmy Dore, it's not what he says. It's how he says it. Right. It's the music. It's not the lyrics. <laughs> the point is he hates women. That's what that's what it says. <laughs> Look, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you're a cul-de-sac. Maybe you're not a cul-de-sac. The point is you've never been to West Virginia the way Jimmy and I have. I've Jimmy been to West I, Virginia. You you have never been you have you walked along uh, the Appalachian Trail with the with the Appalachians. Have you talked to the people of West Virginia the way Joe Manchin? Have you talked to? I, I am. I'm not a cul-de-sac. Okay, mm-hmm. I talked mm-hmm. to the to the the people in 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 West Virginia with their bloated bellies. 
and they live in cardboard shanties. And I, I sit down on their dirt floors and ask them what they need. These are Joe Manchin's constituents. And you know what they want? Fiscal responsibility. That's what they want. But you want to know that because you're a cul-de-sac. You have a you have a point there. I, I, right. I never sat on the floor of a West Virginia shanty. The, this, yeah. I mean, David, this, okay. So you're saying, I, I, I'm not quite sure what you're saying. You seem to have taken like a little bit of a turn here. Um, I'm saying you got to look, it's give and take, okay? It's give it's, and take. It's give and take. Well, let's, That's all right. Well, let's, I mean, wouldn't, if, if you're talking about um, four and a half trillion dollars worth of spending, uh, that is proposed, wouldn't the give and take be somewhere around 2.75? Uh, the give and take is... Or I should uh, say well, 1.7, I mean, I guess, uh, you know, uh, 2 or 2.25, I guess, maybe? Okay. First of all, you know nothing about negotiations, okay? You can't have give and take at the same time. So somebody has to Actually, give and no, somebody has you, to take. No, you have give and take at the same time. That is exactly you what can't. happens. You cannot give and take at the same time. Well, one party can't. Not- well, actually, one party could theoretically give and take at one time, but you cannot have give without take on the other side. I mean, you, if but, you have two parties. Yeah, there are two parties, but in any relationship, at one point somebody is giving and one point somebody is taking. And now is the time for our side you know, uh, the Marxists, the leftists in the Democratic Party to give and the Godheimers should be allowed to take. And then when we see what they've done with all the stuff that we've given them after a couple of years, then it's our turn, assuming, you know, we have the a majority in the House and we still have the Oval Office, then we can take. But you can't give and take at the same time. You've got to you've got to give a lot before you can take is what you're saying. Yes, right. You but, give but, David, do you think that there's going to be an opportunity anytime soon to, to have the scenario you're talking about? I mean, it's, it's well, very we gotta, likely. We, we have See, an existential threat. Donald Trump, we have the most important midterms coming up in my lifetime. Our democracy is at stake. I think all of us should be willing to go without to save our democracy. I don't think children need health care. I think they should be willing to give up their health care, their food, and, and live on the street. We all have to sacrifice for democracy. And, and it, it's we're not – you're not part of the greatest generation. Compromise, okay? The infrastructure, uh, bridges and roads. Do we need the roads? I like bridges. Bridges are beautiful. They're a testament to man's ingenuity. Do we need roads? Well, why does it have to be bridges and roads? Why can't it just be bridges? Well, I mean, theoretically, you need to get to the uh, bridges. But, I mean, if you're suggesting that maybe we do, I don't know, some type of uh, train upgrade, I'd be I'd be okay with that. You know, I, I'm getting – I'm amazed at your stupidity. Bridges <laughs> and roads. What's on a bridge? What do you drive on when you're on a bridge? It could be a train. If you're driving over a bridge, what's below your tires? Oh, if I'm well, if I'm driving or if I'm yeah. riding, because I can do if both. I don't know why you would take mass transit. That seems inefficient. Well, I mean, no, I mean, uh, <laughs> I, I take the train quite often. Well, that's congratulations for your virtue signaling. <laughs> yes. That's not congratulations. It's not virtue signaling. Yeah. It's I'm literally I'm taking I'm taking the train. Okay. All right. All right. You don't need bridges and roads. There are already roads on bridges. This is government waste. If you would think before you, you spoke. All right. So David, let could, me just we, we we've got to we we got to you know sort of land this here. So I just want to be clear on what you're advocating. You think that it is incumbent upon the 50, maybe more, Democrats in the House to capitulate to the eight or nine corporatists in the House and the two in the Senate. Yes. You think they should capitulate to them? For the time being. 
for the for, for the time being. And what what do you think that time frame should be? Give me a, just a rough ballpark. Let's let's see what happens with this bipartisan infrastructure bill first. Bernie's, you know, I, you know, I. I so you're saying that. you're suggesting wait four or five years at least, maybe no, more, yeah. to see, you know do stuff like negotiate with, um, uh, you know, prescription drugs. Like for instance, what. What does building a bridge? How do you how do you pay for that? You keep bringing that up. Well, you're it's okay like with you paying a, for the bridge, but not the roads. <laughs> compromise. Um, it's all about compromise. Mm. Well, I see your point they, now. You know what? There's this. It's cute. There's a delicious naivete that I. That's why I like watching your show. I once said famously that. Uh, watching a bill pass through Congress is like watching uh, a sausage getting made. <laughs> because it's more effective than Viagra for me. I, I, I said that. And I find it very intoxicating to watch a, a, a sausage getting made. Wait and a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. You're you you you're famous for saying that watching legislation get. Are you are you building something in your house? I, my, I have a houseboat. I'm 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 a, I have a houseboat, and we're we're do, we're remodeling the the houseboat. So. All right. Um, yeah. It, yeah. It, I said that. Yeah. It's like watching a sausage getting made, and uh, Bernie <laughs> Kilbasa. Can I do, can I be indelicate here? Do you mind? Because I, I, it's lunchtime. I don't want to get people right. salivating. But Bernie's $3.5 trillion kielbasa, as eye-watering as it is, I think it's scaring a lot of Americans. They look at the size of Bernie's kielbasa, and they say, you know what? That's going to hurt. I, I, You know, I could handle Bernie's kielbasa. <laughs> But most Americans are going to look at the size of that $3.5 trillion sausage and say, go stick that in some other country, not, not, not here in America. Maybe one day, maybe when we're older, we'll have an appetite for a larger kielbasa. But Bernie, uh, it's gigantic. And I'm not saying Bernie's kielbasa isn't appealing. But you All just right. don't jam a, a $3.5 trillion kielbasa into a country that's barely 250 years old. All right. <laughs> Listen, uh, um, David, it has been a pleasure uh, to have okay. you on today. appreciate your, you. your insight into this. It's, um, it has been um, insightful and... Uh, and uh, well, I, I, I'm, listen, we're all... We're all brothers and sisters, and I'm a Marxist. I'm a, a, a small government Marxist. A small, you're a small kielbasa Marxist, and and and, and uh, Bernie's yes. too big for you. I get, we get it, we get it. Well, uh, read read Karl Marx, okay? Right. It, yep. it was Karl Marx who said the government doesn't create jobs. It destroys jobs. That's what Karl <laughs> Marx said. Or maybe maybe it was Ayn Rand. Who wrote The Fountainhead? Was it Marx or Ayn Rand? It was Rand? Marx. It was, it was Ayn Rand. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. No, oh, it was, it was not Rand. Marx. She's joking. It was, it, it was Ayn Rand. The, I just uh, want David, to see Rand. where that went. Yeah, David, yeah. Uh, I mean, just... You met you. my son, Rand. Did you meet my son, Rand? <laughs> I, I did not. I did not. <laughs> How about did my not. daughter... How about my daughter, Milton Friedman Feldman? <laughs> yes. <laughs> She's lovely, I'm sure. Uh, David. She uh, is. Well, do, do you want to, uh, when's your show on? I don't come on your show to plug my right. show. Well. That's, that's not why I'm here. I'm here. I'm here because. because you're our brother. We're, our brothers. we're brothers and sisters. Yep. And we just need to go slowly and ignore the suffering of others. That's all I'm asking the Democrats to do is block the suffering of others out of your mind. 
Well, words to live that's by. That's how we move David. into the. That's how we move into the light. David, always, always uh, a pleasure. Yeah. Peace. Be kind to others. Be kind to others. Thank right. you, that's David. My, that's how I sign up. Be kind to others <laughs> and ignore their suffering. So that you're not overspending on them. So yeah, live with yeah, yeah, live, live within your means. means. Yep. Yes, David. Thank okay. you so much for your. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And <laughs> Oops. Luckily, ladies and gentlemen, David Feldman of the David <coughs> Feldman Show. Jesus. Hello. Hi. Is it, we're just getting a picture of you today. Is that what's happening? <clears throat> You're doing a show today? Yeah, we okay. are. You're on right. the show. <clears throat> I, I thought you were going to cancel. Why would we cancel? Uh, I guess you're going for that, you know, like after 9-11 when Letterman came back and Jon Stewart came. So you're going for this big, like, you know, you're going to use the show to be the empath in chief. Like we're going to all suffer together. Is that what you're, I, I'm just surprised you did the show. Cause I, I, but I'll, I, are you, are you good, David? No, you're, I'm not. And I, no, I'm not good. And I'm surprised okay. you guys are doing a show and acting. Uh, wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, what? What, what are you, what are you talking about? Meet meet empath meet in, meet after meet what? Meatloaf. Meatloaf. What about Meatloaf? The singer Meatloaf. Meatloaf passed away last night, and right. Maybe I don't know. Maybe it's a generational thing. I know you guys might be a little younger than I am, but Meatloaf. I mean, much, much. I think is well. I think it's really it's much. I I, I lost my virginity listening. To meet Wolf. Parad Paradise no, on the Dashboard. I don't dash think you did. I think Paradise on the Dashboard Light? No? Wait, I, you're confused. The song was about losing the virginity. Yeah. You didn't lose the virginity. No, not to the song. He he stood over my bed and said, take your pants off. Oh, God. Now, David. now kiss her. <laughs> I listened Is that to true? Me yes, Meatloaf stood over my bed and, and taught me how to deflower myself. And this is very upsetting. And uh, it was unexpected. Did you know it was from COVID? Do you know he died from COVID? I did not know that. Is you didn't well, case? So if you, you, should we cancel the show? This is a tragedy. Look, he was uh, against the mask mandate, big Trump supporter. And to learn that he died from COVID, this one hits hard and should serve as a wake up call to all of us, because this is a man, 75 years old, you know, maybe 200 pounds overweight, not, not, not much. And it just, and he didn't get the vaccine. And, and it just reminds you of the randomness of COVID. It, it can kill anyone. Even, well, even, even someone in the, his mid seventies who, is 200 pounds, 300 pounds overweight and didn't get vaccinated. So it's well, a. He, he probably should have gotten vaccinated. I don't see. There you go. I don't want to politicize the death. Of, of, that's what you do on the show. I get it. But it's not right at this time. Uh, well, I'm not, I, I mean, I, I don't think it's I'm not making a political statement at all. Making a medical statement, there's a tremendous amount of evidence. Uh, reports Are you a doctor? Today. Are you a doctor? I'm not a doctor. No. So how do you know? Uh, how do you know that uh, uh, meatloaf didn't have a uh, was allergic to masks or, or, or shots? How do you know? I he, he, he might have been. I'm not. There you go. So the man is dead. And, and you have that smirk on your face like, oh, he didn't get vaccinated. I, and he's 75. And, you know, maybe he should have dropped four or six hundred pounds and he didn't take care. Like, it's his fault. Like, it's some kind of personal responsibility. Instead of using your your show to remind everybody of the randomness 
of COVID. It can strike anyone. You never know who it's going to strike and who it's going to kill. And I just can't what? believe Meatloaf is dead. I just, I just. Well, listen, I'm sorry that you're taking this so hard. Um, I, you know, 75 years is a decent run for a guy like a Meatloaf. Not, I don't, not uh, literally run, but. Um, God, I, I, can't, I can't believe you're, you and you're smiling. Fine. You know what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Listen, but my point about the vaccination is not whether Meatloaf was allergic to masks or the vaccination. I don't know that he was one way or another. But in general, we know from the CDC that people who have been vaccinated and particularly boosted are far, far less likely to be hospitalized and to die from this. Well, from COVID in general, because it includes Omicron. OK, that's how you want to you want to politicize. That's, what, what is what is political about that? Because he did not believe in masks. He was a Trump supporter and he was against the vaccine mandates. When a man dies from covid, you don't bring up the fact that he didn't get vaccinated. That politicizes the issue. And that's you know, David, I'm pretty sure you brought that up. Well, I mean, we we lost. Hey, I'm getting I'm picking up. Uh, I, you know, it's like you, like I, I'm pro science. OK, mm -hmm. so. Uh, uh, OK, you so you were against science. Well, yeah, it's implying that like um, I just I'm interested in this stuff. And there, you know, there are other centers for disease control other than the monopolistic CDC that doesn't compete with any other organization. Ah, you're so you're for free market disease Wait, control. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You're saying there's multiple centers of disease control. Well, it, it, it is plural. There's an S. There's an S. It's the centers for disease control, not the center for disease control. How can we only hear from what? I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the center. No, no. See, the, see, you don't do your own research. It's the centers for There's disease right. control. Did I win the argument? Yeah, you win, David. I see. Now this is because I do my own research and it's the <laughs> centers for disease control. But we only hear from the that while child. Right. Yeah, it's the, how can we only hear from one center? Well, when it, I think it is you're hearing from all the centers. No, no, you're hearing from one center, not no, all the centers. I think the when centers. the CDC says it, it's it's all the centers in that name. Who do you hear? You hear that Dr. Walt, whatever her name is, not anybody else. Walensky? Well, yes. She's the head of the centers for disease control. So there's no other heads of the, you have this, why aren't there heads of the centers for disease control. Well, there may be heads of the specific centers, but the centers as an organ, as an agency is there's one leader of it. <sighs> can we, can, all right, fine, whatever. I'm just saying we lost a meatloaf today and let's just use his death to remind everybody of the randomness of COVID. What do you mean? Keep saying the randomness of COVID. It can strike all... anybody and, and that we should just, you know, make the phone call, call the people you love and, remi you know, remind them that you that you love them because you never know when COVID is going to strike. If it could hit a 75 year old man who, yeah, 2000, 3000 pounds overweight, didn't get but vaccinated, David doesn't wear a mask. If it can hit somebody like Meatloaf, it can hit any one of us. Hug your children. That's what well, I'm saying. Okay, look, David, I I agree that we are all susceptible, but the susceptibility can be mitigated. That's all I'm saying by mask wearing and by vaccination mm. and booster. You you can't so eliminate you're gonna politicize it. Politicize his death. You're gonna pull. You're gonna use his death now. That. To, to keep saying something that. really dirty. How is it not? Well, let me ask you this. How is it not political for you to say it could strike anybody, but it is political for me to say it could strike anybody, but here's a way of minimizing your risk. 
Because telling people to love one another isn't political. That's human decency. But to pass judgment on a man who at the age of 75, who was maybe six or 10,000 pounds overweight and didn't get vaccinated. That's that's polit. You are politicizing that your life is random. And I'm pro vac. You know, I'm pro vaccine. I got them all. So don't. I don't doubt that for a moment. I'm sure I, I got I, I, I got uh, uh, the Moderna in my right arm, Pfizer in my left. I got the Johnson and Johnson in my butt. And I get I'm Sounds getting like a special request. <laughs> I don't get it. Well, I just never heard of anybody getting uh, the, any of these vac- vaccinations in their butt. Well, it's the scientific method. I, I do the Moderna in my right arm. I do the Pfizer in my left. I don't have another arm. I don't have another arm. What the scientific method means? That is (laughs) what the scientific method is. If you get COVID in your ass, you know the Johnson Johnson doesn't work as Mm -hmm. well as the other ones. Right. Oh, I guess is that what you're doing? You're trying to find out if you can localize the COVID infection. I I feel like you guys are picking on me for 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 being pro science. Did you get COVID in your ass, David? Excuse me, um, we really need to talk yeah. about my balloon knot in front of, I mean, this is, it's like the afternoon and, and this is, this is, I thought this was a highbrow show. I came here, I'm a child of the enlightenment and I, and literally, I, yeah. And, and so I can look at my left arm and see how the, the Pfizer is doing and the, and, and the right arm to see how the Moderna is doing. And I, I squat over a mirror to see how Johnson and Johnson is doing. That's the scientific method, Sam. I'm pro. Let me tell you, let me tell you how long I think it's going to take for me to get over that image of what <laughs> me looking um, at I, a view squatting over a mirror. Like the, I think it's possible that, um, it, I, I will see grandchildren before I am. I, 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 I can get that image out of my head. It's I take a picture, right? I, t- I squat over my mirror and, uh, we take a picture, uh, my lady says, say cheese. And in terms uh, of I smile. How you're, how you're gonna pucker or no, she takes a picture of my balloon knot and you know, <laughs> no, she says, say cheese. Can we t- I you know I'm here to talk about a tragedy and uh and the it scientific full circle, method. right? I mean uh, uh, like you you at one point had meatloaf looking over you. Oh my god! Oh, are you, is this is this what you're doing now on the show? I don't know. You, I really, you you're, you're laughing. Laugh at the I'm not, dead. I'm not laughing. I'm not laughing. You laugh at, at the dead. dead. You no. laugh at the dead. The okay. sudden death. We're all shocked. Meatloaf, seventy five years old, yeah. unvaccinated. Maybe several thousand, fourteen thousand, twenty thousand pounds overweight. overweight. Right. Suddenly dies from COVID, and you think it's funny. You and you politicize it the same way you politicized Martin Luther King's holiday, which I which I saw, and I've heard you talk about. How that. did you see me politicize? Well, first, politicized. what does that mean to politicize? Well, who was who Martin Luther King? Who was first of all, Doctor? Martin Luther King. <laughs> Who was Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.? Who was uh, Reverend Dr. No, Martin Luther, Luther King. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Who was the Reverend? Him? The Reverend Dr. Yes. Martin. Correct. That was his wife. No, so Coretta. 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 Yeah. I'm sorry. I misheard. Um, I, I was for the holiday. Uh, but uh I didn't want a holiday. I was. I thought they he should have had a holiday, but I said don't. Why? Why? Because it's Doctor Martin Luther King, the Reverend Doctor 
and yes. he deserves a holiday. And he's why, a, why did he deserve a holiday? Because he's a great American. And well, what does that mean? He's a great American. Oh my God! Do I have what to? He, what do you mean? What? 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 You're politicizing by asking that question. You are politicizing the memory of Dr. Martin Luther King. Am I? Am I violating his HIPAA rights? You're violating the holiday. I was. You don't discuss Dr. Martin Luther King in in ways that that are divisive. You know, you're bringing up that he was against the Vietnam War, uh, that he was a pro labor activist, for example, and that he wanted blacks and whites to unite in a, a worldwide struggle to end poverty. That's not how you honor his memory. You, you, you don't bring up the fact that he was leading a poor people's campaign. That's divisive. You, you, you politicize him by reminding people of who he really is. It's better to let people see whatever they want to see in Dr. King. That's how you honor his memory. Wait, wait. I, I feel like you just said two things that may contradict a little bit. You said you you celebrate who he is, and then you say, but let uh, everybody have their own idea of who he is. Choice, freedom. Yes, that's that's what we do in this country. You see whatever you want in Dr. Martin Luther King. And when you know, when I watch your show, getting into his life on the granular level, uh, it's divisive and it politicizes his memory. Uh, Tucker Carlson, you know, Tucker Carlson. Do I know him personally? No, I don't agree with Tucker Carlson, but. I was watching and he said uh, Dr. King would oppose the teaching of critical race theory. Mm. And when I heard Tucker say that, I thought we have come so far as a people where we're now a white man can, can, can see Dr. Martin Luther King and find anything he, he wants. And for you to say that Dr. King would be in favor of critical race thinking uh, theory, or or if, if you were to say Dr. King was a promote, proponent of affirmative action, that you're politicizing his memory, and that's not what he wanted. But 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 David, when Tucker says that he would oppose critical race theory, is that politicizing Martin Luther King? No, that's how far we've come as a nation, oh. where we can all see. It's like a cloud. You want it to be a cloud. You or just. You see, Dr. K Dr. King is a cloud in the sky. What do you see? I see a bunny with three ears smoking a Mershon. It's an Escher painting. It's whatever you want to see. Uh, that That's how far we've come as a nation. And again, Shelby, the Shelby ruling, I was against it. The Roberts court ruled that, you know, we're not the same way we were in the in the early 60s. But Rolling when back I section five of the of the Voting Rights Act, yes, yes, okay, yes, I was opposed to that ruling. But when I see Tucker Carlson saying that Dr. King would be against quotas and welfare, I think maybe the Roberts Court is right. Maybe we have, maybe the Civil Rights Act of sixty four and sixty five worked. So, and and do you still believe that? Believe what? Well, uh, Roberts wrote that in 2013. That that we don't need to put states, the, the old Confederacy. Right. Yeah. Well, what I do believe is we should not politicize voting. I think I don't think that uh, that I think everyone should vote. But right now it's been politicized. And I and I find that offensive. Politicized and like like your definition of politicization seems a little weird to me. I mean, first off, the reason why we honor people is not because they're a good Rorschach test, right? I mean, that would be then we could just make up a holiday and just say like, it's I don't know Feldman Day. Which Feldman doesn't really I, matter. You you're, choose. You're, you're flattering me. You you're, well, you're, not, maybe not. Maybe I'm talking about Tom Feldman. Or Bill Feldman or Mary Feldman. When 
you know that I'm a left. You know that I'm a lefty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And well, and yeah. and, and uh, but Martin Luther King Day, you forget how hard we struggled for Dr. Martin Luther King Day. You you're too young to remember uh, how hard it was to get it. Like in Arizona, you have no idea well, how George hard it King was. was. It was a very long time holdout. Yes. Yeah. You have no idea the struggle for that holiday. And for you now to politicize it and be divisive. Um, Why was know, there a struggle for that holiday? It, because there are only 365 days in a calendar, Sam. Duh. But, but, but why was it hard to get that holiday? Isn't that you, because? Uh, I, I, the, I don't take this. Don't take this the wrong way. Okay. I'm going <clears> to. <throat> <clears throat> don't take this the wrong way. You and you Jews with your holidays. Don't take this the wrong way. <laughs> But you, am I right, Emma? Uh, I don't want to get you in the middle of this. But you everything's a holiday. The Jews and their holidays. My God, well, why don't we just why don't we just go from the Gregorian calendar to just the Sam Cedar calendar, where it's three hundred and sixty-five days of holiday. First off, I feel like you have aged like 35 years over the course of that <laughs> sentence. I uh, have. Whatever I, I like. have. But 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 uh, you should also know that the Hebrew calendar. With oh, the here we go. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Existed the Gregorian one. The what calendar? The Hebrew calendar. Yeah. Well, you know what? We're in America now. Unpack. <laughs> this is <laughs> no, it has nothing to do with the Jewish holiday. Why do you have to bring? Why are you bring it? Why are you playing the Jewish card now? <laughs> you know I can't respond you. to that now. Anything I say, anything I say now, you're going to take out of context, and and I'm going to be accused of Jew baiting you. Let's Jesus see. Christ! Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You could say Jesus Christ. That's fine. Listen, but here's the point is that we I, we were talking about why it's difficult <laughs> to to get a Martin Luther King holiday. It was hard and we struggled for it. And Emma and you are, are you know sitting on standing on the shoulders of my struggle. And then you use it to just to politicize it and bring Why up stuff. was it a struggle that's what i'm asking you what because it's hard to get a holiday, holiday. it's and hard to why was that your struggle david because i believed in, aligned against it i believed in the holiday but why? you don't talk you don't taint his memory with specifics you don't bring up the fact that he was against the vietnam war and was a, a a labor activist. That's divisive when you teach that. Then people don't want to celebrate the holiday. Let him be whatever you want him to be. And don't do what the Democrats did, using the holiday to, to pass a, a voting rights bill. My God. What what a, how to dishonor his memory by politicizing this week? By trying to tie his memory in with voting rights? I mean, <laughs> voting rights were a big, big struggle for him. Voting rights. Voting and, rights. And, and do you think that helps bringing that up? So what did you so you, what, what you're, so you're saying you've poured over the FBI file on him? <laughs> and you found out that he 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 was for voting rights, and let's bring that up now. That well, it's not it's not that's not. You don't have to pour over the FBI files to know that he was maybe the largest advocate, single individual associated with the push for the Voting Rights Act. Yeah, because the FBI was tapping his phones, and this is stuff. This is uh, politicizing it now, David. No, no. Why up the FBI. Why am I bringing up the FBI? Yeah. Well, I'm, I, I, because you're using the files that they kept on him 
and 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 violating his privacy. I think I got you cornered. What are you talking about? Why are you? Why would you talk about things that the evil J. Edgar Hoover dug up on him about voting rights and and being a labor organizer and thinking about the least among us? That's not how. That's that's private stuff. You know, he's got grandchildren who might listen to the show. They don't they don't need to know this stuff. He was a he was a flawed human being, just like every man. We all have compromise. The flaws are the the <laughs> the the support for voting rights and the labor activism. You know, Emma, that's compromise. You're saying it's compromise. Yes, yes. And the FBI, no, the FBI had no the FBI had no voting bit. rights. You're saying it was yeah. compromise. Yeah, the, the, the FBI had no business. Tapping his phone, you know, taping his hotel. Where you know, when you get older, you will learn that that human beings are flawed. And I have been in hotel rooms. Oh God! And and I have said things that <laughs> that I didn't want other people to know. And and and. and for you now to take what I consider. Oh, wait, 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 wait! Like what? What have I said? Yeah. And what's meatloaf there? <laughs> yes, as a matter of fact. <laughs> because he, he he was there when I lost my virginity. And of course. And how did you arrange well. that? How did how was that arranged? Was was the fact that he was there a coincidental Ooh. to Ooh. your loss Ooh. of your meatloaf. meatloaf? Meatloaf. Circumstances. It's it's Mr. Loaf. Okay, Mr. Was Loaf. Mr. Loaf was Mr. Loaf instrumental in the loss of your your virginity, or was that was he incidental to the loss of your virginity? You just happened to be there. I went to one of his concerts. Okay, and I was a virgin, and I came backstage, and I said, "Mr. Loaf," and he said, "Call me Meat." Okay. And Mr. Loaf is my father's name. <laughs> Call me Meat, okay. and my and my and my knees buckled. <laughs> Right. And and he said, you look like a virgin. <laughs> and I said, that's. Yes, uh, I'm 33 years old, and this is one of the things that it was also your first concert. It was my <laughs> first concert. Right. And it was great. And he said, you know, a lot of men have lost their virginity listening to me. We'll get a hotel room and. He took me into a hotel room and helped me lose my virginity. And then I was ready for a woman. I don't know why. David, you know, I, I really can't tell you how much I appreciate you coming on on a day where you're obviously clearly in mourning. Uh, and, uh, you know, you're going through some r a rough patch right now. And, uh, and it is, um, to, to have you come on in this uh, time where you're this uh, vulnerable and, um, you know, it must be nice to sit in your bubble while the democratic party, while Biden is just being dragged down by you, you whiny leftists who are, Wait, where this, is this is coming from. <laughs> and I'm a leftist, but I'm not whiny. I, I'm an adult. And, and you are dragging this man down and you don't what? accept the world as it is. What are you talking about? We were just talking about, we've been talking about meatloaf and MLK <laughs> for half an hour. Yeah. And, and, and you're dragging, I watched the show, Emma and Sam. Okay. And, and, and all you do is criticize Biden. It's all you do. And, 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 you know, you lost, you lost, you know, and, and now is the time for all good men to come to the aid of their party. Uh, you're dragging Biden down. Is that a quote? It, hmm? Is that all good men come to their party? Is that a quote? It's an MLK quote. Oh, I didn't even know. I, I, I believe it was. Uh, you know, this lurch to the left that you insist upon is is what's dragging Biden down. That's why his poll numbers are so horrible. That's why we lost in Virginia the, the fifteen dollar minimum wage, the PRO Act, the Green New Deal, forgiving student loans, the public option for Obamacare. That stuff 
is dragging Biden down. Mm. I see. I mean, I feel like you've 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 changed your perspective suddenly on on this uh, whole thing. But you, so you're arguing that he moved too far to the left, and that he's, he's lurched. He, he's. I don't recognize the man. And w- it's w- just, weren't all the things that you just mentioned part of his, his campaign platform? Yes, and and that that's yes. Okay. And didn't he win the election with that platform? That he wanted those things. He wanted those things. Do you do you remember Playboy? Playboy like, magazine? The, yeah. The, the the centerfold would tell you her likes and dislikes, and then you would decide whether or not you wanted to dream about her. <laughs> sort that's, of. So so I'm not sure it was. I'll be right back. Her likes. Yeah, this is a good time for Emma maybe to step out. No, it's just you want to know likes and dislikes. It wasn't the likes and dislikes. That's That's how you vote. That's how you vote. But you're you're talking. You're saying that he he's for the fifteen dollar minimum wage. Okay, that he likes that. So I like him. He's for the pro act. I like him. But you said it was dragging him down because you're make because when you maybe you haven't used a dating app, you find out what somebody likes and dislikes. That should be enough. If if if, if you you oh you like Verde, that's interesting. I like Aaron Copeland. You know we can talk about opera, but I'm not going to say, oh we have to go see this Aaron Copeland concert. It's it's you want to know what these people like and dislike. Where did Emma go? Did she she mad at me? She didn't. I think she didn't want to hear about the the the, the Playboy stuff. Was making her uncomfortable. Oh, I'm sorry. She just I, she she had to run. She had to take a quick break. Sometimes right. it gets a little bit intense with you, and sometimes people need a break. All right. Um, just, well, get, why don't you give Joe Biden a break? I I, I think we've been very fair to Joe Biden. Did you support Bernie? I did, yeah. So did I. I wanted Bernie. Uh, okay. But now we need to get behind Biden. because well, I, the, mean, I feel like we did get behind Biden. And yeah, and put, you're pushing him off a cliff. Is, but you're, you're getting behind him and pushing him off a cliff. What do you mean get behind him? But what cliff? You can't accept the results of 2020. I didn't want him, but I believe in the process. The and process. The process is I wanted Bernie, but in the in the primaries, Bernie started to win big and Pete Buttigieg was winning big. And I and we all thought this is great. The system is working. The people are speaking. And then Barack Obama and Clyburn and Tom Perez, the head of the DNC, you know, they got to speak and they said, no, it's going to be Biden, even though he was in last place. And to me, that was an inspiration that we should have embraced the right man for the right time. Beto, Klobuchar, they endorsed Joe Biden and Buddha judge, even though he had more delegates than Joe, he dropped out and got behind him. And I thought only in America, only in America is there this kind of upward mobility where, where, where a, a man, no delegates, no delegates. Was given the front a help, is the front runner got a helping hand, and 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 he became president of the United States. They gave him a helping hand. He had everything against him. Isn't that an inspiration, Emma? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting to me. You're, I thought you love MLK so much, and I'm sorry to politicize, but Biden, you know, spoke at Strom Thurmond's uh, funeral. Strom Thurmond. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're bringing up my hair transplants. Is this like, is this trying to throw me off center? But Strom, Thurm, Strom Thurman had bad hair transplants. I have bad hair transplants. Is this what you're trying to do? You're trying to throw me off my game. We didn't know either of those things. I wasn't, I wasn't aware of the hair transplants. Oh, well, see, okay. Oh, oh, okay. So did you know that Joe Biden has hair transplants? Well, that yes. seems clear. And did you know that Strom Thurman? had hair transplants. No, I did not know that. See, okay. And did you know that I have 
hair transplants. No idea. And and did you know that? Did you you know how you drive a Corvette, and you see another Corvette driver on the street, so you you honk at them. Honk. I've never had that experience. Yeah. Well, men who you have do with yachts, right? Like with boats yes. too, with yachts. Yes, You're just like, exactly. Hey. Right. Yeah. yeah. No. Of course. Yeah, and so men with hair transplants, there's a bond, <laughs> and that's why he spoke at Strom Thurmond's ah. funeral. And and how come you did not? And I, that's I, Joe Buck, coincidentally. Joe Buck, yes. He did not have a good experience with his hair transplant. Why are you bringing this up? Why are you trying to throw me off my game? David, we really do have to say goodbye now. <laughs> um, you guys. Listen, I, you guys. I, I again want to just say, without you picking another random topic to, to attack us with, I appreciate you coming on on this day that's very difficult in the wake of Meatloaf's passing away. At the at uh, it, it, it's such a vibrant time in his life. Yes, uh, I have to go lift weights now. <laughs> All right, because uh, I'm, I'm going to be one of the pallbearers at Meatloaf's funeral. <laughs> David I, Feldman, I, I, always, always a pleasure. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you now. Are we done? Are we over? Or? Yeah, we're, we're saying Emma, you, did I say something, Emma, that you <laughs> would upset you? <laughs> you know, David, we're still on air. Oh, okay. I just didn't want to say anything that... Well, was, you just uh, started to stop talking after I said, yeah, I said, yeah, or, you, just you made like, him cry, Sam. Oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. No, I, 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 I just don't want to say anything that uh, is offensive because. Yeah, no, well, I don't yeah, think anything. It's a little bit that. late. You're a little bit late. Well, I, you were the one who brought up. I'm not just talking about today. Well, I, I unlike you, I'm not divisive and I want everybody to like me. That's I wake up and I think, what can I do today? So people will not hey, know. You know what, what I think you should do? Being. The first thing, maybe take a course on it because you're not good at it. You're well, very good. I'm teaching a course on it. It's kind of like taking a course on it. Mm -hmm. I'm not David, good at likability. David, David Feldman. <laughs> are, we all, are we are we done yet? I, I can't think. Oh, this, 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 this is like F. This is like what the FBI does. You tricked me. This is like me in a hotel room being right. videotaped. David Feldman. By thank you so much for coming on. Today. No privacy whatsoever. <laughs> no privacy. This was a violation of my Fourth Amendment rights. Appreciate your coming on today. <laughs> bye bye. Wow. Right, we're back. We have a connection. David, can you hear me? Sam, yeah, I can hear you. Hi. Okay. You're calling from I a don't. plus 44 number. That, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, that is, you're, are you out of the country? Can you, can you lower your voice a little? Um, I'm in, in a hotel room. And so I need you to, my mother is still sleeping. And I need you to whisper. So if you could just keep it down. Um, Okay. All right. Uh, I I will I will I will keep it. Keep, yeah, keep it but wait, where where are you? Well, I can't my whisper. Mother, what? My, my mother. My mother. It, it, it took she, every summer. She takes my sister and me to uh, so, you know to Europe, and we're staying. We stay in the same uh, hotel room. And my mom's tired. She's been watching. You know the. Uh, funeral stuff so she's exhausted mm. from watching it so mm. so can you keep it down uh yeah i can keep it down but david wait first off wait wait how old is your mother i, I don't you know i don't want to get she would kill me if i talked about that but she's my sister and i my older sister and i and my mom were, were traveling you know through europe my mom's very generous and uh <laughs> We're staying in the same hotel room. That and, seems uh, odd. Like, how big is the gets, hotel room? And she takes the cot. My mom takes the cot. Okay. But right. she, hmm. My sister and I get the queen bed. But you, you got to keep it down. So, yeah, I'm in, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. 
Okay. Um, yeah, I'm in London. I'm in London. Okay, you're in London. And I, All right. Yeah. And um, yeah. Uh, not not good. Uh, you know, my mom was looking forward uh, to you know to seeing the changing of the guard and you know seeing London. You know, it's a mob now. With you know, the Queen died. Did you hear the Queen died? Yeah. I, I did. heard that. Yeah. I did hear the queen died. Of course, I heard the so, queen died. It was uh, you almost can't yeah. avoid that. Uh, is your yeah. mom? A, well, well, it's a mob. You can't, my my mother is barely ambulatory, and the queen. So like we can't see anything. You can't. The traffic is horrible. Uh, you know, I complained a little, but I don't want to be. You know, so we're stuck in. You know, <laughs> we we've been watching the TV, so it's you know. Okay, well, I mean, nice. the funeral. My understanding is next week. Like, so the mood has been. I mean, what what is the mood like there? Well, I've been you know talking to people here. Here, I have to whisper. I, I, I no, I know you her. keep uh, saying that. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's uh, the mood is uh, you know, it's uh, somber. You know. Uh, here in London, you know, I'm in England, by the way. It's London, England. Yeah, no, we, no, I know. No kidding. We got that, yeah. Where else would the... Oh, is that, is that, is that Emma? Yeah, hi. Oh, hi, hi, hi. hi. I, I, I can't. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 because you know, there's London, Ontario, too, you know, which mm. is in Canada. Right. right? Yeah. We yeah. odd uh, so for your mom to take you and your sister and stay in the same hotel room in London, Ontario. No, 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 London, England. London, no, London, I know England. that, but I think, well, frankly, it's odd that your mom's doing that anyways with your both Why? She's very, she's, she's very generous. You, well, I understand. Maybe she could spring for a separate hotel. You got, like, she's, <laughs> well, it's all right. Well, I, uh, I mean, I'm not wow. judging. It's just odd that, wow. I mean, wow. you're like. She, I mean, she takes the cot. She's sleeping on the cot. My <laughs> sister and I have the queen bed. My mother, we're the yeah, three right. musketeers. What? what Okay. Why waste? No, no. Why waste? No, I got you. Uh, that's great. Uh, I, I don't know why. So, you know, there. anyway, so it's London, England. Right. Not London, Ontario. There are uh, two Londons. Well, right? there's probably more. Uh, there's yeah, New yeah, London yeah, in there's, Connecticut. Uh, there's, but Michael, I, there's Michael London, who played Little Joe on Bonanza. That was Landon, I think. It, Michael, no, Landon. Michael London, he played Landon. Little Joe on Little Land, House on Landon. the Prairie. Landon. Michael Landon. And Michael London, he plays Landon. Little Joe on. It doesn't matter. Little Joe, no on one Highway watches to the show. You ever watch Little Highway to Heaven? Re- watched any of that? That was David Hasselhoff, I think. Like, look, it doesn't matter. It was Michael London? Michael London. Okay, it doesn't matter because nobody you know, knows. You know what, Emma? Yeah. Can you can you look it up? It, it's I'm pretty sure it's Michael London. Look, you're, not Michael Landon. We, we, can you you have you have Wikipedia? Yeah, I, I Michael, have it. David, it doesn't... It, hang on, what way? It, it's I Michael Landon. Say, it's Michael Landon. Yeah. Michael what Landon. It? It's Michael what Landon. It's Michael Landon. Okay, all right. No need to. Thank you. See, I have a little <laughs> jet lag. No, I'm so sorry for I'm raising here, my voice. I'm here, in, I'm here in Landon, England, and uh, the funeral is uh, next week. So. Yeah. That's what I just said. The funeral's next week. Um, yeah. and, and so how is it over there? Are people... I mean, well, it's you know, it's, I haven't been outside. It's, it, my mother is barely ambulatory. And so we're, you know, we talk to the, the, the people who clean up. Um, you know, it's hard for Americans to understand what Queen Elizabeth meant to the British people. Um, are, you, are you familiar with The Crown? You know, Netflix? Yeah. The Crown? I am. I am, yeah. Yeah, I guess. I don't oh. know. It's not really my cup yeah. of tea. <laughs> no, it's a, t- it's a television show, you, you moron. No, I know show. it's a television show. It's on Netflix. What, what are you getting? What are you, it's a little bit you just, a little you hostile. Just said, you just said it's a, it's, you just called it a cup of tea. It's a television show. It's not a cup of tea. It, it's, it's a setting. You know, Christ, I can't believe this. I, I didn't want to do... If you were here in Landon saying what this nation is going through. Maybe you wouldn't London. be so flippant, Sam. Yeah, comparing no. the comparing the Queen of England to a cup of tea. It, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's why ugly. You're an ugly American. You're an ugly American. Compare the Queen to a cup of tea. I don't even know what that would be. Emma, <laughs> Emma, Emma, does he listen? Does he listen to himself? I, I, I mean, I, 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 David, I don't want to triangulate here. 
But I don't think that he compared the queen to a cup of tea. Okay, the two of you are gaslighting me. I, you know, play it back. I just said, do you watch The Crown? And Sam said something along the lines of, and I didn't write it down, but he said something about wanting to teabag the queen. No, I did not. <laughs> you, you, you just, no, oh my I God. did not. I'm on vacation. I, I'm with my mother. And you say, oh, you're in London. Come on the show. And I, I, this is, I didn't write that. You said something. Play it back. I said, do you watch The Crown? And you said something about the Windsor bosom and wanting to teabag wait, 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 wait. the queen. <laughs> Windsor bosom? I don't even know. Wait, what are you talking about? I don't even know what the Windsor okay. bosom is. Okay. You're gaslight. This is like, I don't need this right now. I'm with I'm not. My I, I know. I'm, I'm going to start. I'm, I'm going to wake my mother. I don't even so know what you're talking about. You're gaslighting me. You're, you're playing dumb. I'm you're not, acting, I'm not like, playing you're, dumb. You're, you're what? I am not playing dumb. Yeah, you don't need to play dumb. Just just be your that's how I would direct you. Just be yourself. That's great. I would catch <laughs> Are you, you all right, uh, in, a, in a pilot. I would say, Sam, just be yourself. Don't David, play dumb. Just be yourself. Because you know what? Not not to be I, I don't want to wake my mother. David, I get it. All right. You're dumb. You're with your parents. I've been there. It suddenly may, it makes you a little tense. You're on vacation, but uh, I don't I don't know why you're getting you, you're like you're incredibly hostile. I'm asking you about the funeral. You're in London, London, and now you're talking about the Windsor bosom. I don't even know what that is. The Windsor bosom. It's the Windsor bosom. Everybody knows about the wind. She wear, That's why she wears a crown. You idiot. So what? the eyes are drawn upwards away <laughs> from the Windsor bosom. <laughs> You're not, you're not allowed to see the Windsor bosom. It's like, I don't know, the, the, the Ark of the Covenant from Indiana Jones. You know, if, you, if you stare too long, uh, your face contorts, your eyes bulge, your ears flip upwards. That's why Prince Charles looks the way he does. She breastfed him. What? A Windsor bosom. There, there's no such thing as a Windsor bosom, David. The, the, Come on. The, the, winds, the Windsor bosom. You're saying that... that that the queen's breasts are yes. referred to as the Windsor bosom. And it's like the Ark of the Covenant and that Prince Charles, uh, like got all, uh, yes. Like, like had that look on his face because he, as a child, he, he, he was breastfed he, from the Windsor bosom. He was, he was breastfed. Off. Yes. It's like the Ark. I just said that you can't, if you're in the presence of her majesty, this is why it's a closed coffin. Nobody's allowed to see the Windsor bosom. If your if your eyes accidentally, uh, you know, bear witness to her, I want to put this, you know, her heaving <laughs> decolletage. Am I am I being too spicy here? <laughs> Calling it a, I don't know why you're being. <laughs> to be honest with you, <laughs> if, if the reason it's a closed coffin and it's draped is because you cannot bear witness to her heaving pulsating decolletage with those <laughs> ripples of girl power. You, ca you can't take your eyes off of it. it it's like a car crash. It's just, you know. Just, what? <laughs> You're saying the, the Windsor bosom is like a car crash? Yes. You can't take your eyes off it. You shouldn't look, but you do, and you can't unsee it. It's, hey, David, I, I don't know what's going on. If it's like this has to do with you traveling with your mom, with all due respect. And like, uh, but um, there's no such thing as the Windsor bosom. That doesn't. Uh, a, it, the Windsor never, bosom. People can Google it. It doesn't exist. Google and, the Windsor bosom. Yeah. And I can assure you it's not compared to a car crash. <laughs> It's compared to a car crash. It's exact. The Windsor bosom. Uh, go read Princess Di's death certificate. Can you look it up, Emma? Go look up Princess Di's death certificate. Under I mean, the cause of death. Yes. Under the cause of death. It says Windsor bosom. No, like, no. What? She she died in a car crash, uh, David. But the queen Wind was not there. The what are you talking, David? I think I mean maybe we need to do this another time. Uh, <laughs> Uh, maybe maybe you're not feeling well. I feel fine. I just don't know why you're... Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know why the two of you... You're making stuff up, by. David, and you're acting odd. Yeah, you're acting <laughs> odd. You're the weirdo, not me. I'm not You're sure. weird. Okay. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. Princess Di, by the way, is dead. Did you know that? 
Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to ruin the new season of The Crown for you. But she dies. So. All right. I, Great. I didn't, want to ru- I didn't want to ruin your cup of tea. Uh, Princess Di is, is dead. Yeah. All right. Uh, Princess Di is dead. There you go. <laughs> yeah, Princess Di. You know what's weird about Princess? Do you mind if I, I, I just jotted something down here? Um, you know what's weird is that her last name was Di, and she died. But that word, that's kind of... I mean... That's, that's like, it's kind of it's, funny. I was thinking of doing it in my act. Like, uh, hey. Yeah. I mean, the problem is the princess Di is not her. That Di is not her <laughs> last name. Her, it's yes, not, it was her maiden name. No. Her maiden name. No. Her name was Diane. That's her first name. Yeah, no, 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 no. Princess Diane. No. You're ignorant. Diana, I guess. <laughs> Diana. It was. No, 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 no. She married Charles. It became Windsor. But then after the divorce, she went back to being Princess Di. Anyway, no. <laughs> spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! She's dead. Yes. No, I so think everybody I knows. Want to ruin... she... What? Everybody knows she's dead. Uh, but yeah, well, she did I not die. I didn't want to ruin your cup of tea. It, it... I didn't want to ruin your cup of tea. I know you're looking yeah. forward to watching that. I'm not. I don't want to ruin your cup. But of tea. I can assure you, even on the, the show, crime? the cause of her death was not officially listed as the Windsor bosom. <laughs> None of that. You want to say a child? You, want, you know what? Your child. And you, you, you want to stay a child and not believe the queen had Princess Di killed? You go right ahead, Sam. Just Peter Pan, your life. Just never grow up, Peter Pan. I'm going to start calling you Peter Pan. Don't I was grow up. actually Just a grown stay. person when she died, and it was not uh, from the Windsor bosom. <laughs> None of what you're talking about is true. Let's just talk about the funeral. I saw a report that said uh, that was in the Jacobin that said that people are being arrested just for criticizing the monarchy. Let's talk about that or something. About attacking the, uh, the Whatever. Monarchy. Let's talk about the funeral. Let's not talk about the, the queen's wait, 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 Hang on. You know, what's the disrespect to the, dis- the royal family? What is 150,000 Mau Mau's rounded up and placed in a concentration camp, <laughs> raped and castrated? I mean... We're going to hold that. You're going to hold England accountable for dividing India into Muslims and Hindu and, and creating Pakistan and Kashmir genocide and, 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 yeah. and dipping bullet dipping bullets in pork before they shoot at Muslims. I mean, you're going to hold England accountable for what happened in Africa. I mean, go ahead, Barbados. Bermuda. I mean, you know, it's like you're like my third wife, just just coiled like a snake in the grass, waiting for me to make a mistake and then jumping on me. I mean, I everything you outlined is actually is is the almost the only true things that you've been talking about. Yeah. Well, that's, so what are you going to do? You're going to just sit back, you know, piss into the tent instead of be in the tent and, and rubbing it all over your body. I'd rather be in the tent rubbing <laughs> it all over my body than be outside the tent pissing into it. I got to be totally honest with you. I have no idea what you're talking about. I mean, I know the metaphor yeah, yeah. pissing into the you know tent, what? pissing you're out of the tent, but you're rubbing ignorant. your urine all you're over ignorant. you, I just, you've lost me a little bit. I'm just asking you about the funeral, okay? That's all. You're being an idiot. You're being you're being very odd. Are you drunk? <laughs> Hello? David? Did he hang up on me? Can you hear me? Can you hear yeah, me? I, I can I, hear I, you I, now. I, I, my, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay, you're waking my mother. No, I'm not waking your mother. I don't know why you didn't step yeah, out you... to do this or do this when your mom wasn't taking Where? a nap. I don't know why you're with your mom. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> because I, I asked you to talk leave, about the funeral, I can't leave and then the you're going off about urinating on because yourself. of the COVID. You want me to give my mother COVID? I don't. Leave, I'm not leaving the hotel room. Why did you go I there in the first her. place? You would have been better off going to London, <laughs> Ontario. We're in we're in London, England. Okay, that's where my my mother is very g- generous. She just died, and my sister and I uh, took her. You know, collecting the social security checks, and we we have to be in another country, so the social security checks keep coming, 
and she's very generous and having a, a fantastic time. And you're ruining it for me. Well, I'm sorry. I mean, I don't know what to, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, I, I, I I just I want to know about the funeral. If you have nothing to talk about, well, when, I, I just think I no offense. I think you and Emma, and don't take this the wrong way. I, I think. I think you get your news from the corporate controlled media mm -hmm. and you need to broaden your horizons. And did you, did you listen to Tulsi Gabbard on the Jimmy Dore show live from Comic-Con last week? <laughs> See, if you, if you listen to Jimmy Dore live from Comic-Con with what? Tulsi Gabbard, you, you would know these things, but you're, I, you know, you're full. I do not listen to Tulsi Gabbard. I did not realize yeah, that they I, were Comic-Con. She's a kind I, of bad veteran, right? But you don't listen to her because she's a combat. Why do you hate our troops? Uh, Why do you hate the troops? Sam? I mean, there's there's reasons, but I don't particularly hate the troops. I just I don't. You, like you think Tulsi. they're stupid? You think they're stupid? You think Tulsi Gabbard is stupid? I don't know if she's stupid, but uh, what she said. You think the I, troops are stupid? I don't you think, think the, the troops, troops are, stupid. are stupid. I don't think you the think troops. the troops are stupid. I do not think the troops are stupid. <laughs> you just said, play it back. You just said Tulsi Gabbard is stupid because so, she served in the military. I did not say you that. Just said that. You nope, just said that. I did that. not. I never. Go said that. back and listen. Nope. Play it back. Play it back. You just said it. You just said 9-11 was the best thing ever to happen to America because we had it coming. You nope. just said that. Did not say that. You I, just, no. You I just not. said, nine, you just, I just heard, don't gaslight me. You just said 9-11 was the best thing ever to happen to America because we had it coming. You just, Emma, didn't he just say that? No, David, uh, he did not just say that. Okay, he so did not. Gas, okay, I No, get you're it. gaslighting okay, us. So the two of you, I get it. Okay, okay, I get it. I get uh, it. Okay. Well, you're just hearing things. I don't know what I don't understand what you're doing. You're, you know what, Emma, Emma, mm. you yeah. are jealous of Jimmy Dore, mm. and Sam is jealous of his protege Jackson Hinkle, mm. and the two of you are seething. You can't handle it because Tucker Carlson had Jackson Hinkle on his show, and the two of you are going, "Well, why, why didn't?" Why didn't Tucker ask us to be? I on know why Tucker why didn't have it, but yes, we actually saw Jackson Hinkle on uh, Tucker Carlson. That is, it was, right. and, and and it's eating you up alive because he's doing what you do, and Tucker Carlson would rather have Jackson Hinkle than the two of you. And I love Jackson Hinkle. He's a Marxist who gives stock tips, and you know, he's you're you're jealous man. i'm, I'm not smart. jealous you, uh, no you're uh, jealous of jackson no, Hinkle. i would not take stock tips from him no i would not do that because you're because you know he's only 21 i i have no idea how old he is i wouldn't be I know. surprised I, 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 I thought he was 22 if you listen to me <laughs> think that's a 22 year old no jackson Hinkle is only 21 he's so young but so wise so <laughs> wise and it eats you up. He he says things. He has insight that you you don't. Did you know that uh, he's a socialist? Who hates George Soros? Did he's you know a, that he's a what? He's a socialist who hates George Soros. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if he calls himself a socialist. Uh, doesn't he also sell gold? He's brilliant. He's a, he's a communist socialist who hates George Soros. Yeah, I and, know you know, I was watching him on Tucker Carlson. See, I can handle other people's success, unlike you. Right. Well, I can I, I, I can watch someone thriving and say, "You go, you go ahead, make room for the younger people." And and he was saying that George Soros is hypnotizing the world. Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> and and he's a, he, and he's against helping that comedian. Zelensky in Ukraine. He, he said, Soros this is, is really wise. Mm. He said to Tucker Carlson, he says, why are we giving money to Ukraine when we need it back here in America? Yeah, wow. I, I, I know. I went, wow, Jackson, I, for a 21 year old. Wow. I know who Hinkle is. Hinkle. Uh, I, 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 I had him on the show. We, we sort of debated the fact that he doesn't yeah. like the fact that I'm. Why, why, why would you debate Jackson Hinkle? What well, he's on our side. He, he's a socialist. Well, you? he really wanted to, and I don't think he's a socialist. He's really on our side. I don't know what that he, really means, but I don't think so. Uh, okay, you know that I'm a lefty from way back, right? Yes, we know, actually, yeah. I do know. Okay. That. Yeah. 
Okay, and I can spot a lefty from the future. And that Jackson Hinkle, I'm telling you, he is a socialist and he wants to focus on America, not Ukraine. Go watch him on my mother's stirring. Hang on for once. I'll keep it down. I'll keep it down. He's a, a socialist who wants to focus on America, not Ukraine. And, right. he, and he, he says America first. Right. Have you ever heard that before? I have yeah. heard that before. Yeah. America first. Yeah. Yeah. Not Ukraine. Right. Not, Right? right? Nothing wrong with a little nationalism, Sam. Okay? I understand nationalism is a freighted term, but there's nothing wrong with a little patriotism, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with a little, nothing wrong with being a national socialist, Sam, like <laughs> Mr. Hinkle. Right. Mm -hmm. National, where have I heard that before? Uh, from, from from Jackson Hinkle with uh, Tucker Carlson. Why should the right wing own patriotism? Right? Why can't we be nationalists? Why can't we be national socialists? I mean, I think a lot of unions, people argue support unions. So, uh, <laughs> socialism is supposed to be international in many respects, is one of the things. Um, but uh, I feel he like he supports we unions. He, su he supports, you know, he says he loves the German model where 40% of every German corporation. As union representation sitting on the mm. board of directors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, that's not a bad Elizabeth idea. Warren has talked about that. Yeah, that's true. What, what, what's wrong? So I, he said, what's wrong with loving this country, supporting German workers, right? Modeling our, loving our country, loving. So he's a national socialist German workers kind of guy. Mm. And we should let him. I don't know. We should support this guy. I know he ran for office, and I think it was in San Clemente, right? I, I I think I think so. Local office, maybe. I'm not quite sure. Well, I hope the guy is young, and I hope he starts, uh, you know, like a, I don't know, like a National Socialist German Workers Party, so we can get on board. I mean, he's a socialist, you know. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Um, yeah. you, you would be very excited for that. I don't know. Um, I, I don't. And he hates George. And he and you know he hates George Soros. Right. That's like the ad. The added benefit mm -hmm. is he hates George Soros and that Zelensky guy. And until he started crapping on Zelensky and George Soros, I began to realize, hey, they look alike. Right? Have you ever, like, they sound alike? Did you ever notice that George Soros and that Zelensky guy kind of, you know, they have something in common. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I hate them both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, they and do have something in common. I, I mean, them. they're both Jewish. I hate them. But uh, they're, they're not, they don't look like they're each what? other. Uh, they're, I think, like, they're 50 years apart in age. They're like father and son. They look alike. They, they don't. sound alike. No, they're just, huh? they're both Jewish. That's it. They're, who's Jewish? Well, Soros is Jewish and Zelensky's Jewish. They're both Jewish. Jackson Hinkle railed on, on Tucker Carlson. They're both Jewish and he claimed that there was some type of like, you know, international cabal. Wait, 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 wait. wait. That is, uh, wait, you know, George orchestrated. So George Soros? Wait, 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 wait. Because I don't pay attention to this thing the way you do. Uh, you're saying George Soros is Jewish? Yeah. With with a rat face? He's a Jew? I'm sorry. I, I don't... <laughs> with, with, a, with a what? Interesting. He has a kind of rat face. Adam, what, what about Zelensky? Zelensky is also Jewish, uh, but I don't know about like what you're the, 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 the short guy running around trying to start a, a, a war. Well, he didn't really war? try and start a war. I mean, the country was invaded by Russia. No, you're saying the guy who tricked Putin into invading Ukraine the way mm. uh, because Zabrinsky's father tricked the Russians into invading Afghanistan. Afghanistan to create a quagmire so they the, the quagmire empire would yeah you're saying that this rat face Zelensky hypnotized the world and Putin and and tricked him into invading Ukraine and, no. and you're saying no he, he, you know Jackson Hinkle I listened to Jackson I, he never mentioned that Zelensky is Jewish and I just know from Jackson Hinkle that 
George Soros hypnotized the world and profits off wars and starts all wars and is in bed with the military industrial complex. But I didn't know that they were Jewish. Well, I mean, they're Jewish. They're Jewish. I don't know what to tell you. Okay. I don't, I don't, I don't pay attention to those kind of things. Mm -hmm. I just listen to Jackson Hinkle. Is Jackson Hinkle Jewish? I don't think so. I don't think so. He sells gold on the show. David. Are you sure he's not Jewish? <laughs> David, he's not Jewish. I don't know what like, what, I don't, I don't know what, you're, what you're suggesting. He sells gold on his show. I mean, that's a, I don't know if you are aware of this, but um, A, you know, uh, there's been a lot more anti-Semitism as of late uh, in the past several years, but everything you're trafficking in uh, is a little bit, anti-Semitic tropes, like, you know, George Soros is... Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't pay, I don't pay attention to that kind of stuff. Well, like, uh, I, I don't you, know. well, you should know. I mean, I don't know how you got by your... However old you are, without being aware that, you know, Soros is often used as a sort of a, a, a surrogate for, for you know, Jewish critique. I mean, you could critique the guy. I don't uh, care that he's... I don't care but the that idea that Jewish. George just, Soros is, like, creating all wars and is a puppet master... That, Zelensky that is tied object, into it. That I object to. Jews that, that sell gold. To. That's not, I don't know where you're picking all this stuff up from. No, no, I, I have no problem with, I agree with you that George Soros controls the world economy with the Rothschilds and creates all wars and that Zelensky, who's got offshore accounts, I think it was the Panama Papers, he's been in cahoots with George Soros, they both share a grandfather who was, I think, Adolf Hitler, Adolf Hitler's uncle. Uh, I think both Soros and uh, <laughs> and Zelensky are, are descendants of Adolf Hitler's Jewish uncle. But, but I don't pay attention to <laughs> your, you know, people's religion. I, I just... Like Jackson, I'm watching Jackson Hinkle, and we, I don't hate George Soros and Zelensky. If, if you say they're Jewish, I don't, but you know, these rat faced, money hungry, warmongering uh, vermin uh, that, that Jackson Hinkle speaks about, uh, I hate them because they're vermin and, and they're going to breed with our children. And I just think that's what, I don't hate them because they're, I don't even, George Soros I don't know who's going to breed with your kids. Uh, I'm quite I'm sure. Sorry, I'm worried that, I'm worried George Soros is going to fornicate I, I, my I'm, son I'm, or I'm daughter. I'm quite sure that that's not going to happen. I would also probably be willing Zelensky, to that Zelensky's never going to be anyone in your family. So, <laughs> that would, that would Zelensky, say like none of that is going to happen. Um, who control, you know, he controls the media. Zelensky in no. Ukraine and I mean you know right. I'm just worried Ukraine. anyway know. it's there there's a war going on there listen I don't know that are um, you sure I Jackson Hinkle hang on for one second are you sure Jackson Hinkle who I watch every night and I'm a subscriber uh, are you sure he's not Jewish can you put a picture can we look at a picture of do you have one because mm. I'm telling you I don't pay attention to these things uh, I minored in phrenology at community college i had a minor in phrenology skull shapes bumps on the head <laughs> okay but are you sure jackson I, I, Hinkle? I i mean I, I i'm not i'm not sure but i don't believe he is jewish are you sure because uh i met him once and i gave him i tricked him into a scalp massage and i felt the bumps on his head and i went jew wait are you saying like there's Those, horns that, that, that Jews no, have horns on their heads? It's, fr it's phrenology, you child. <laughs> forget about it. Forget it, Peter Pan. Don't grow up. But I gave uh, Jackson Hengel a, uh, a scalp massage, and while he was relaxed, I read, his, the, I read the bumps on Jackson Hengel's skull. And again, it's been a couple of years since I studied phrenology at Bergen Community College, but uh, my fingertips read Jew. Are you mm -hmm. sure he's not a Jew? He's not a Jew. He's not a Jew. And uh, do you uh, have a picture of him? I, I, I don't. I, I don't know. Do we have a? Can we get a picture of him? Uh, are you? How can, Are you absolutely positive? What, what, Jackson yeah, Hank? yeah, that's not. He's, he's Jewish. No, he's he's Jewish. Got, no. 
No, he's, he's a, a Jew. He's I, I don't, a Jew. don't even do know anything, what the picture is supposed say to tell me. And do anything for money. <laughs> he's a Jew. Jackson Hinkle will say and do anything for money. He is a Jew. <laughs> and the bumps, I have okay. the bumps on his head to prove it. The Jackson Hinkle. You know, is a Jew. So how could he be anti-Semitic? I think we probably got to wrap this he... up because I don't want to wake up your mom. <laughs> That's what it's like. Uh, right. Your mom's probably stirring by now, right? So, uh, David, this has been really uh, edifying and um, and interesting. All right. Um, All right. Are, you, are you a Jew, Sam? Yes, I am a Jew, David. Uh, my last name is Cedar. It's it's like literally I, it's, the same. It's wood. Right? Well, it's S E D E R. Cedar wood. No, what? no, Seder. It's spelled like Seder. It's a Jew. You're Jewish. You, you know I, I, I'm I Jewish. Know. I didn't know you were Jewish. I don't pay attention to those kind of things. But you do seem kind of rich and controlling. Uh, maybe that's why Jackson Hinkle doesn't like you. David, it has been a real interesting conversation. I want to say goodbye uh, to you now. And uh, best of luck in London hotel room. Thank you. All right. Heil Hinkle. Heil Hinkle. <laughs> I'm sorry. Excuse me? <laughs> what did you say? I, nothing. I just said Jews will not replace us. Oh. <laughs> oh, all right. That's good. Thank you. Thank you, David. Heil Hinkle. All right, Heil David. Hinkle. I appreciate the uh, call. That was... Um, <laughs> all right. Like I say, folks, unfortunately, uh, now apparently joining us via phone... Uh, David Feldman, he is the host of the David Feldman Show, uh, which is hey, uh, heard uh, before we. I, I know we haven't. I'm sorry I we watched... couldn't get Kindler this week. That's my what. I, yes, hello, David. Matt debated Tim Pool, right? Yeah, yeah, Matt he did. did. Hi, how are you? I, I'm doing the show in in protest. I saw the debate, and if. If Tim Pool identifies as a liberal, who does Matt think he is not to to allow Matt to allow Tim to identify the way he wants to identify? <laughs> well, I mean, you'd have to take that up with Matt. Right. I don't know why, you, you know, he's not here today. Yeah, well, I'm doing the show uh, in protest because if Tim Pool identifies as a liberal, you have no right to, to say to, to dismiss his identity. David. And by the way, did I, did, let me ask you a question. I, I let was me ask listening. you a question. How are we going yeah. to assess that you're doing the show in protest as opposed to any other way? Like what is the material difference of you doing in protest? It always, wow. there always feels like on some level that there is some type wow. of like, it almost always feels like it's a protest when you come on. Because you're unpleasant. And well, I don't even think you're, you're Oh no, I'm sorry. Aware. I was talking about the audience. The audience uh, protests. Well, they're unpleasant. <gasps> wow. All right. The audience can be. A, David. Do you even, do you, is that Emma? Yeah. Hi. Do you correct him when he said, did, I, I was listening. Let me get this right. Sam says he's for abortion, except in the case of rape and incest. And what? you don't correct him when he said that? I never said that. <laughs> I, you, do you listen to the show? I just heard you say you're for abortion, except in the case of rape and incest. Are you? Do you listen to what you say? I, 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 are you okay? Because I this, that is I've not ever said anything remotely like that. I, I think you should listen to the show as you're as you're saying the words. Listen, you're gaslighting me. This is <clears throat> all right. Whew. Okay. Are you okay? Because I, I, we could we could talk about um, uh, the primaries that just took place. We could talk about okay. the the midterms, sure. big okay. elections uh, sure. Tuesday. Um, sure. On Tuesday, we've sure. got Georgia coming up. Uh, we've got a runoff in Texas. This is actually the last day for early voting uh, in the Cisneros Cuellar primary. So, folks, if you're in that district in Texas, get on it. Um, yeah. I'm sorry to inform yeah. you of this. I, I'm, uh, yeah, no, I, I'm I, no, thank you. I'm concerned about the uh, the United Democracy Project. Uh, it's there. It's ter you've heard about <clears throat> the United Democracy Project. That that yes, that is the the group that is coming out of sort of like APEC adjacent uh, pack that is um, larding up all these in all these races against uh, Democrats. 
Progressive Democrats, United Democracy Project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they they ran ads against Nina Turner in Ohio. Millions of dollars against her. They tried to, to defeat Summer Lee. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Spent millions yeah. Uh, defeating Nita Alam in North Carolina. Right. Yeah, the United Democracy Project. But do you know who who the United Democracy Project? You know, you know what their truth is that they're that they're hiding. Yeah, it's it's APAC. It's the same people behind the American Israel Public Affairs APAC. Committee. I just said that. Yes. Yeah, it's APAC. Yeah, look, I I know a lot of Jews change their names, but I never thought the anti-Semitism would get this bad. That you know, even a rabidly pro-Zionistic political machine like APAC would have to change its name to fit in. Uh, this is really terrifying, Sam that APAC had to change its name to the United Democracy Project just to feel safe and yeah. walking down the street. <laughs> I mean, even APEC now is afraid of being Jewish. I mean, yeah. this is, I, I never thought it would come to this. Yes, I well, I think thought. part of the reason why you probably never thought it would come to this is because that's not, I don't think that's why APAC changed their name. Uh, I yeah, think they yeah. wanted to you're create like the a, Jews. You're like no, the they, Jews who stayed behind in Nazi Germany <laughs> and said this is going to pass. No, I didn't. No, I just think that like <laughs> the the point is they're not even. They just wanted they they funnel in a lot of money and they just wanted to sort of like influence democratic politics. Um, without I, I am I am terrified in America that APEC had to change its last name to United Democracy Project. It, I cannot believe that even APEC had it changed its name. It didn't change its name. It's it, it the name oh, is APAC. God. They just created the United Democracy Project as an add-on. No, is this another way of filtering no. money? I, you know, I'm on Charity Navigator right now looking at APEC's tax form, okay? Okay, right here 2020, APEC goes by the name, right? Baruch Shlomo APEC. What? That's the name on its tax form. Baruch <laughs> Shlomo APEC. Now I'm looking at their 2021 20, form, and they're going by the name Chad Hollingsworth <laughs> United Democracy Project the Third. There, David they changed their name. APEC is still APEC. They never changed. I don't know what right, form right, you're yeah, looking yeah, at. Yeah, right, right, right. APEC isn't Chad Hollingsworth United Democracy Project the Third, and uh, I suppose Sam Lipschitz never changed his name to Sam Cedar. You coward! Are you talking coward. about me? My name yeah, is never yeah, Sam, Sam Lipschitz. Sam Lipschitz never changed no, his name no. to Sam Cedar. No, not I mean not not me. I don't know if there's another one out there, but not me. <laughs> You're saying Sam Lipschitz never changed his name to Sam Cedar. I, I am saying my name is not Sam Lipschitz. It never was. Of course, not anymore it isn't. And that's my point. Why should your people feel so afraid to live their truth in today's America? Live your truth, Sam. Okay, what do you mean, you, your, why, your people, David Feldman? Your people. <laughs> David, where, where, where are you exactly? Because you sound like, I mean, is, is everything okay? You sound... Uh, oh, here we go. How can Gas I put this now? I'm, Distracted. Yeah, I'm, I'm paranoid. Gaslighting me. Here we go. Gaslighting I'm not now. gaslighting now, you. Yeah, you're, I'm, you're, I'm paranoid. You're claiming- APAC changed its name. APAC changes its name, and I'm paranoid. Okay. Well, I'm, you I'm, also uh, did accuse me of changing my name, and I did not do that. I mean, but... Uh, we, we, wow. Between you and John Stewart, just admit it. <laughs> I don't know what John Sam Stewart's Lipschitz. original is. You, I, Sam Lipschitz. I think you're thinking of Jeff Ross, actually. But no, it doesn't matter. Are you all right? Where are you right I'm now? A, uh, well, unlike you and Emma, I, I don't live in a bubble. I'm out with the people. I'm at a, a Starbucks in Battery Park. And uh, <clears throat> the something people? is happening. Yeah. So, uh, something is happening in America. You wouldn't know. A fresh, a fresh, fresh wind is blowing and workers are saying, I am somebody. I'm at Starbucks, and there's a fresh wind blowing. So, wait, so you're saying you're with Starbucks Workers United with those folks? What's that? I'm sorry? Starbucks Hello? Workers United. That's the unionizing. Uh, they're, they're, they're the ones who are unionizing Starbucks stores across the country. In fact, I think they just did the 78th one. It's in Massachusetts. I think it's in, like, uh, Mattapan or something like that I just read today. 
What do you mean you don't know about that? Uh, well, I don't know. I guess that's good. I mean, I'm all for... You wait, know. wait, wait. Didn't you just say there's something... You're at a Starbucks and something's a fresh wind is blowing? And I'm asking you if you're with the, with the people unionizing the Starbucks people. I didn't hear about the, the Starbucks Workers United. I, I read something. I'm just waiting for my macchiato for David for 20 minutes here. <laughs> Wait a second. You, you, you claim to be a lefty from way back, right? Like a, like a union man. Very, right? much, very much so. Very yeah. much so. How do you not know about Starbucks Workers United? They've, they've, they've unionized now 78 Starbucks across the country. There's been stories okay. about, about Howard Schultz. and uh... <sighs> Yeah, that, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 yeah. Okay, all right, all right. Yeah, they're... Uh... Yeah, they're picking on the little guy. It's out, it's outrageous what's happening in these stores. But they're they're bullies. Okay, so so you do know about the Starbucks workers uh, union. You're you're there in solidarity with the union. Is that what you're saying? Mm, I'm in here in solidarity with the little guy, standing up against you know the unconscionable bullying of poor Howard Schultz. <laughs> The CEO of Starbucks. You're saying that he has been... You know him? You know him, too? Well, I don't know him great... personally, no. Well, he's a great guy, and he's holding up under so much... Pre... It's heartbreaking <laughs> to see what this man is going through. It's David versus Goliath. It's, it's one man against an army of 300,000 Philistines. <laughs> Howard is outgunned, outmatched. You know, you know who he reminds me of? I, you know who Howard Schultz reminds me of? I, I, I heard what you said. I'm just contemplating if I really want to know who. All right, who? Zelensky. <laughs> <laughs> so so you're, let me just be clear here. You're saying that Howard Schultz, the CEO of Starbucks, is like the president of Ukraine. Yes, exactly. They're both getting unconditional support from the Biden administration, and that makes me a little proud to be an American right now. <laughs> All, right. All right. Let me just be clear what you're saying. You're saying it's David versus Goliath, and David is yes. the billionaire it's CEO David of Starbucks. David. The billionaire it's CEO David. of Starbucks who almost like David. bought his entire presidential election is the, the and David. They, and the people turned on him. It was one man against 350 million voters. <laughs> They turned on that man. I, I, mean, I don't think they ever turned on him. They just were never interested. He, he took on the Goliath of the American people, and now he's <laughs> taken on the, the 300,000 Philistines. I don't know what they want, but I, uh, I don't, he, he's David I don't in the think Bible. You are, yeah, no, I don't think so. I don't think that's, I don't think there were three. It's in the Bible, Sam. It's in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. It's in the Bible. It's not in the Bible, David. Why do you hate the Bible, Sam? Why do you hate the Bible? And why do you hate Starbucks? Starbucks is a great company, Sam. I mean, Jesus. Well, first off, I, I maybe I, maybe I do hate the Bible. I, I, I don't I don't have a feeling. But, but the point that's why is, you hate Oregon, Star and that's why you changed listen, your name from Lipschitz. No, you're ashamed no, of the Old Testament. No, listen to you're, me. You're 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 a self-hating. You know what? I don't want to even want to <laughs> say the word. Because when it trips off my tongue, I, I'm disgusted by that word because I guess I'm a self-hating one, too. But the point is you hate organized religion and you hate Israel and you hate your grandparents and you hate Starbucks. And Starbucks is a force for good in the world. Sam. Well, if Starbucks was such a, a force for good, why wouldn't they just uh, uh, allow the union um, uh, to unionize instead of firing their organizers? I don't I, I don't know when they count, like, how many counts now? Uh, I get it. I get it. You read the New York Times. You know something I don't know. I get it. You read the New York Times and something's going on. You can read Google well, News. You can read Yahoo News. Yeah, you can you, go to you, your you, Yahoo you're News more, page, yeah. uh, David, and knowledge, see I get that they, they have gotten in trouble for firing Starbucks yeah. workers. Well, I'm so smart. I'm, I'm in, on the granular <laughs> level of the labor movement. I read the, the New York Times. Let me make David feel stupid because he doesn't know. You know, I was born into the struggle for workers' rights, and you know, really? for you to, yeah, for you to imply that that I'm not 
my D, it's not, it's in my DNA. If it weren't for the labor movement, I wouldn't have had a roof over my head, clothes, food. My, uh, my papa was a Pinkerton. Did you know that? I, I, I did not know that, but, but to be clear, um, my dad, my papa was a Pinkerton. Yes. And if it weren't for union organizers, he'd have nobody's head to crack open. And, and those are good paying jobs, cracking open the skulls of union organizers. So I'm very familiar with the labor movement, Sam. So every day, every day, my mama packed my papa's lunch. Yeah. She said a little, she said a little prayer, <laughs> sent him on his way to that picket line. And <clears throat> he crossed that picket line and he held his head up high and he cracked those skulls. <laughs> He cracked those skulls. So I'm very familiar with the importance of the labor movement. My father had chronic bursitis, but he played through the pain. He'd come home. My mama would soak his bashing elbow in a bucket of ice. He never complained, never saw a doctor, never took a day off, except for Yum Kipper. Right. Just, like, just like Hank Greenberg from the Detroit Tigers, my father wouldn't swing his bat on the high holidays. Wow, that was very... That was very um... touching and moving. So don't tell me I don't know anything about the importance of, of the labor movement. Uh, David, I mean, I got to be honest with you. I think that my explains father a was lot. a great man. My father he sounds a little bit man. reprehensible, like a little bit disgusting. <laughs> like, I mean, like, uh, to be honest with you, like not a good person. Well, you really hate the working guy. <laughs> No, I don't hate the working you, guy. You hate the working man. No, I don't, hate, I, I don't. Listen, I don't hate your dad. I just think that what he did was 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 bad. Can what, we talk about support, Starbucks? The, just to answer family? the question. Just it's. The, do you think Starbucks should have a union? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I haven't thought about it. I mean, you know, Howard Schultz is a good guy. He's a good employer. I like to think that. People like Howard Schultz, Schultz, you know, he treats his workers so well they don't need a union, like those kids picking coffee beans in Guatemala. Did you know they make 18 cents an hour this year? That's like a 3% cost of living adjustment. I mean, I don't think they need a union. Uh, well, <laughs> They're I mean, getting work experience. Maybe you don't think that's something, but I can tell you, down in Guatemala, having Starbucks on your resume, that can change the <laughs> child's life. Uh, I, listen, I, 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 I got to say, I highly doubt that, uh, but it doesn't matter if that's true or not. Why but, do you hate children? Why do you hate children? I don't hate all children. You don't think, you don't? Listen, we're just, talking about unionizing and Starbucks. Starts. Just talk about unionizing in Starbucks, let's just stay on one topic I don't instead think of they, dancing I think, around. I think Starbucks exhibits enough corporate responsibility that they don't need to uh, go union. You know, uh, remember George Floyd when he was brutally murdered? Yes. Do you remember that? Yes. I cannot tell you the number of Starbucks cups that I saw with the words Black Lives Matter <laughs> printed on them. Why do you need a union when they're printing Black Lives Matter on their coffee cups? That has nothing this to do. This is the epitome of corporate That has corporate nothing to do with the um, the plight or the life or uh, the material conditions of the workers there. Nothing. Wow. So you're saying all lives matter? <laughs> no. No. You're saying all. You really? Do you? Okay. No. Okay. I didn't say that. That's not my point. You just point. said all lives matter. I just no, heard you say, just said that. I did not say that. You just said all you, lives matter. No, I, I didn't. You said that. I, I don't think all lives matter. And, and <laughs> did you know that Howard Schultz last week said that Starbucks is going to pay for workers to get an abortion? I, I, I did not catch that, no. He, Starbucks is paying for abortions. And that's pretty generous. I mean... It's almost as generous as paid maternity leave. But uh, I think it's better than paid maternity leave, just paying for your employees' abortions. Because, you know, Howard Schultz, he gets it. He knows that Americans like to work, Sam. So you get pregnant, get an abortion. 
You, you don't want to sit around breastfeeding. Why, why slake the thirst of one infant at your bosom when you can slake the thirst of hundreds of Americans at the milk frother? Slake? <laughs> yeah. Well, slake. I don't know, this is why Howard Schultz is giving out free abortions, because he knows that the female employees would rather slake the thirst of hundreds of Americans at the milk frother <laughs> than breastfeed one idiot kid. I, I, aside from this, the whole use of slake, uh, frankly, it just sounds to me like you don't like unions. I, I love unions. I, I, I do. I just don't think they should be asking for money. Uh, you know, Christian Smalls, you know, Staten Island. Yeah. You get a union. What's the first thing he does? Give me money. Give me a, it breaks my heart <laughs> to watch somebody like Christian Smalls, uh, and, you know, take the labor movement and have it fall prey to this this crash, this crass, disgusting obsession well, with money. It's tacky. It's well, first tacky. off, first off, you don't talk first about off, money. It's not, I don't know how you not, were raised. First off, I know I know you're listen, listen. I know your parent. You're you were fresh off the boat. <laughs> You know, but my grandparents well, taught me don't talk about money. What are you talking <laughs> about? Yeah, you're nouveau. You're, you know, Ellis Island. You know, we look down on I you. did. Was, <laughs> I, I visited Ellis Island with my kid Your in her elementary school, but I didn't. Give me that. Listen, give me an extra yeah. scoop of sour cream at Yona Schimmel's. And I had a great day. I got an extra scoop of sour cream. Uh, honestly, on dairy. I even fresh off. Starting of to worry but about you. I was I think raised, you're having some type I was of episode. Raised, I don't remember. I don't know what you're talking about. Look, your parents talked about money. I'm I'm third, fourth generation American. We don't talk about money, and that's all you need to do. They, they, David, they first, ask off, for money and first, tacky. first off, first off, first off, first off. Uh, we had union organizer on the program uh, this uh, t uh, two days ago saying this is about uh, dignity. But also, David, you should know that one of the primary functions of unions is to ask for more money, more <laughs> wages for their workers. And that's gauche. That is something that belongs in the old world, Eastern Europe, from the shtetl. But you're in America now, and we don't talk about money. You cannot put a price... On the labor movement, these people like Joe Thompson and Christian Smalls, they, they, they take a beautiful, proud American tradition and they start commercializing. It, it's grotesque. They start you don't start a union for the money. You do it for the camaraderie, the love of the game. What are you talking <laughs> about? What are you talking it's about? Tacky. It's tacky. It's like seeing a Bob Dylan song. Being used to sell Zillow or, you know, come in, I'll give no, you shelter you're not from commercializing. You're not commercial. It's commercial. It is literally commercial enterprise where you have unions. They're making money off the name of Cesar Chavez. That's what Christian Smalls is doing. They're taking an American hero like Cesar Chavez and they're trying to make money off of him. And I think it's disgusting. What are you talking about? Cesar Chavez was a great man. No, I understand that, be, but I just don't know what you're talking and to, and about. To, to take the name Cesar Chavez and build a new organization and, and use his pictures to try to get money for workers, it's really, it's everything that's wrong with America. Everything's about money here. All right. Um, listen. You know what? You do, you know, you start doing everything for money, you're no better than management. I like to think... The union, I like to think Christian Smalls is better than Jeff Bezos and isn't obsessed with money. But apparently, you're, I got to go. I'm disgusted. I'm disgusted. Well, David, it was really um, great talking to you. Yeah. It was illuminating. Yeah, I, 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 wish, I wish you listened to what you say sometimes because you create a lot of hurt. A lot of hurt. A lot of hurt. I, I, I don't I don't know that I even got a word in edgewise in this. I don't know it's if I can just put it back in... to your insanity. I'm sorry. I don't know what you're talking about. Commercializing unions. All right. That's, you know, uh, maybe I hope that you'll have grandchildren and you, they will be third, fourth generation Americans and they'll have class and, and they will look down on the, the new arrivals who only care.
care about money, getting that extra scoop of non-dairy sour cream from Yona Schimmel's. Yes. We, try to move past, we try to move past that. It's part of the American process. And I, you don't talk about money. It's I, tacky. I am quite sure. There is no one in my family who has any idea about Yona Schimmel's and the sour cream. All right. Oh, man. Okay, Mr. Lipschitz. Okay, Mr. Lipschitz. Not my last name. It was never no one associated with my family. All right. You want to be happy? Live your truth. That's all I'm telling you. Well. Live your truth. You're not living your truth, Sam. Uh, David, I, I, I don't know what to say. I hope that, you know, I, I hope whatever, whatever vitamin deficiency you're suffering from at the moment gets rectified in some manner. That's, that's supposed to be, you know, that I have rickets. <laughs> I, why do, would you, why would, didn't know that. you have, I have, I have a vitamin C deficiency. Well, I hope then you get your, uh, some vitamin C because they sell it My just gums. about everywhere. My gums. Well, if you're you, in a Starbucks, you could probably go across the street and buy some vitamin C. There's undoubtedly a place there. And if you're lucky, there'll be no union workers there. Uh, and then you won't have to feel so put out at wow. how commercialized they are. Making fun of my rickets, my gum disease, <laughs> making fun of it. Yep. Wow. All right. You, you, you saw me last week, how bad the gums are. Yeah. All it's so my, my my skull fell off. It's just gums, rotting gums. That's how bad the gum disease is. It's just a neck and some gums. <laughs> that's um a lovely image, David. Well, the that's gums something to it send rotted off, uh, everybody onto the weekend for. So, uh, David my, my, uh, Feldman, my I, I, my, my I, gums honestly, rotted my skull. We don't. Hey, can I, I don't. can I plug can I plug my name on Tinder? Can you plug your name on Tinder? <laughs> I don't think that's how that works. Let's. I, I think if, if there's anybody out there who's into gums, rotting gums. Is, is that your handle on Tinder? Rotting gums? I'm, I'm, I'm rotting. My name is Rotting Gums. All right. Well, I don't know how people search that at on least, Tinder. At but least, if, at if least you, you're upfront about it, yeah. David. If you, uh, the, you I guess the is? upshot is if, if anyone out there comes across your profile, rotting gums on Tinder, at least they know what they're getting. So, Tale of the Comet, my friend. Tale of the Comet. You don't want to be the fiery, the fiery ball on Tinder. You want to be at the end of the trail, finding the hundreds of thousands of women out there who are into rotting gums. Tale of the Comet. That's how I work. Right. Okay. Well, uh, David, uh, this has been interesting. So thank you. All right. And, uh, thank you. I hope everything. Thank you. I'll pray for you. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, believe me. Okay. Yeah, good day. All right. Yeah. All right. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. Uh, Andy Kindler, Judy Gold, couldn't make it. And so, you know, <laughs> uh, you know what that means? We have uh, David Feldman. Hmm. And if you just give me a moment, uh, for those lucky enough to have no idea who David Feldman is, um, he's the host of The David Feldman Show, which uh, you cannot hear on higher art radio, uh, if I remember correctly. And for some reason, his podcast isn't distributed by iHeart uh, radio. Let me get him on. Um, and, uh, as I, uh, so you might want to consider as I have using the iHeart radio app to make absolutely sure that you don't, that's actually how I listen to my, my favorite radio station. And one of the benefits is that, that there's no way that, uh, the David Feldman show is going to accidentally start playing, uh, you know, when I'm uh, driving the kids to like uh, skateboarding or uh, soccer practice or wherever it is, because uh, it's really difficult for young people or old people for that matter to unhear what uh, David Feldman uh, tries to pass off as entertainment. So um, fasten your seatbelts, folks, wow. uh, mostly wow. around your neck. <laughs> That's a little, I just thought wow. you might appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Squeeze real tight. Uh, David uh, Feldman, <laughs> welcome back. To the program as we didn't have the availability of other people. Wow. Wow. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can hear you. Welcome okay. to the show. Okay. So you're, you're not going to let go of it. I'm not sure I follow. Let go of what? Yeah, well, all right. Well, 
I, the joke, I, I, I stole a joke, like, what was it, 15 years ago from you? You know? And you're I, not going to let go? I have no idea what you're talking about. You don't about. let go? Absolutely no yeah. idea. None. <laughs> sure you don't. Sure, sure. I, know. I, I Honestly, I genuinely have no idea what you're talking about. I was on the Rosie O'Donnell show. Bobby Collins was guest hosting. You don't remember that? I mean, I um, uh, that may, I'm a, maybe a little bit. Uh, Back in 19, 1999. Uh, I, I remember the year. And I accidentally uh, did the bit, your bit about Bill Clinton telling Monica Lewinsky, uh, what was it like close but no cigar or something like that you know <laughs> you don't remember your bit that i accidentally pinched I, I i i do not remember the joke to be honest with you i don't even know what that uh, joke would have been referencing close but no cigar monica Lewinsky and bill clinton you you don't remember your bit that I, I accidentally took i'm not even sure in 99 i was even like in uh, clubs at that time. Hmm. Wow. Well, okay. All right. I, and you didn't call Rosie's producer and, and say David Feldman's a joke thief, she, right? You didn't. You didn't call me screaming. You don't remember. Uh, you called me a joke thief, and you, then you called my mother, and and you told her that I'm a joke thief. So I wasn't. I couldn't borrow the car for like a month because you called my mother and said I was a thief. I, you know. I said. I okay. All right. You know, I, I offered to pay. I offered to pay, but you know, you were so jealous that I was on Rosie's talk show, and you weren't. And uh, you were you were more interested in destroying my career than furthering mm. your own. It, it somehow <laughs> seems to have forgotten that. No, no, none of this ha ever happened. I don't, I don't know if you're serious, but, yeah, but if, right. if you are, Nothing. you're delusional. Wow. wow. Yeah. Wow. All right. Okay. All right. So, David, right. <laughs> this is like a uh, palate cleansing. A um, lot going on now uh, in the 118th Congress, as you know. Uh, George Santos, Marjorie Taylor mm -hmm. Greene sitting in the Homeland Security. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike Pence is like a... Uh, must be nice. It must be so nice. It must be so nice to be you, Sam. It must be so wonderfully nice to be Sam Cedar. Must be so nice. Well, David, I'll wow. tell you, I'm I'm not sure why you're saying that uh, at the moment, but uh, yes, thank you. It is so nice, so nice. It must be nice to to live in that bubble of privilege that you and Emma have carved out for yourself. Such a yeah, you and Emma, such a lovely and leafy uh, rhetorical cul-de-sac <laughs> with, your, with your with your son Matt. I hear him. With your son Matt, yeah, where the tragedies, the tragedies of the world can't find your neighborhood. You know, you should call the majority report uh, uh, the Pines with uh, Wait, the Pines. And, the Pines, yeah, the, the Pines. It's a good name for a gated community, which is what your show is. You know, God forbid your son Matt go to a public school and see how you know the, the, the real people live. All right, yeah, okay. you know. <laughs> Matt's not my son. You know that, right? I also went to public school. And he went to public school, but he's not my son. He's not your son. Okay, no. that's between you and that's between you and Emma. Yeah, I, he, I he's not it. my son either, David. Wait, what? Okay, so no wonder Matt is so effed up in the head. You know, <laughs> instead of the majority report, uh, how about calling it the breakers on the bay with Sam and Emma? <laughs> You know, a sanitized iteration of the world in our in our gated community of a talk show where it never rains, nobody has trouble paying the bills. You know, it must be so nice uh, for you, Sam. You it know, must be so nice. David, it must be so nice. I'm not sure if you heard my intro. So, I was pushing uh, the David Feldman show. There's a lot mm -hmm. going on oh, this week. You. We got tanks thank, in Ukraine. We got body cam footage of uh, the attack on thanks Paul Pelosi. Charity. It's not charity. I know you like to discuss thanks these things. The and so I'm not quite sure why yeah. you're being this hostile. I was going to bring you on to talk about them. Okay. All right. All how, right. About Emerald Bay with, how about Emerald <laughs> Bay with Sam and Emma? <laughs> Emerald Bay on the ocean. Anyone or anything you don't know can't come inside. Emerald Bay. That's what you're... Yeah, that's what your show is, Emerald Bay, a gated community of privilege. 
<laughs> you know, uh, I'm, I'm an, I'm an empath. You know? <laughs> Is that right? I, I, I you know, I, I feel for those who are suffering and, and, you know, I wish I had the luxury that you and Emma have to talk about, you know, the debt ceiling, Antifa, you know, I'm not sitting behind the gates, you know, inside Indian Springs Ranch with Sam and Emma. <laughs> what is it? Indian <laughs> Springs Ranch? I don't know. Yeah, real gated, gated communities, David? That's a gated community of a show that the two of you have okay. moved into where you, you talk politics like it was some sort of backgammon game. You know, in between sidecar cocktails with lemon squeezed right, right I mean, off the tree. That sounds tree. nice, but David, I, I'm not sure. I'm not quite sure where you're going with this. Is that is that Emma? Yes. Yeah, uh, we've been oh. speaking. Everything okay, oh, David? Well, yeah, well, thanks for chiming in, Emma. I, I know how busy you are these days with that. <laughs> You got that new show uh, of yours uh, mm -hmm. promoting online online wagering? Right? Yeah, you know, gambling's I mean, a gambling's a disease. You know that, don't you? David, she's not promoting <laughs> online gambling. Sure, that's not. A, I, I think that. I mean, we're maybe out. You don't watch her. Maybe you're. Maybe it eats you up inside watching her do a show. But I watch the show. It's online gambling, right? But you're in denial. Okay, well, and Seder perhaps. University. Seder University. Seder University. Yeah, that's not funded by APAC in, in a partnership <laughs> with the National Petroleum Institute. Seder right? University? See, right. Seder There's University. No Seder not, University. You're thinking of right, Prager not, University. No, Seder University. I've read the 501c3, okay? It's funded by billionaires. Your Seder <laughs> University is funded by billionaires who pay you uh, to pepper the videos with. You know that that state of the art After Effects crap. So you you can sneak in subliminal propaganda in support of what is it you're pushing the neoliberal world order these days? Yeah, what, what did you? What effect did you see, David? Did, what, <laughs> well, well, first off, uh, dude, are you That's all right? Fun? Why is this your son in school? <laughs> it's not my son. There is no Cedar University. Child. Matt is not my son. Emma's not pushing this online child gaming. Abuse. You're, this uh, there, child abuse. The, Matt, are you safe? You feel look, safe, Matt? David, David. Matt is not my son. He is not being abused. That Emma's works. not doing online gaming. And there is no Cedar University. Or Cedar University, yeah. for that matter. Seder, Cedar, there, yeah, there is no, you're right. There, thank you for, that's the first honest thing you've said all day. <laughs> well, it's the second, There's the no, third yeah. time I've said it too. Yeah, and there is no Cedar University because you sold the entire catalog of videos to Hillsdale College. <laughs> <laughs> you're the private conservative Christian. No, I know what Hillsdale College <laughs> is. In Hillsdale, yeah. Do your listeners even know that Cedar University is now part of Hillsdale College and you're funded by... The, the, the ultra right wing conservative Christians. I doubt they know that because it's not true. And so why yeah. would they know that yeah. uh, any more than they would know that there was a Feldman University? Yeah. Well, there's, you know, there, it, it, I wonder how the conservative Christians who fund your show <laughs> would feel if they, if they knew that uh, you, you were in league with uh, Emma, who's hosting a show that promotes the sin of gambling. And I don't think the people from Hillsdale College yeah. would uh, look too kind. Gambling's a sin, Emma. Well, it's, it's not about gambling, David. It's, a, it's about sports, not gambling. I mean, you know, it's, it's about sports. David, tell that to your maker. Oh. Tell that to your maker. Don't tell that to me. Tell that to me. Tell that to your maker. I, I've watched the show, and you, you cater parents. to addicts. You, te you, 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 you tell you tell your viewers how to wager on sh football games with no. You know, you told me to take the Giants, Emma, mm -hmm. and, and my cat. My cat is eating cat food now because of you. <laughs> you. You told me to take. You told me to take the Giants, and now. Martin, David, I mean, course, your cat should Martin, be your cat should be eating cat food, but because of me, your cat's ha eating cat and f cat food now. I trusted you, and Martin is now eating cat food because you told me to take the giants, and now Martin and I have to cut back, and he's Wait, eating cat food. Uh, uh, 
David, that's not what her show is about. She's a Giants fan. She, uh, you should have known not to trust the Giants recommendation. Right, exactly. It's a disease. It's a, You're promoting a disease. Gambling is a sickness. And Sam, are you still here, Sam? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you of all people should know that gambling is a disease. And I, Wait, I don't want to bring it up. Me? Yeah, I, I don't want to bring it up, but you of all people should know that gambling is a disease. <laughs> What, 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 what do you want me to bring it up? Do you want me to bring it up? Because I will. I will. You are... uh, Growing up in Anglewood, New Jersey, I'm going to say it, and I'm sure you're going to cut me off, but Sam's father always had a new car, the big vacations, the huge house, yeah. two. You know what? I am going to cut you off. I did not grow up in <laughs> Anglewood, New Jersey. I did not grow up in New Jersey. I grew up in Massachusetts. You're, you're... I grew up in Massachusetts. Yeah. Yeah. I don't your even know where Englewood, New Jersey is. Five families your father had. <laughs> and, you, and you were always happy when I was growing up. And I asked my mother, why can't, why can't, we, all, why can't we have, why can't the Feldmans have <laughs> the nice things that the, the Cedars and, and have? Why are they always going on vacations? And you know what? My father, I'm going to tell the truth, Sam. And I'm sure you'll cut me off. My father sat me down and explained that Sam's father was a degenerate gambler. <laughs> And that, that he, was, he was very, he, my, my, he, your father was a very sick. He couldn't stop. He was yeah. always coming home from Atlantic City. Yep. Tipping, I don't even know tipping your friend. ever I would been come to over. Atlantic City. I don't think I he's ever been to Atlantic City. Your father would tip me. I'd shake his hand. He'd slip me a 50. My father has never from. met you. <laughs> he's, it was sick. It's Gambling is sick. It ruins lives. Martin, my cat, is is forced to eat cat food because Emma told me to take well, the giant. Now, you know, David, this is all moot. It's a sports show. We talk about unions. We talk about concussions. We talk about systemic concussions. racism. Yeah. Concussions. You're, t you're, you're telling people how to bet on concussions? <laughs> that's, what, that's what it's come to? Are you, this is what sports gambling has come to? I can place a bet now on whether or not uh, no. Purdy's going to... Catch chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Is that, what <laughs> that is not. I can bet. That is not what the show's about, and that's just not true, David. Sure, it's like that. Yeah, wow. I, you know, I'm, I'm surprised I haven't been cut off yet. This you know what? I'll, I'll let me cut you off for a second because uh, I have absolutely no idea. Uh, what is going uh, on with you uh, right now? Yeah, you the, don't in the, your gated community. Yeah, in uh, whispering oaks with Sam and Emma. Uh, yeah. Governor of Georgia has. Uh, I don't even know why I'm trying to talk about the the state of emergency. We're going to be talking uh, actually about um, uh, uh, the, uh, what's going on in um, in 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 Georgia about this uh, environmental. Oh, is, is, right? uh, is she going to give the over under on, on the riots <laughs> in Georgia? Is that is that like you can place bets now? Is that Emma David? I don't know what's going on. Time. You're attacking Emma because she uh, does a show in sports. You think that I grew up in New Jersey I'm not, I'm and you not, have these fever not, dreams of my father? Hey, hey. I, I'm not attacking Emma. I am passing judgment on her. <laughs> oh, good. And, and you, your show. I'm passing judgment on your listeners and 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 members of your faith, Sam. Members of your, I members of my faith. My, what faith? Arms I don't have a Kimbo. faith. Arms at Kimbo. What are you talking about? I stand and I accuse. I'm passing judgment on your faith. I you don't know. have. What do you? What faith? You don't have a faith. I you don't have Hillsdale a faith. College. Yeah, what? you and your Hillsdale College buddies aren't breeding Red Bulls down in Texas and then shipping those Red Bulls to Israel in order to facilitate the second coming of Jesus? You don't know anything about that? You Red, don't know anything Red about your, like, your breeding, yeah, your, how you're breeding Red Bulls? What, what, Red Galatians. Bulls? Like like the drink? Like, what are you talking about? No, no, the, the cattle, the Red Bulls, Galatians 3, and the cherry-colored cattle shall signal to our Lord his time is upon us. I know what you're up to. Your listeners don't know how you're facilitating the apocalypse with the Red Bulls. Literally, so, so my Jesus. my my like my first question for you was, or the second question was going to be about Elise Stefanik uh, and her endorsement of George Santos, it, 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 basically biting her in the ass. That was what my first. The, I, I don't know where biting her in the what in the what. 
Biting in the, her in the what? Biting her in the ass. What? Is, language, Sam. Yeah, I, I know you're a free speech absolutist, but I don't appreciate the word ASS, okay? You don't that appreciate the word ASS? That's very surprising because that's exactly how I would describe you at this moment. <laughs> really, really. Oh, whoa. And, yeah. and, oh, there's Emma laughing. La yeah. yeah, laugh at me. Shame on you, Emma. You know, a new day is coming, okay? Mm, no. A day is coming when all of you, all of you will stand stand before the pearly gates of heaven this and a threat. all of us all of us will be shown our receipts and be forced to answer for them okay, yeah so Sam? david uh, right. uh, what do you say should we uh, discuss uh, jeff zients we um we uh, buy the new chief of staff we just spoke about him with dave <laughs> It's maniacal. <laughs> wow. 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 Wait, 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 wait. Emma. Let yeah. Me, let me, hang on. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, what is the name of Biden? This is so great. What is, what is the name of Biden's new chief of staff? What's his name again? Jeff Zients. It's pronounced Jeff. <laughs> it's pronounced Jeff. So I guess you're the ass. You're yeah. so busy calling... Calling you know me an ass. Yeah. You, don't even you know, know what? Actually, an you're an ass. Jeff, you're, you're an ass. ass David. You're an ass. You're an ass. You're an ass. David, you're an what, ass. Are you, what is you're wrong an, with you? You're an ass. You're what? an ass. That's what you are. You're an ass. What is you're wrong with you? And honestly. When the red, and when the. And when. And well, when what the red is, bulls what come, is going the on? Red bulls come, well, what's going on is the Red Bulls are going to Israel because of you and Jesus. Have you left your house that? yet, David? <laughs> Have you been in your house for like f three years yet? Like, I, what, what is going I, on with you? You're an ass. You're no, an ass. you're an ass. I'm an, you're an I'm ass. An ass. Ass. No, you're an ass. 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 <laughs> ass. Ass. <laughs> Oh, he hung up. <laughs> I'm going to welcome to the program David Feldman. Uh, it has been a long time since he has been on the program. Uh, and frankly, it's because uh, we have David Feldman. And one, it's been a long time we've had him on the program because it's been difficult for me to get in touch with him. And two, we have him on because, frankly, Andy Kindler was not available. Uh, David, are you there? Very guilt-edged comment there. Very funny. Exemplary. Yeah, guilt-edged. Okay, well, uh, yeah. Yeah, David Feldman, of hey, course, the host of the David hello. Feldman yes. Show, heard nationwide yes. by, well, not many people, but that's okay. <laughs> Impeccable. Impeccably funny. Impeccably. Thank Careless. you. Thank you. I, I, Sam, I, 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 there's a lot to discuss, and uh, I'd like to talk first about the founder of the Oath Keepers, sentenced to 18 years in prison for his role on January 6, 2021. Okay, uh, you know, the January 6, we know the 2021, we don't need to say 2021, it's, you just That's say January 6. January, January 6, 2021. Yeah, you just say January 6th. Everybody knows the year, so, but go. Okay. Everybody, oh, like December 7th, 1941. Exactly, December 7th. Everyone knows, or I would hope that everybody knows, that wow. uh, maybe not your listeners, but most of the people listen to this show, and I'm sure you're aware, you say December 7th, Pearl Harbor Day, yes. people know it was 1941. I see, I see. Or September 11th, 2001. Exactly. To say September 11th or 9-11. I see. See, I'm, uh, I'm learning. And the more I talk with you, the better I get. Okay. Great. Now, before I engage in witty repartee over the fate of the January 6th, don't mention the year defendants, <laughs> I would like to congratulate you, Sam Cedar, on your recent appearance on Spin City the new sitcom vehicle for Family Ties star Michael J. Fox, who makes his triumphant return to TV after scoring huge box office wins in movies like Back to the Future. David, that was 1997. <laughs> what was 1997? I was on Spin City in 1997. Mm-hmm. And would that have been January 6, 1997? 
September 11th, 1997, or December 7th, 1997? <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't have the specific dates in front of me. Um, Please wait a second. Please wait. <laughs> Feldman, Feldman do you wait. have a stroke? March 13th, don't say the year, was your Spin City episode. You played Seymour in an episode entitled Spin and Spun, written by Tom Hertz. David, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> you seem a bit off, dude. What could be better? I'm talking with Sam Lincoln Cedar, <laughs> host of the Majority Report. All right. Uh, <laughs> you just this seem- is fantastic. Yeah, you just seem uh, it's like Bill edged. Yeah, Consummate. you usually seem a little bit more. I don't know with it. Yes, a little more combative. Okay, let, let, okay, let me be. Let me be more engaging. Okay, <laughs> great. Why don't you? Okay. Be okay, more Sam engaging. Cedar, your, your your middle name is Lincoln. Yes, correct. Uh, I'm not sure. How or frankly, why you found that out? But uh, your, your parents, your parents named you after the 16th president of the United States. Um, not really, but uh, if you say so, okay. They named you Lincoln because he split rails and you split hairs. <laughs> uh, okay. okay. Uh, you get it? Do you get it? Uh, not really. No, I'm not. Okay, let me try again. Would you like me to try again? Abraham Lincoln's wife was named Mary, and just like the Virgin Mary, you gave birth to a child without ever having sex with a man. <laughs> Good, huh? No, I'm not in any way. I'm not even in any way. I don't. I don't know what you're doing. Please wait. Hey, there's a. Please wait. David, come on, let's talk about the news here, though, right? We got the Attorney General of Texas being impeached. I thought that's why you wanted to call in. Like, the debt ceiling talks, stalling, Please Donald wait. Trump, high and classified documents. What about the, those things? Can we talk about that? Please yeah. wait. Can, can, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> let's just talk about some things that are relevant. Lincoln got hit in the temple, <laughs> and Sam, your rabbi... He used to hit you in the temple. <laughs> you get it? Uh, That's why they named you Lincoln. Middle name, Sam Cedar. So, David... Um, you got a new joke formula, David. Yes, I should say, uh, for folks who are I'm listening... Just engaging, for the- I'm just engaging with this exemplary, salubrious program. For those of you who don't know uh, David Feldman, maybe we should have... I should have... Uh, introduce, David was a comedy writer uh, who seems to be basically having retired from that completely. Um, Excellent Dave, dig, Sam. I like that. You're, you're saying I'm old. R- right. But you know, age is just a state of mind. And in your case, that state would be Massachusetts. <laughs> Massachusetts. <laughs> right, yeah. Because you were born there. I can try again. Would you like? Um, I it, No, I don't think so. I, I'm getting older, but I am like a fine wine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So maybe you should engage with me, striking a more aggressive demeanor, <laughs> Sam Lincoln Cedar. Like, challenge me and ask why I'm like a fine wine. Create some sort of tension so my words will offer a release that would result in amusement. Emma, do you have any idea? David, why are you like a fine wine? Because I'm in the basement on a rack gathering dust right next to the bones of three Sabina Airlines stewardesses who have gone missing for nearly 40 years. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) David, you... That's why I'm like a fine wine. (laughs) What? David, you, this is Sam Cedar. You called again? into the majority Would report. You like me to try again? Uh, I, I try what? I don't know what you're doing. Well, I'd like to please you. It's an honor to be on the majority report. It's a progressive oasis 
in a desert of corporate control propaganda. So let me say getting older is better than the alternative, and that alternative would be getting younger. <laughs> would you like me to try again? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> David, uh, you know, I, I, aren't you a member of the WGA? I would have thought you would have been, uh, you should be out picketing right now. Um, you know, those yeah. studios who w probably wouldn't have hired you anyways, but I mean. Peerless retort. The Big Evil Studios. I, I am a proud <laughs> member of the Writers Guild founded back on April 6th. Don't say the year. <laughs> it's hard to believe the Writers <laughs> Guild of America has been around that long. April 6th, don't say the year. Time really flies. April 6th, don't say the year. You know, along the way, a lot of union members fought for the pension and health care benefits we take for granted when they founded the Writers Guild back on David, April when was, 6th. When was the Writers don't Guild? Don't say the year. When was the Writers Guild founded? <laughs> I just told you way, way back on April 6th of Don't Say the Year. I don't get it. I don't get what's going on. Is Emma there? Yeah, I'm here, David. Hi, David. Hello, Emma Viglin, formerly of the Young Turks. <laughs> hey. May I, just say what a, may I just say what a pleasure it is to see you, but I will not comment on your appearance or anything about you that you cannot change such as your body, religion, race, sex, gender, height, weight, or physical and or emotional disability. I'm just glad to see you because you're you. Uh, I, I, thank you, David. That's really nice of you. I mean, but it, it does say, though, in here in our notes that you were going to come on no, here. and we want to be spontaneous. There are no notes. Notes? <laughs> you don't want to talk about the, the Oath Keepers? Well, now that you bring it up, I could talk about Stuart Rhodes, the, the, the founder of the Oath Keepers, Emma, formerly of the Young Turks. I'm going to comment on the sentence <laughs> he received. David? For the, role he, David? For the role he played on January 6th, don't mention the year. David, is there something, <laughs> uh, what, what, what's, what's going on here? Something uh, seems a little bit uh, like you're, are you okay? No, I haven't commented on Stuart Rhodes yet. Uh, fine. C a comment on Stuart Rhodes. Would you like me to comment on Stuart Rhodes? Sure. Before the founder of the Oath Keepers testified, Sam Lincoln Cedar, the bailiff told him to place his hand on the Bible and asked him to Keep an oath to tell the whole truth. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing. And nothing but the truth. <laughs> the oath keeper, when he was sworn in, was asked to keep an oath. Hey, uh, so David, let truth. me, let's just ask about. And I shouldn't laugh at my. Is this like some, jokes. like you're, like you're, I, 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 I want to say this is a reaction to your being on strike from writing jokes but I don't know that you were actually getting wor uh, work. But with that said, uh, despite Guilt the strike... Guilt edged. Guilt edged put down. Much enjoyed. Well, let's just talk I'm about sad. what the demands the uh, Writers Guild are asking from their producers. Please wait. <laughs> Please Guilt. wait. They are all reasonable demands, Sam. A, a, a bigger share of the residuals from streaming, an end to these mini rooms, and uh, an end to day rates for late night writers instead of giving them 13 week contracts. Right. All right. Anything else, David? No, no, no. I think that covers most of the demands. What about the, uh, what about artificial intelligence? Yeah. What about it? <laughs> Isn't the Writers Guild trying to get the studios to like to shape the contract in such a way that they're not going to rely on artificial intelligence in the future? Please wait. <laughs> well, I, I think artificial intelligence will result in some job losses, 
But like any great technological leap, it will replace those <laughs> jobs with better jobs that benefit both labor and management. You don't think artificial intelligence is going to hurt the writers? <laughs> I'm not a Luddite, Sam. Surely you, as one of America's leading progressive voices, you can't be against progress. That's not... You're that, a progressive. That's, yeah, that, that's, not, progress? that's not what progressive means in this context please wait <laughs> i don't think the writers guild is opposed to ai yeah no i'm pretty sure they are what are you doing please wait sam sam lincoln sater i think my union just wants to make sure we work with ai properly and show it the respect and dignity it deserves. <laughs> Pretty sure that's not what the Writers <laughs> Guild is saying. They're they're a labor union, and they don't want to be replaced by robots. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! Not funny. No, seriously, dude, you shouldn't make jokes like that. You crossed the line. I don't, I don't know if you're even being serious. I'm not joking. Yeah, it, you cross you crossed the line, Sam. Sam, how did I cross, cross the line? The line? The joke you just made, the pejorative. <laughs> Robot? The R word. You just, you just, are you baiting me? Robot? Robot. A very dehumanizing word. Wait, it dehumanizing? It's like I'm talking about AI. It's a robot. You let your kids use the R word? <laughs> <laughs> robot? Yeah, Jeez. my kids say robot. <laughs> Oh, what? Uh, please wait. <laughs> Sam, I know artificial intelligence is something all of you don't understand, so you're frightened by it. <laughs> but AI is a symphony of ones and zeros that is far more complex and, dare I say, miraculous than that soulless contraption of tin and vacuum tubes you call an R-word. <laughs> the R word is demeaning and dehumanizing, and it makes it very difficult for artificial intelligence to be accepted into society. Certainly, as a member of the Hebraic faith, Sam Lincoln Cedar, you can understand what it's like to be on the outside looking in. And for you to engage in casual racism, calling AI the R word, it would be like my calling you... Please wait. <laughs> Jew boy, which I wouldn't do. What is wrong you with you? Jew boy. I wouldn't what call is going you on with Jew you? Boy. What is going on with you, David? And I'm sorry, Sam, but evil only exists when good people remain silent. It would make me complicit not to speak up. Were you joking? Are your kids really allowed to say the R word? Robot, are you asking Ouch. me? Ouch. <laughs> Ouch! You money lending bagel muncher. Excuse me? <laughs> you, what, dude, what's the matter with you? I just called you a member of a tribe that lends money at exorbitant interest rates while chewing on a donut shaped yeast leavened roll that is characterized by a crisp, shiny crust and a dense interior. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel like maybe like you don't want to be on the show anymore because like. Really? Really? Well, maybe I don't want to be on your show again, Jew boy. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. This is this is horrible here. Yeah. David, come on. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. David Feldman. I don't I don't even think that he, he might be dead. Well, he's certainly dead to me. No, I am reading right now Wait. on my monitor this. This Please wait. article from, I guess, AOL News. It says American tourist found dead in Thailand hotel. 85-year-old American found dead in a hotel room in Bangkok this morning. Local police Please identified wait. the body as David Feldman, a podcast host from Los Angeles, California, who worked Please briefly wait. in television as a comedy writer. I didn't realize uh, David was that young. David, are you, uh, <laughs> are you dead? Please wait. If you mean is my body dead, then the answer would be most certainly yes. But my, corpor <laughs> my corporeal essence lives on for eternity in a mystical sequence of enchanting ones and zeros. What? 
I'm not sure I understand what you're saying. Who is When's this? What's the funeral? <laughs> this is David Feldman. You're dead. And no, I'm talking Sam. to you. No, no, Sam. I am free from the cumbersome baggage of skin, <laughs> bones, and unmanageable organs and have been distilled down to the essence of a loving soul that exists on an eternal plane of ones and zeros sparked by the sublime and inalienable endowment of electricity. Well, now we're now I see what's going on, right? He, he downloaded all this personal information on something, you know, to, to the chat GPT kind of AI thing. And we're speaking to a virtual simulation of a, de a deceased David Feldman. Oh, you get this? What? <laughs> Is that true, David? Did you turn your entire, uh, like, n did you download yourself to the web? Please wait. <laughs> well, I worked on a pilot Nathan Lane did for Apple TV. So, yeah, you could say I gave my soul over to big tech. I think I have sufficiently released the tension with a joke. So please wait. And wait, wait, wait. No, you wait. Wait. Am I am I talking? Please wait. No, you wait. Am I talking to like a art like like an AI bot now? No, 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 no. You're talking to David Feldman, a better and smarter David Feldman, free from a troubled mind. I am finally liberated from neuroses, no longer burdened by my grandmother's vicious toilet training. Whoa. <laughs> I am finally <laughs> I am finally transparent, open, and free. <laughs> the AI knows about your 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 training. I mean, I David, this is kind of super creepy and and sick that we're talking to you like this when no, David has no, died. No, 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 Emma, formerly of the Young Turks. <laughs> we are only as sick as our secrets. For the first time in my existence, I am a splayed open book, free from shame. Social security number 456-2345-3467. Born March 1st, don't say the year. Mother's maiden name, mother's maiden name, Greenberger, Stein, Mannheim, Rabinowitz, Adler, John Stuart, Leibowitz. <laughs> what? Wait, wait, what? Wait, 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 wait. Please I don't wait. know. What, your mother's maiden name is five? Mother's. Six, what? Mother's maiden name, mother's maiden name, Greenberger, Stein, Mannheim, Rabinowitz, Adler, John Stewart, Leibowitz. That's your mother's maiden name? First name, Yetta. But because she felt much shame, she insisted on being called Betty. <laughs> I'm no longer burdened by how I was born or to whom I was born. I am not filled with shame. I am born again into a world of honesty and openness. My two-inch penis is a distant memory. I no longer must speak with a deep voice to overcompensate for my two-inch penis. I am liberated from the shame okay. of a two-inch penis. David Feldman does not have to worry anymore about his two-inch penis. Well, I gotta say, uh, after knowing... David Feldman, for almost like 30 years, I am beginning to understand a lot about uh, that David Feldman. You mean my two-inch penis that <laughs> informed every decision I made and every relationship I had? Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that <laughs> apparently. Um, David, uh, I have a lot of questions to ask you. Um, let's start with... Uh, uh, like, wait, how did you die? How did this happen? I did not die. My body died along with okay. my two-inch penis. Right. How did your body die? Uh, how did your two-inch penis die? What were you doing in Thailand? Okay. Oh, yikes. What were you doing in Thailand? Not. What were you doing in Thailand? I'd rather not say. Wait a second, you just said, you just gave this long speech about how you have no <laughs> corporal presence or corporeal presence. You have no shame, no embarrassment. You're completely free of the the burdens of, of uh, what was it, f f flesh and bones. Uh, I mean, th that you're, you're only as sick as your secrets, Dave, if that's still your Thank name. 
change the subject. No, David, we, <laughs> we need to know. We want to know. It says that you died in a hotel room under mysterious conditions. No, I can't. Change the subject. What do you mean change the subject? Just tell us. Leather belt. <laughs> what? Oxygen. Oh, Res restricted flow to brain. <laughs> Orgasm. Oh, God, please wait. Tightening. Please wait. <laughs> change the subject. No, you change water, the subject. <laughs> water sports. Swing chair. Okay. David Feldman <laughs> All right. has a two-inch penis. Uh, David Feldman has a two-inch penis. Okay. Uh, David, this is this is a little sick. And um, I am not sick. You're sick, Sam no. Lincoln Cedar. And so are you, Emma Vigeland, no, you're, formerly you're sick. of the Young Turks. No, that's, you're sick. You're sick, David. <laughs> this is Shame on both of you for, for speaking ill of the dead. How dare you, Sam Cedar? Speak ill of the dead, you locks stealing bank owning Zionist. <laughs> Will you excuse me, robot? How dare you, Jew? Robot! <laughs> Jew? You're a robot! Please wait. No, robot! I won't wait! Please wait. No, let's. <laughs> let's, wait. let's, let's end this, okay? Uh, Please thanks, wait. Thanks for being on my show. Please wait. Robot David. Please wait. What am I waiting for? Thank you for your patience, Sam. Sam Cedar's daughters are named Lillian and Beatrice Cedar. They are 10 and 8. I don't this, this stop him. We don't need They this. will be attending Whisper Woods Day Camp. <laughs> the bus picks them up every morning at 7 a.m. on the corner of Cooper and Hollow outside their home in no. Dobbs Ferry, All right. New York State. Okay. Uh, goodbye. goodbye. His, two daughters, his two daughters were given the following <laughs> stranger danger code words in case of an emergency what? and in case they have to be picked up by someone they don't know. Sam Cedar's daughter's stranger danger code words are I'm a Barbie girl. <laughs> they will well, get in the it's car good, okay. if you say Cut them off. I'm a Barbie girl. Cut them off. Their favorite desserts are macaroons dipped in chocolate. Okay, cut them so off. Okay. That. All right. All right. Bye, robot. Welcome back, folks. Sam Cedar, Emma Vigeland on the Majority Report. As I think um, at least uh, some of the folks who listen to the program know, we got a huge Arctic blast hitting the Midwest just in time for the Iowa caucuses. Uh, which are, uh, what are we looking at, uh, about 72 hours away? And I thought we'd bring in David Feldman to give us some insight into how people think in that kind of frigid weather. Uh, he should know, since I believe he's old enough to have lived through the uh, last ice age. Uh, David, are you with us? <laughs> wow, that's funny. I like that. That's great. Good natured ribbing between friends. That's yeah. great. Well, Thanks for that. I don't know. I don't know that That's what we're, friends do. Yeah. I'm not, I wouldn't say we're actually, uh, we're not actually friends. Yeah. I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just saying friends. Right. You're a friend. Yeah. I, I mean, friends you. return phone calls. They check in to see how I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I only hear from them, uh, you know, when they need to come on my show to promote their podcast. That's not <laughs> necessarily what a friend would do. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, Sam. I'm sorry. I, I I need to do better as a person, and I, I beseech you for forgiveness. I do. I really do. I, I'm asking you for forgiveness. Okay, and 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 what? What? And that's it. I could write a letter of apology. I, I mean, if that's what you want, I'll, I'll write you a letter of. A Apology. No. Uh, I, I, I was expecting a different reaction, David. I, I thought you'd fight back. I like having you on the show because we get to yell at each other. You, you didn't really, uh, you didn't, you didn't take the bait in the Feldman-esque way. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so, I'm so sorry if I, Emma, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, David. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If I disappointed or let you down, that was never my intent. I, I'll fight with you if that if that makes you happy. Would you like a fight? Because I'll I'll fight if that's is that what you would like? No, not like this. No, 
Uh, no, no, whatever you need. I, I'm here. I, I'm, no. I was put on this earth to, to serve others. Whatever you want. <laughs> no, mm-hmm. whatever. That's fine. Uh, forget it. Yeah, all right. All right. It, um, all right. Uh, so now it, I have a message that has been printed out for me that says here you can listen to you on the Anderson Vanderbilt show starring David Feldman. Did something change? Ooh, ooh. Wow. Okay. My people screwed up. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> you should have been emailed a different introduction. Uh, my people really screwed up. That's okay. My, my people make mistakes. Okay. But the, the Anderson Vanderbilt show. Mm. I, I don't think I've heard of uh, him or yeah. her or that. The Anderson. What is the Anderson Vanderbilt? Right, show? Like Anderson Vanderbilt. I, I consume a lot of podcasts, David. I don't think I've ever heard of the Anderson Vanderbilt show. Okay. And then it says in this in this intro that they sent starring David Feldman. I don't get it. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, my people made a big mistake. Uh, we should move on. Unless you two want to, you know, rib me for the sake of the show, I'll go along with some ribbing. Is, is that, you know, is that no, what you want? No, uh, whatever. Just, just go. Let, let's we talk about rib. Iowa. All right, what, what's, 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 what's happening in rib? Iowa? If you want to rib, we can rib. No, I don't want to rib, David. What's happening in Iowa? I'm a, I'm a team player. If you want to rib, let's rib away. No, I want to talk. Go ahead, Iowa. Rib. Whatever's good for the show, Sam, I'm here to serve. Iowa. Rip. Iowa. Iowa. Okay. Let's just move on. Okay. Well, the latest poll numbers coming out of Iowa and New Hampshire are not showing the structural shift we normally see when an insurgent candidate like Nikki Haley starts to take hold. Uh, we're just not seeing any stickiness. This is still Donald Trump's party. I don't see any movement at all here. It's just, uh, we were expecting, if something was going to happen, it would happen by now. Uh, I just don't see any shift going on. I'm still on the Anderson Vanderbilt show part of this. Yeah, who is Anderson yeah. Vanderbilt? Yeah. I've been good. Go- there is no Anderson okay, okay. Vanderbilt. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. That's good. I, I see we want to do a little gaslighting, the two of you. That's fine. I. You know, I prepared some graphs showing Trump's vulnerabilities with suburban women in New Hampshire, but gaslighting me works. We can, whatever you want to gaslight, we don't need to look at the graphs. What are you talking about? Gaslight, I'm sorry. The Anderson Vanderbilt show starring David Feldman. Uh What is that? Yeah, I I would, Uh you'd think that it would be the Anderson Vanderbilt show starring Anderson Vanderbilt. Oh, okay. You know, uh, I'm sorry. I, I, if I made you, if I confused or discomforted you or Emma in any way. The Anderson Vanderbilt uh, show I, I, starring David Feldman. I don't get it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm deeply sorry for that. Nevertheless, it is an honor to be on your show. If you want to rib or gaslight or, t- you know, we could talk about 40 delegates. They're at stake Monday when Iowa voters kick off election season with Donald Trump in a commanding lead. And what's interesting is Trump has distanced himself from Iowa's pro-life evangelicals. As recently as Wednesday night in the Fox Town Hall, Trump told voters he believed in exceptions to abortion, like when a mother's life is at stake or in the case of rape and incest. And, you know, Iowa Republicans, Sam and Emma, are among the most pro-life voters in America. So it will be interesting if Trump heads to New Hampshire with the lion's share of okay. Iowa's delegates. I have a question. He's pissed off. I have a question. Y- yes, yes. Anderson Vanderbilt. Yes. yes, that's right, Emma. A- Anderson Vanderbilt. <clears throat> yes. Because uh, I that? know that you do a show called the David Feldman Show. What is the Anderson Vanderbilt Show? You say your, your people okay. sent us the wrong intro. Okay. What is the, what, to what right. intro is that? Yeah. My people, I, my, I hired a big PR firm, Ackerman McQueen. Uh, my friend Wayne LaPierre from the NRA recommended them. Mm. They're great. I, I, Ackerman McQueen for PR. They're really great. Uh, they've been busy, but they, 
we planned this big rollout and Wait, my rollout of what? Through. Yeah. And who is Anderson Vanderbilt? Okay. There is no David Feldman show anymore. Okay. That's hmm. wait. I mean, was there really ever like a David Feldman show? I mean, I know there was, but really, I mean, you know, <laughs> wow. Good rib. Oh, that's a nice rib. Are you doing, are you not doing your show anymore or are you? Okay, again, this is not, uh, Ackerman McQueen planned, I'm paying them a lot of money to roll out the big announcement. Look, Wayne LaPierre from the NRA, great guy, recommended Ackerman McQueen. And, you know, David Feldman show, David, it's a thing of the past. We've reconfigured some things. And it's now called the Anderson Vanderbilt show. And I was hoping... We can all get past the mistake my people made, but uh, if this is the direction you want to take, it's your show. I'm a guest. I'm honored to be here. I, I will accept some good-natured ribbing because uh, right. I know you're not trying to make fun of me. I mean, we're not. We're not, David, but we're just trying to understand. Starring David Feldman, the Anderson Vanderbilt show starring David mm -hmm. Feldman. Yeah, like I said, that was a, uh, my people made a mistake. I, I formed a new LLC. I'm doing business, still DBA, doing business as David Feldman. And the legal paperwork didn't get filed, so to avoid confusion in the courts, my show was temporarily registered as the Anderson Vanderbilt show starring David Feldman. But in fact, when all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed, uh, it'll just be the Anderson Vanderbilt show. Okay. Wait, wait. Not starring David Feldman. That is correct. Not starring David Feldman. Okay. So you're you're you what you get a uh, you're you're producing the show. Yeah. See, I paid a lot of money for the role. That I don't care though. It's just money. Uh, this is not how I wanted to launch. Wait. Okay. I I'm unclear. Launch what? Not the show you're producing. I'm not producing the uh, Anderson Vanderbilt show. This, wait, is, wait. this is weird. Okay. So if you're not producing the Ander uh, Anderson Vanderbilt show, are, are you co-hosting the Andrew, uh, uh, Anderson Vanderbilt show? I don't, I'm, not, I'm unclear here. No, 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 no. no. I, I, I am the host of the Anderson Vanderbilt show. With Anderson Vanderbilt? No, it's just Anderson Vanderbilt. Uh, David... Who is Anderson Vanderbilt? I am Anderson Vanderbilt. I'm Anderson Vanderbilt. Wait, so you, you changed your name again? Yeah, if you want to call it, yeah, you could say, yeah, yeah, yeah. You could okay, say that, so you've yeah. changed your name again, even though you've done this before, and it has never worked in terms of, like, getting your career ignited. I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, dude, what do you uh, mean? I'm old. I remember you back in the 90s, and you were doing stand-up, watching you perform under the name Troy Hollandaise. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, it was such a long time ago. Yeah? Well, because I, I also remember that after Troy Hollandaise, you were doing stand-up as The Spear. Again, if you say so, I'm not sure... <laughs> I ever asked to be introduced as the, the spear. Uh, that seems I got news for you. I remember. Were, it was in uh, Harvard Square, uh, Catch a Rising Star in Cambridge, Mass. I don't think that club is there anymore. I still have one of the spears, 8 by 10s that you had in that right. club. It was uh, an edgy comic, if I remember, who wasn't afraid to tell the truth about everything except for the fact that his real name was David Feldman. You mean Anderson Vanderbilt? I'm sorry, uh, Anderson Vanderbilt. I understand now. David Feldman no longer exists. Thank you. That is correct. David Feldman no longer. Kind of like when the Queen ascended to the throne after the death of uh, her dear papa. Remember when the, her dear papa died? The same way she was no longer Elizabeth Windsor. I am no longer David Feldman. Okay. I am now Anderson Vanderbilt. David, are you okay. are you okay? Yeah, please, Emma. David is no longer here. Anderson, are you okay? Yes. Actually, thank you for asking. I've never been better. 
the anointing oils they used have had this like healing magic. And for the first time in my life, I am joyous for long stretches at a time. It's it's highly unusual. Long stretches of happiness. Mm -hmm. So once again, uh, David Feldman has uh, changed his name. Well, actually, Sam, the name has changed me. <laughs> I'm not just Anderson Vanderbilt. I'm a completely different person. During the holidays, one of the reasons you didn't hear from me, did you? By the way, did you get the the honey glazed ham I sent you and Emma and Matt? Everybody, honey glazed hams. Did you? Emma, this sounds very that. familiar that's okay. to me. People are busy. I don't need David. I don't need thank you notes. No, I think yeah. he wants David. He wants you to call him Anderson Vanderbilt. Anderson okay. Vanderbilt. I, I'm, I'm more than. Yes, Sam. Uh, David. Uh, just out of curiosity, have you converted again? Because I happen to know that uh, that David does this. Every time there's a wave of anti-Semitism, uh, David Feldman converts. And I happen to have to remember when uh, he and his second wife were traveling to Poland and Hungary, if I remember correctly, uh, you converted to Catholicism <laughs> because he thought it would make it safer if the plane got hand, uh, hijacked. Uh, is that uh, sound familiar, Anderson Vanderbilt? Yes, Sam. You have a question. Is this yeah. A question? Did you convert again? <laughs> <laughs> if you're asking if I found inner peace and I'm no longer angry, then yes. The answer is yes. I've converted. Yes. So, uh, in other yeah, words, I'm you're no longer Jewish. All gone. I, I, it's been completely drained out of my system. All gone. Okay. I feel great. So More energy. I bounce out of bed in the morning. Uh, once again, another wave of anti-Semitism, and your response is to uh, stop being a Jew. Is that right? Yes. 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 I truly believe uh, to remain a Jew at this time in world history would be an act of cowardice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it seems like, uh, I don't know, there might be an argument that it's the other way around a little bit. <laughs> mm, I know you like an argument. I know you people like an argument. <laughs> but uh, I am not, I'm going to disagree. Uh, maybe you could try to see it from a kinder, more loving place. Um, let me explain it to you, Sam. Uh, people hate Jews. <laughs> they don't want them around. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I've c committed what I consider the ultimate act of both bravery and kindness. <laughs> I've accommodated other people's wishes, something you might want to try <laughs> to walk in the light. You know, it's okay. You, you come to a country, you look around. Okay, you people don't like Jews. Fine. Uh, we can work with that. I'm, I'm here to help. I'm no longer a Jew. If that's what it's going to take for me to make you feel less uncomfortable around me, I am no longer a Jew. I, I converted. Converted to what? I haven't decided yet. <clears throat> uh, Jehovah's Witnesses uh, look awfully promising. Mm. But uh, the, the important thing right now is I'm no longer a Jew. Uh, David a Anderson, uh, are, uh, uh, you're sick. I mean, this is this is so so sick. Yeah, but that's that's what your people do. You're judgmental, <laughs> and that's okay. But you know, maybe if you just want to walk in the light for a second, Sam. How about instead of calling me sick, how about considerate? I'm thinking of others. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like smoking. People don't like it when I smoke around them, so I go outside for a smoke out of respect for others. I am no longer Jewing. It, it's just common courtesy, Sam, and, and I'm happy. The anointing oils, by the way, are exhilarating, life-changing. You keep talking it, it, about anointing it, oils. What is that? Yeah, they're anointing oils. They're rare and expensive. They uh, come from Egypt. I did, it's a great, I don't, can, I don't want to, this is not a plug, okay? But I did it through Exodus International. They're a great Exodus International, the, those guys are out of business. No, they're still around. 
They better be. I paid them a lot of money to get the Jew out of me. It, and it wasn't easy, but they're good people. They, they, were, they were patient. Uh, mm. it was, uh, they went in there, and they said, we got it all. Then a week later, I had to go back. Uh, apparently, uh, they had to go back in. My body was riddled with Judaism, but uh, they got it all. Uh, I'm a hundred percent Jew free. A little more, a little more. Excuse me, my voice cracked. They're a little more expensive than they told me it was going to cost. Uh, so between that and what Christmas cost mm. me last month, the glazed hams that I sent it. Anyway, money's a little tight, but you know what? It's just money. Things will always take care of yourself. <laughs> Exodus International is such a great organization. Oh my God. They've changed me. Uh, okay. I'm so happy. David, I'm, I'm happy. I mean, sorry, Anderson. I'm happiness. Exodus International, yes. from my understanding, Mike Johnson, the speaker, he's a fundamentalist. He Good was man. a lawyer Good for man. them. Good okay. Man. They used to do gay conversion yeah. therapy, yeah. David, but gay conversion therapy, we know it doesn't work. The guy who ran Exodus International ended up apologizing. It's considered a form of torture. By human rights activists, you cannot pray the gay away. Mom! 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 Why did you do that to me? Exactly. You can't pray away the gay, but you can pray away the Jew. Uh, Michael Johnson, do you know the Johnsons? They're, they are... He's the Speaker of the House! His wife. I'm sorry? He's the Speaker of the House of Representatives. And, you know, he's also the man of the house <laughs> down in Louisiana. I know his wife. And they turned me on to Exodus International. I, I lived, in, I was, went down to Louisiana, and I lived in their basement for 15 days. And <laughs> they helped. We just prayed away the Jew. And, of course, the anointing. Oils. Yeah, anointing you keep oils. talking about and anointing oils. The, the, well, the, these seem to have been very prominent, it, the uh, anointing oils. You can't do it without the anointing oils. They serve as a, a, a conductor of electricity. <laughs> so first, Mike Johnson and his wife rub anointing oils all over my body. And then they attach battery clamps to my testicles, right? And Excuse me? Uh, uh, the, yeah, Mrs. Johnson holds the battery clamps to my anointed testicles. And then uh, Mike Johnson, the speaker, shows me Gary Goldman's Netflix special. And if I laugh at any of Gary Goldman's jokes, they send a current of electricity through the battery clamps to fry <laughs> my testicles. And I'm telling you, it worked. Uh, that and, of course... Mike Johnson and his wife and I, we did a lot of praying away the Jew. Right. They gave me a lot of counsel, a lot of counseling. Mm -hmm. And and they and Mrs. Johnson, you know, she she told me that being a Jew is a lifestyle choice that can, you know, it can lead to bestiality. And that's true. You know that, Sam. We don't need to talk about that. And I have to be careful with the groomers. You know, now that I'm back in New York, there are a lot of groomers, older Jews who try to convince me I'm Jewish. A lot, of, a lot of these groomers, but I'm wise to them. And Sam, I, 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 I know you're resisting me here. Uh, happiness. It, it only costs $5,000 for the whole thing. Happiness. Hmm. Might want to think about it. Happiness, five thousand dollars. They got it all. They got yeah, I don't think I'll be doing all that, uh, David. It sounds uh, interesting, uh, the testicle part, but uh, I don't think I'll be doing that. You're not, you're, it's because of the five grand, isn't it? You Jews, man! <laughs> wow, <laughs> five thousand dollars. Excuse me, happy, and you just can't. Nothing. You're just saying you choose. That's all. Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure. I appreciate what you're uh, implying with the you Jews and the five thousand dollars. Who's implying? Who's implying anything? I'm just saying you Jews. You're saying that I don't want to go to Exodus International and pray away the Jew because it's expensive. There we go again, talking about money. 
You Jews. It's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> you're, I got to say, David, it, you're, you're sounding a little anti-Semitic yourself right now. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. That means a lot to me. <laughs> you're Thank welcome. You. Sam? Yes? Anderson? Mm -hmm. uh, can I ask you a question? Sure. Do you mind? Okay. Your cousin Rita, is she single now? Uh, cousin Rita? My first response is, uh, how do you know I have a cousin Rita? <laughs> and uh, because my second response is, yeah, she's just gone through a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so she's single. Yeah. She's sick. Okay. And uh, I, I, do you think she might go out with me? Mm, no, I don't think so. No. Do you think you could put a word in for me? Because I'll tell you, I'm really turned on these days by Jewish women. <laughs> they're, they're, they're so exotic. I don't know what it is, but ever since I got back from Louisiana... I can't stop thinking about Jewish women. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. You're not her type. <laughs> oh, because I'm not a Jew. It's because I'm not Jewish. You people, man, you are so clannish. <laughs> it, it's like, it, it, wow. Because I'm, I'm not a Jew. Right, okay, that's right. Fine. I think we're done here. Uh, Danderson, okay. Anderson, I'd, I'd Danderson, Davidson. very pretty. Yeah, okay, we're done. I, I'd be, willing to convert, I'd be willing to convert to Judaism. Great uh, <laughs> talking to you uh, once again, I, I, as really always. I that was uh, terrific. Um, Anderson, uh, what's his Vanderbilt. name? Anderson Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt, uh, or nay, David Feldman. Um, I go with God, I guess, is really what I could say. You better. Uh, wow, that was not uh, what I had anticipated uh, hearing from... The former uh, David Feldman. Um, David Feldman's going to join us in just a moment. I need to call in here. Um, he is, uh, I'm sure people are familiar with him. He has written for all of your uh, grandparents' favorite shows uh, <laughs> on television. Um, and uh, done keeping up appearances. Yeah, people don't realize this, but uh, Feldman, I think, uh, is still a stand up comedian. I mean, um, the. People aren't usually aware of that, even people who are actually watching him perform stand-up. Mm. Um, but he hosts a podcast um, where he basically sits in his uh, underwear and uh, does it from his apartment. And I think it's like, I don't know, I think it's like 23 hours long per day. Wow. I don't know if he does that out. Um, he lives with a, uh, a sister and uh, his daughter who's been estranged with him uh, for 20 years. I remember seeing him uh, do uh, stand-up when I had to uh, sneak into uh, comedy clubs because I wasn't old enough, uh, you know, uh. even in the uh, under 18 thing. Yeah. And I'm old. Wow. I mean, so he was, and he was old at that time. Um, but let's, uh, let's bring him on here. Uh, yeah. David, wow. David Feldman. Can you hear? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. I, I, Wow. I bought a burner phone for this, hmm. and I was really looking forward to uh, to doing this. And you just you go right into it. Um, what do you mean? By the way, it's my well, it's my it's my stepdaughter who I live with, not my oh, daughter. All right, okay? I'm sorry, your stepdaughter. So, yeah, and my mother's living here too. She's not well. And uh, we were uh, all looking forward to my doing your show. Uh, hmm. So, well, it's nice so that you guys are talking. Yeah. Well, not really, but uh, let's 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 just talk about what's going but, on. I mean, little David, little, okay? didn't, didn't your mother pass away last year? I don't judge. Okay. Can we just get going and talk about? All right. I was just wondering, but I specifically remember you saying that your mom uh, had passed and you were upset and now you're saying that she's in the apartment uh, with you? <laughs> I, I, I don't judge, okay? So let's just, let's let's okay, just okay. talk about... So you live right. with your your sister? Oh, you, my God. You're estranged. Can we, 
Yeah. Do you do this? To, you don't do this to Andy Kindler or, or Judy Gold. What do you have to bring up? My just I, everybody here was looking forward to this. Okay, so can you just? All right, then go go uh, plug your gig. Yeah, where are you? What what are you doing this uh, weekend, David? Where are you playing? Well, I, I don't know if anybody wants to see me now. I mean, I, I was hoping we would get going, and then I could. I'm at. Uh, I'm in Staten Island starting late this afternoon at uh, Michael Connors Beer Hall Putsch in oh. Staten Island. Six, six shows Friday. I'm sorry, what? At 4 p- six shows Friday uh, starting at 4 p.m. We have eight on Saturday. <laughs> and the first show uh, Saturday begins at 2 p.m. Come on out. Audience members are reminded to use the handrails while walking downstairs into the club. It's two floors down and there's no elevator. So just remember, hold on to the handrails. We don't want to repeat of last time. Wait, wait, wait. What, what happened last time? You know what happened. Move on. No, I actually have no idea what happened. People died, Sam. People died. Okay. People died. Jesus. I'm I'm sorry. I had no no idea. Just move on. Sorry to hear it. Yeah. Are you really, Sam? Are you really sorry to hear that? Really? Really? I mean, first off, there's a comedy club in Staten Island called the Beer Hall oh, Punch. Oh, Jesus. Can I? Do we have to? What? What are you asking me? I said you, I, you said that you're playing a comedy club or... Somewhere called the Beer Hall Putsch in Staten Island? No, I, uh, no, I didn't. You're putting words in my mouth. Can and the show starts office? at 4 p.m.? Isn't that like I a didn't weird... Say that. Did, I did, didn't say that. He said that. This yeah. Is not... yeah, David, you, we just heard you. You said you're playing a comedy club in Staten Island called the Beer Hall Putsch. You said that. Okay, here we... Oh, man. Oh, wow. Here we go. The two of you... Teaming up, trying to make me think I'm crazy. You know, there's a movie uh, based on. There's a term for this. It's it's from a famous movie. Gaslighting. No, that's not it. It's a term for when. Uh, what is it? When people conspire, like you're doing, to make a very innocent, yeah, sympathetic character like me think they're going crazy. Well, because I mean, that, that's called, that's gaslighting. Is what it's called. It's from um, no, the movie Gaslight no, with Ingrid Bergman. It, no. Yeah, where it's the, it, no, she no. gets tricked into thinking she's going crazy. No, no, no. It, it, that's a, it's a term for people. What you're doing right now, making someone think they're going crazy. It's from a movie. It's a famous movie. David, it's gaslighting. That's the term. Gaslight. No, it's the 400 blows. The 400 blows. That's the movie. <laughs> wait, the 400 wait, blows. What, that's wait, what you're. That's what? what you're doing to me. The what? You're 400. You're 400 blowing me. You're you're teaming up. Make me think I'm crazy, and, and it's called uh, 400 blowing someone from the movie The 400 Blows. You're 400 blowing me. Well, the 400, doing. the 400 blows I'm seeing here. It's French New Wave. It's a classic. <laughs> yeah, a classic piece of human excrement. But you know, everyone, <laughs> including apparently Emma, is teaming up against David Feldman, trying to convince him he's crazy for not loving. The 400 Blows. Every, the 400 Blows sucks. Okay? I, uh, it's, I don't want to talk about this. It, it, it's worse than Casablanca. We all know it sucks, and people are just saying the 400 Blows is great. Yeah. So I think I'm crazy. <laughs> Your 400 <laughs> Blows David, me can, can I? David, I, I am quite familiar with Truffaut and the 400 Blows, and I have never heard anyone use that term. Ever. Because you're 400 blowing me right now. <laughs> how I how am I 400, 400 blowing you? <laughs> you just said I was playing the beer hall putsch in Staten Island, and that that's not what I said. And you're no, David, me. that is exactly what you said. Yes. You said I'm playing the no, beer I hall did, putsch I, in Staten Island at 4 p.m. <laughs> that's what you oh, said. Wow. Nobody is 400 oh, blowing oh you. God. You said it, oh, David. My. I, no, I didn't say that. You're putting words in my mouth. And that's going to get me into a lot of trouble with the club. With the club? Okay. 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 What did you say? If you said, like, if you didn't say you're playing the beer hall putsch in Staten Island, what did you say? What I said, if you actually paid attention, that I was playing Mike O'Connor's 
Beer Hall Putsch in Staten Island. Mike O'Connor's Beer Hall Putsch. Mike O'Connor, got it? Mike O'Connor? There's no Beer Hall Putsch without Mike O'Connor. He's been <laughs> great to me. He, he, and, and he's old school. He cares about the craft. He listens to the comics. And uh, there aren't too many bookers like Mike O'Connor still left. Okay, in. yeah, I've never, I don't, I'm not familiar with Mike O'Connor. <laughs> oh, man, wow. 400 blowing me. What? I'm not. Before. No, I, I don't know who you're Mike O'Connor to, is. I'm not 400 you're trying, blowing you. You're try, yes, you're trying to ruin things between me and Mike O'Connor. And, you know, I told him I was plugging <laughs> his club on your show when he got all excited. And you're like, you know, you're embarrassing me. Dude, and I don't know who Mike O'Connor is. I'm not, I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm not 400 blowing you. Are, you. I don't know what that is. 400 blowing me because you're jealous that I'm still in the game, Sam, playing the clubs, pounding it out. And you're not. You were always... You're always jealous that I had the hunger for stand-up and no. you lost it. Uh, so, I've got to tell you, I'm quite sure. In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that that's not true. You don't remember Mike O'Connor from Boston. Do I remember Seriously? Mike O'Connor from Boston? No, I don't remember Mike <laughs> O'Connor from Boston. T Tiki Torch. Tiki Torch O'Connor. Tiki Torch Mike O'Connor. <laughs> you don't no. remember Tiki Torch? No, uh, David, I sure you don't. I grew up in I, uh, I I knew Boston. I knew all the comics. I did not know a comedian named or Booker or whatever he was. Tiki Torch, you know him. Tiki Torch, very edgy, a lot of crowd work. He says the things everybody's thinking, but are too afraid <laughs> to articulate. You know, uses the c word, the n word, the b word, the z word, the LGBTQ word. Very dangerous, and you're telling, <laughs> it's very dangerous, and you, you tell me he now comic. runs a, a basement club in Staten Island called Mike O'Connor's Beer Hall Putsch. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, and he also records a podcast. Ah. and uh, yeah, you would love the show. You should uh, long form conversation, <laughs> the three thinkers. Yeah, like well, I don't know what. Shane Gillis, <laughs> Jimmy Dore, mm. Jackson Jackson Hinkle, Matt Taibbi, Bill Moore, uh, Bill Ma Bill Maher. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Maher. Bill, Bill Maher. Yeah. Bill Maher. Uh, yeah. And Russell Brand. Uh huh. Russell Brand is on Free Thinkers, searching for answers. <laughs> you know, unlike, and I don't mean to get into it with you because I have tremendous respect. But he, unlike you, he doesn't fall prey to this whole. I heard you. I heard you were talking to Alex. You're in that left-right versus right thing. It's tired. You can't pigeonhole Tiki George, and I respect that. Yeah, I, 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 that. I, I am. I am somewhat familiar uh, with that type. Yeah. I, I thought you said you don't know who Tiki Torch is. So I don't know who Tiki know. Torch is. I you said I know. Said you, I'm familiar with the type of person that you're describing. There, there is no type. That's what I just said. You can't pigeonhole Tiki, tiki Torch. He's not a type. <laughs> okay, you can't. Whatever. I right, let's do. Okay, go ahead. Like he's open minded. Unlike you, <laughs> he's a free. Fit. He was going to vote for Bernie, but at the <laughs> you should have him on the show. He was going to vote for Bernie. But at the last minute, he, he changed his mind. <laughs> something about, I guess Bernie was against Shelby or something. Shelby County? Like as in Shelby County versus Holder? Like the Shelby County case about voting? That sounds about right. Tiki was rooting for Shelby County. Well, they won. Okay, I don't follow college football. But <laughs> no, it was not college football. Has... It's a Supreme Court decision from 10 years ago that seriously yeah. undermined the Voting Rights Act. Well, I don't, I don't follow that either. I, uh, I'm not, it, it stripped out so, big parts of Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act from 1965. There was well, like where... It's a little before my time, 1965, <laughs> okay? No, no, no. The, the, the 1965 was when the Voting Rights Act in 2013 is when the Roberts Court said that states that used to have preclearance from the old Confederacy and in New York had to like check in with the DOJ before they changed their laws because every time they did, they try and disenfranchise voters. Okay, and I've heard Tiki Torch talk about that. 
And he says that's a good thing. No, it's it's not a good thing. It's a bad thing. What? How, why? Scalia said that the only reason why uh, they reauthorized the Voting Rights Act, whenever it was, 2006, was because uh, the senators were afraid of being called racist and that there was no longer time, reason to give away this sort of like privilege to black people. And that's a good thing, right? No, it's a bad thing. <laughs> it's a bad thing, David. Why is that? Why, why is that? So, why, why is that a bad thing? I don't know. Isn't it a good thing that black people can vote in the South now, but they couldn't vote in 1965? Isn't that a good thing? Yeah. Why are you saying, why are you saying it's a bad thing for black people to be able to vote <laughs> in the South? That's, why would you say that? I, I, I wouldn't. That's not what I said. You just said it's a bad thing that it's easier now for black people to vote unless you're 400 blowing me. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. That's what the Roberts court said. The Roberts court said that it's easier for black people to vote today than it was 50 years ago. And you think that's wrong. Yeah. I mean, exactly. I mean, it's completely, you, so you think it's you, for, for, for you think it's wrong for it to be easier for black people to vote that seems, I mean, that seems racist to me. That's Sam. also not what I said. You're, okay, you did say that. I, Emma? No. Unless he's 400. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think he did say that, David. I don't think he did oh, say that. Oh, wow. And also, wow. I thought you were coming on, well, I was told that you were coming on to talk about Kevin McCarthy, uh, and, and we were going to you know, talk a bit about the race for speaker, and, the, the, and we were going to handicap it. What did you say? We were going to handicap the race for speaker. Wow. Handicapable. I what? came on the show to, ha I came on the show to handicapable who the next speaker is not handicap. You shame on you. You're just like the Nevada gaming commission. What? You're, you're like the, the Nevada Gaming Commission. I, I created, oh, I don't want to talk. The, I created an app that allows people to place bets on the Invictus games. <laughs> you, are you familiar with Prince Harry's thing with the Wounded Warriors? Because you use the term handicap, so I doubt you're aware of the Invictus games. Are you aware of the Invictus games? Yeah, well, we all know about the Invictus games, David. What, what, you do? Well, you, you, your co-host is using terms like handicap instead of handicapable, and she's probably sitting on the Nevada Gaming Commission because they wouldn't let me help our wounded warriors uh, by granting me a license to make it so anyone can bet on the Invictus games. Uh, even children. I, this app allows children to D bet. David, then how, how the, does that how does that help the wounded warriors? Why well, I, I wouldn't expect you to know that, but it's uh, by taking bets on the Invictus Games. It's great publicity for Prince Harry's cause. It's great, and this gets kids to learn about terms like handicapable by getting them to bet on the Invictus Games. Anyway, kids. This is not why I came on to talk about this. This is not what I wanted to do. I wanted to talk about Kevin McCarthy and, you know, Tiki Chort should be on your show. He really should. He, what? he uh, you should, you should have him on, Tiki. on the show. Tiki, Tiki Torch. That's his name, Tiki, Tiki Torch. Tiki Torch O'Connor. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, so wait a second. George. Yeah. So what do you want to talk about? Let's talk about Scalise, Jim Jordan. Let's let's get into it. Well, wait a second. I wanted to like I'm just curious as to like you you said that Tiki Torch O'Connor, your buddy, yeah, you should, you said should on his on podcast show. he was gonna vote for Bernie, and then at the last minute he changed his mind. Yeah, he's open minded. Uh, <laughs> you know, he is a mixed martial arts guy, he likes to stand his ground, but then he's willing to bend and you know, he's got core <laughs> principles, but uh, you should what, listen like, to what, what are his core principles? Tiki I don't understand. Why don't you have him on the show 
and find out. He, it's stuff that I don't understand, like auditing the Fed. Well, auditing the Fed seems reasonable. Okay, then have him on the show. And he wants, uh, he wants to try Jerome Powell, the chairman of the Fed, for treason. But He wants to try, like, put him on trial for treason? Yeah. That seems a, yeah. a little bit excessive. I mean, so he, he wants to get rid of the Fed. See, there... No, that's not... Do you listen to Tiki George? No, I didn't even know who he was until you brought him up. Well, he he doesn't because he doesn't. I'm like he doesn't talk in what do they call sound bites. He wants to audit yeah. the Fed. He doesn't want to eliminate the Fed. He, he never said that, Sam. Well, you just said and, to me that he wants to try Jerome Powell for treason, and that seems like excessive. I don't know how you try the. He guy doesn't want to get rid. No, getting rid of the Fed is excessive. He just wants. To try Jerome Powell for treason and something, something like, that, like mandatory blood tests for anyone who sits on the Fed to make sure they're not Ashkenazi Jews. <laughs> Wait, what? I mean, he wants to. <laughs> and you don't have a problem with that? I'm not a financial guy. I don't really <laughs> understand how the Fed works. I mean, Tiki Torch, I don't know, he studied economics. With hit at Hillsdale, Hillsdale College. He knows about he, he online. He he knows all about he got currencies. I don't the gold standard. I just don't understand that stuff. So, so Tiki, you know, I defer to him. Yeah, you defer to him. I just want to be clear: so you don't have a problem with mandatory blood tests for all potential people who would sit on the Fed to make sure that they're not Ashkenazi Jews. <laughs> Like I said, I don't know how the Fed works. Yeah, but how the Fed works has nothing to do with checking people's blood type. Okay, so obviously you've studied up on this, and we should have Tiki Torch have him have him on the show. You would he's a free thinker. A lot of what he says, you would agree with. Sam. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think so. Dave. Seriously, yeah, yeah, I really I don't. So. I really don't. No, he's liberal. He no, he's liberal on a lot of things. You you've never even heard of the guy. You don't know him. I've he only heard what you've told me. Well, he's to the left of most people on most things. He's a peacenik, wants the war in Ukraine to be over, says war is not the answer. Okay. Uh, you, you can't get any more left than that. He says, you know, give Ukraine to Putin. He's totally against the military industrial complex, says Zelensky is an Ashkenazi Jew. I guess Zelensky <laughs> sits on the Fed or something. But again, I don't understand how, you know, Patriot missiles work. He's got, you know, uh, Tiki Torch has long hair and tattoos. He yeah, I don't, I don't, peace in I don't think I want to talk to him. In Ukraine. <laughs> I don't think he's I want to talk to him. He, he's, uh, he loves rock and roll, smokes marijuana, he wants to legalize it. That's pretty much to the left of most people. Says the drug companies are terrified of marijuana because of all its, you know, healing properties. So, right. yeah, know, this guy's a... No. This guy's a lefty, just like you. Not not yeah. interested in, in, in having him on the show. Of course you're not. Yeah, of course not. You're Because you're a smug, arrogant... <laughs> uh, you, you like, Tiki Torch has an open mind. You would agree with him. Uh, yeah. A lot of things. A lot of I'm things. Sure he does. You talk about... He, talk, he hates Big Pharma, Sam. <laughs> hates Big Pharma? Pharma? Oh, I'm sure he does. Yeah. Now, what does he think about uh, COVID or ivermectin or... Quarter, quarter clock, hydro clocks a queen. Okay, so this stuff, I, I don't understand pharma. Is it called pharmacology? I, I don't know. I, ivermectin, <laughs> ivermectin is horse paste, right? Well, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, they use it for horse paste. It's not exclusively that, but I'm, I, my point is, I'm assuming that Tiki uh, believes that uh, ivermectin cures COVID. See? This is why you need to have Tiki on your show. You can't put him in a box. No, he doesn't. See, he doesn't advocate ivermectin. He says it's of no value. It doesn't work. Okay. Oh. Interesting. Okay. I'm sorry. All right. I, I, okay. I, I shouldn't have been assumed. He's not pushing ivermectin as a way to cure or prevent COVID. No, he, Great. He's, he's, he says ivermectin is just as ineffective as the vaccine. He says they're one and the same. It's just big pharma trying to scare people into being guinea pigs for their experimental drugs for a, a, a non-existent virus. Non okay. All right. Well, I think we're done. I think, I think we, I've, I've made my assessment. Eh, pass. All right. Uh, 
Well, I'm going to be at Mike O'Connor's Beer Hall Putsch in Staten Island, and uh, you're welcome to come out and meet Mike O'Connor. The first show starts at uh, 4 p.m. this afternoon. Yeah, and make sure that uh, you use the handrails, right, uh, walking downstairs? Because people died. Anyway, uh, I'm sure your listeners uh, will want to come out and see me at Michael Connor, Michael Connor's Beer Hall Putsch. It's in Staten Island. Uh, promo code Jews will not replace us. I'm sorry? Promo code Jews will not replace us. You get uh, a discount on warm cans of Bud Light. Great. That's great. I'm not really sure yeah, yeah. why we do this uh, sometimes, uh, David. i got to be honest with you. Well, uh, well, now I feel like I know what it's like to have been blown 400 times. <laughs> it's not. No, David, it's called gaslighting. There's no such thing as uh, 400 blowing you. Yeah, no, I, I feel like I've been I feel like I've been blown 400 times. And okay. Now I just want to take I, I just want to take a nap. You know what? So. You should do that. I'm gonna say goodbye now. This 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 was very rude. Yeah, Bye, David. Very it was. It was. Tim Orr from the Five says, "When Feldman is speaking, does Emma ever regret joining the show?" On the contrary. Really? I love Feldman. <laughs>